Welcome and a very good morning to Spa Francorchamps for the second part of the Spa 12 hours. A cracking race yesterday. There was incident from start through to finish and we're going to complete the job today. Another six hours of racing, a grid of 50 cars plus. We are absolutely all set and the weather got so far it's a brightish day, not sunny, but uh, seems to be dry. We don't expect it to stay that way, but you know what? The rain really added something very special to this race yesterday. It came, it went, it was wet at one end of the circuit, dry at the other, and then it flipped around. The drivers never knew what to do, but the driving standards were very high indeed. And a lot of drivers learnt an awful lot about the weather gods and how they affect this circuit. But uh, with this full grid of cars, with many different classes, there are battles within the overall war and uh, six more hours in which to go and see who's going to come out on top when the full 12 hours are completed. We have five cars that will start on the lead lap. They will all be lied astern. But the series started at Mugello back at the end of March in Tuscany. Beautiful location. Here we are for round number two of the European series for 24H. Next stop... After this 12 hours will be another 12 hour race at Monza in the middle of June. And then maybe in some very hot temperatures, Estoril for 12 hours in early July. And then the big race at Barcelona in the middle of September. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Enjoy today. As they start to work their way down, we've got two cars on the front row. The rest are following out. Nick, good morning. Um, it's, ah, there we are. I can hear myself. It's very important to hear myself. You know, not that I'm totally vain. Yes, the cars are currently arriving on the grid. Now, the thing to remember is when they turn up, they will be ordered in class order. So all the GT3s, then all the Porsches, then all the GT4s. So not necessarily, no, not necessarily the order in which they finish, because we know that a couple of the uh, Porsches are very, very high up. On pole, it is our, our friends at Heart of Racing. Now, have they let... Roman actually in the car is the question. Let's have a look and try and see if this is Roman who's actually driving. He's getting out. Is he? Young? Yes. He'll actually come. You get, get the drivers out because it's probably easy. But it's, it's not. It's Ian again, honestly. <laughs> there, there, there is a question. Are you ever going to let poor little Roman drive this car? I know. I mean, he's dying to get in there. So... Uh... I think I'll do the first uh, little stint here and then, uh, then we'll let him have some fun out there, hopefully. Because he's allowed to do... Th so uh, we pretty much think the end of the race is going to be wet. So uh, this is the strategy we're playing. Ian has mentioned that all important thing, weather. Those of you who are with us uh, yesterday know we got and a half in, which we then had for on and off the entirety of the, uh, the period of the race. Rain is forecast. <laughs> It's Spa, who knows the forecast, from about one o'clock, which is uh, local time, which is about three hours, which probably means it either won't rain at all or it'll rain the entire time. But it is very likely to be wet, and that's when they're going to have their superstar drivers in. Sitting on the side of the front row is the Santalot Racing 26, the Audi. Uh, they're all uh, closed up, so I won't... Uh, the interesting thing, the security haven't let any of the team people, personnel on the grid. Not quite sure why. That's never normally an issue. Um, follow me, Seb. Uh, one thing just to talk about. Just have, a, have a look at this, by the way. We were talking about this uh, yesterday on the on the stream. We have it. On the main straight, they have diamond cut across the tarmac. This is to aid with the water dissipation because obviously they're quite keyed up to the fact it might actually rain here at Spa. And so that is one of the things that A, adds a bit of extra grip off the line, but also adds some water. Cars are still arriving slowly. Oh, you know, randomly, no, no, she take a picture of me. She, oh, she ran away. Just, a, I, have this, I have this effect on women, to be honest. They look at me once and run away. Happens quite a lot. Um, moving down here. Now, interestingly, there are four, one and two. There's three and four, uh, three, four and five. Now, the first five cars are all on the same lap. This is the first car not on the lead lap. Um, the In-N-Out Burger, the Battery Tender. I assume it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Mr. Espen now, but is Charles starting the car? So, uh, how do you feel yesterday went? Are you just happy to be in one piece? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, this place is one of the most difficult tracks in the world. and You, you combine with the... Uh, 
varying conditions yesterday. It made it pretty interesting. Honestly, it's fun. It gets the adrenaline pumping and uh, makes the racing very interesting. You're a lap off uh, the lead and also a lap off the AM class lead, which is always your target. Is there anything you can do to make that up or do you have to kind of hope that uh, a bit of bad luck befalls the other team? Yeah, you know, I mean, six hours yesterday, six hours a day, the same thing that happened to us yesterday could happen to them. You know, we just got unlucky where we were positioned for some code 60s. So we, we lost a little bit of time, but we can gain it back just as easy as you know. And is it like a, do you, do you also think there's going to be rain later? That's what all my local uh, guys are telling me. They, they were pretty accurate yesterday. They said, oh, it'll rain in about 10 minutes, and it sure did. So they were saying it's going to be pretty rainy today, so we'll see. Great, so thank you, Charles. Now, interestingly, uh, this is a unique feature of the AMG. Just there, where I was leading, is exhaust exit. So I've been slowly cooking my leg speaking to Charles. So uh, uh, advice to myself, do not lean into Mercedes AMGs. Uh, just, uh, I'm not quite sure why they've not allowed everyone the grid, but uh, it's a bit strange. Um, might be because the cars are under park Fermi regulations, so they're worried that they're going to fiddle with them. But uh, here we have the uh, the three, uh, third place car, three car, which is the uh, Herberth machine, the 91, the new of the GTRs. Not sure who's in the car. It's uh, it's Alfred. Now this is great because it says a Renauer, so I know which Renauer it is. It's Alfred. See if I can just uh, he's not, open the door. There we go. Alfred, you, you weren't even supposed to be here this weekend and now you're driving the car. What, what, why the change of plan? That's a nice surprise. <laughs> now I was at home and now I bring some uh, new rain tires because we ran out of rain tires. So I brought them from uh, home and now I'm sitting in the car for my first stint now. It's a good chance also to get some miles in this new car, isn't it? Yes, for sure. Uh, for me, it's the, the first race in the new car because the previous races we did with the old car, so now it's a new one for the first time, and I'm really looking forward for this. And so, how is this car better than the old one? Uh, to be honest, I don't know at the moment, because it's my first time driving now, so uh, maybe I can tell you later. I'll hold you to that. That's Alfa Renau out of third. Interesting that the fourth place and the fifth place haven't even arrived here. So let's meander down the uh, the pit lane. Uh, the pit lane, no, it's not pit lane, it's the grid start. But they are doing some uh, advanced ordering at the back there, as you can see. Uh, there's the 90 car, uh, the E2P, uh, mainly Spanish Porsche. The car that's run by the most advanced land car, because land have had an absolute disaster with their three Audis. This is the... Uh, 34 out of the car, all of the windows, the doors opened. That basically says, I want to talk to you. I, I don't care. I think it's Tim in the car. I'm not certain. Tim! Morning! Um, eventful day for you guys yesterday. Yeah, it was a bit tricky at the end. We got some technical issues. Um, we lost the, um, the screw of the gearbox and lost some oil. But yeah, hope we can. Uh, get some pet places in front of today and we will see. So that problem is all fixed now? Yeah, problem is fixed. Good stuff, thank you Tim. Tim Voger in the uh, Land uh, Motorsport. Oh, I shut the door this year. The good thing about the Audi it isn't burning my leg. Uh, coming back now to the uh, front end, I think, of the is it GTX we've hit now. We're still in G yeah, we're on the GTX field here. A pair of Lamborghinis, one the Polish Lamborghini and one the Lithuanian Lamborghini. Uh, Let's see if we can grab a word with a, a, a selection of uh, <laughs> leather waves. Um, big battle with Poland and other Lamborghinis. Yeah, yeah we have a battle. Tomorrow we lost, yesterday we lost a few laps. Uh, so today we managed to have a good pace and catch again for first place. How, how difficult was it yesterday with the constantly changing conditions? Uh, yeah, it, it's just a big mixing in the conditions. So. In the beginning was 100% okay, uh, but in the in the middle part we have lost because we changed too too early for the rain tires and again come back for the for the slicks, so just a bit lost in that place. So to, today I hope so will be more stable condition and we have the normal race. Great stuff, thank you very much. Thanks. Now the other thing to remember while you're looking at all these cars on the grid. Unlike when they were on the grid yesterday, they're not on fresh tires. They're not full of fuel. 
They are on the tyres and the amount of fuel in the tank when we had the interventions yesterday at 6 o'clock. Some of them, and the boys will tell you who when we go back to them in a few minutes, some of them have almost a full tank. Some of them are running on fumes. Tyre-wise, they're probably, most of them, again, new or reasonably old slits because of the change of wets towards the end. The only thing you're allowed to do for free at the end of the intervention is you can do a free driver change. But tyres and fuel, so you won't get that period like we have normally in these races in the first half where you've got 45 minutes where nothing happens and Seb and I just sit in drinking coffee, having a cake somewhere in a pit. Uh, there'll be action almost instantly in pits as the people who, who decides to run long, they come in, and the people who, who, who've got plenty of fuel, they keep going. Ah, now, this is the car that's a star, and this is the driver's star, Stefan Dast. So, how was Saturday? Good, good, very good. We did a, I did a, quite, a very good start, uh, and uh, I was in 24 absolute position in second uh, of our class, and I, we were very happy, but then, uh, with the, due to the rain and all the strange condition, uh, we did too much uh, tire changes. And uh, the problem is that uh, we have uh, we are no single nut, so we are very very slow in the tire change. And uh, we changed the tires two times uh, more than than the best strategy, and so we lost uh, something like uh, 10 minutes. And uh, this uh, this put us in 40 position uh, overall uh, and the fifth of class. Uh, but uh, we are uh, very happy because uh, uh, the lap time was uh, very good of uh, all the drivers, and uh, they all did a very good uh, stint. Uh, and so, no, we we are happy. We have just to change something in the strategy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the car, super reliable after the problems in Mugello. It's it, and it's looked great going round. It's a fabulous car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, uh, it is very good. Unfortunately, in Mugello, we had a crash in the back end, so we couldn't avoid it. And uh, naturally, when you crash, is not a uh, reason why reliability of the car. Uh, but uh, yes, the car is very reliable, very fast, and uh, very easy to drive, especially in these conditions when uh, the, 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 uh, the tarmac and the circuit change from rain to dry. Uh, it is uh, very comfortable uh, to drive, and uh, we are uh, very happy. All the drivers are uh, very impressed about, uh, about the car. And it's obviously... It's always fun to race at Spa, wet or dry. Yeah, I love this uh, track. It gave me a lot of uh, satisfaction. I won the first absolute uh, racing World Touring Car Championship in 2005 with BMW, and uh, it, it was uh, great. And always uh, here, uh, uh, these strange, I love these strange conditions when change uh, when from dry to wet, uh, slick, uh, no slick. Uh, yes, and, and Spa, I think that probably is my best favorite in the world. Uh, track, uh, yes, he, he is lovely. He's, he's absolutely amazing drive here. Great stuff. Thank you, Das, from the P. Rose. Now, Stefano, he loves Spa, but we need to be talked around Spa by someone who knows it intimately. But instead, we'll have Bruce and Joe. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Nick. It's a world-famous circuit, and it's definitely one of Joe, fa Joe Bradley's favorites. So... Joe, talk us around a lap. Well, it's a bucket list place to come, isn't it, and race at spa Francorchamps. The lap starts at the La Source hairpin, all very important to carry that speed down the hill through the ever-daunting Hall Rouge. It's a very, very tight hairpin that kicks things off. And then it's plunging downhill, downhill towards perhaps the most iconic part of any racetrack anywhere in the world, Eau Rouge, and then up the staircase. It really is as steep as a staircase. Across the brow at Radion, and then the Camel Strait. It goes on and on and on. Heavy braking into Lecom, that's the right left, and it's all important to keep that car stabilized because through Malmedy, the right-hander, that leads down a steep straight. It's not very long, but it's long enough to be a bit, maybe have an outbreaking maneuver into the Brussels hairpin. You come out of there and immediately sweeping left hand through Jackie Hicks corner. And then one of the most, if, if all Rouge is the most daunting, second most daunting is the double gauche, the double apex left hander there. That's almost flat. Is it or is it not? That's what we're going to find out today. From there, you very quickly go into Piff Paff or Le Fan as it's now been renamed. That's a right, left S's. We're getting towards the important part of the track here through campus and then the right hander at Stavolo. Very important to keep your momentum there because you're going to carry that speed all the way through the sweeps, left hand sweeps and into the very daunting Blanchemont. I keep using that word, don't I, daunting, because that's what Spa is. It's very daunting. And then the lap is completely broken up by the very, very tight 
bus stop chicane. First right and then left. That left hand is almost a hairpin and it really does slow you down, but it's very important. And you can be right on the mark with your lap time and then you get to the bus stop and it can be completely ruined because you've gone a metre, two metres too deep into the corner and all that speed is scrubbed. But like I say, Bruce, it's a bucket list place to come and race. It rewards every single driver and the greats are really the very greatest around here. But talking of the greatest, I feel we should move back down to the grid because Nick Damer did such a good job earlier on. Let's go down and see who he's managed to capture for the next interview. Well, stars of the show in many ways uh, were the 9.30 uh, uh, team here on the Porsche with uh, the Chinese and uh, Adam Christodoulou, it's uh, Martin G. Um, have a... Adam, great driving, absolutely terrible parking. <laughs> yeah, it's not my strong point. Um, no, yes, yesterday went really, really well. Uh, it looked like actually after the race had finished, we'd got a one lap advantage. Sadly, uh, we've been told otherwise, which is a bit of a shame because I think uh, the car in second and third, they've got more fuel than we have. So uh, I'm not too worried because I'm thinking around the start there could be some potential rain and it's only meant to get worse so I guess there might be a code 60 which would be enough for us to, to nip in the pits and refill uh, maybe do a tyre tire change so I think we're quietly a little bit calm. Go a quick word here with uh, Martin what's it, what's it like trying to keep up with Adam? Well it's uh, first of all it's amazing to have uh, Adam and uh, we bring tour racing which is from, uh, from China to, to Europe with our Chinese delivery that's a very proud thing to do and of course, there are so many gaps between me and uh, Adam. There are a lot to learn. It's my first time to drive the cop car, first time to racing spa. It's an amazing track. I love it a lot. Now, you're normally racing in Porsche Cup Asia, is that right? No, it's, I, again, um, it's my first time uh, okay, racing right, okay. car. But uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, well it's, uh, I race for uh, 16 years, but mainly in touring car. I'm glad uh, that I have a chance with uh, Toro Racing that uh, we come to Europe and uh, start to have uh, like GT racing. I love it a lot. Great stuff, thank you. And of course, three-wheel drive is more fun. So we're down to a couple of minutes to go. Let's go over here, uh, not a lap down in second place. It's the 955. It's uh, uh, Willie Sports. And what I need, I need a burst of Fran no, Francesco Blogi. <laughs> Francesco, my first question, yes. how's the marriage going? Well, uh, it's actually excellent. Uh, well. It actually improved. I don't know why, but for the moment it has improved. That's why I kept just married in Mugello. We had the, the, but it's so if we go to a race and the just marriage stick has gone, we know there's problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to think about it for, for Monza, but we will see. <laughs> how, how was the day yesterday for uh, Willie Motorsports? How was your day? How did it go? It was actually wonderful, like a full win, because uh, we started with problems. Uh, and uh, actually we managed to improve during the race. We were actually just trying not to finish last and not to lose too many points. This is uh, the way we had the tests. So right now on the dry is gonna be the final test to see that we managed to solve the handling issues that we had and if we can compete. But yes, it was fantastic. We are four in a lap, so uh, with three, post three places in the podium. So it's still uh, wonderful that we are in the battle. We are, we are not out of it. So we will see what happens today. Race Great stuff. Thank you, Fabrizio Brogi. Now, we're being uh, taken off the grid a little bit early, it seems. I'm very upset about that. But, of course, it gives a chance to talk through the entire grid and the weird way it separates and the fact that several people right behind are actually a lap behind. And for me to give you one more piece of information, it's very lightly spitting. Bruce. Mm. Hopefully Nick isn't very lightly spitting. Great walk up and down the grid there, Nick. Thank you very much indeed. Now, of course, Joe Bradley, yesterday the weather really had quite a role to play, several times and several times more as it kept coming through. There were some fallers, and the car that started on pole position, just picking out the Haas RT mm. Audi, they're starting way down the field because they weren't the only tumbler, but it certainly has set them back. Well, two hours in the pits is never going to benefit you in a six-hour motor race, we're, we're, which is part of a 12-hour motor race in its fullest extent yeah they had a bit of a nightmare didn't they but then then again bruce when has the weather never been a factor at spa it's certainly going to be a factor today and as, as we watch the Haas RT team current championship leaders winners in Mugello they're on a recovery drive they're just going to salvage as many points as they can regarding their class position um, I've got to see, I've got to draw attention to the car that starts this second six-hour six hour segment on that pole position. 
it's Ian James who's starting the heart of racing Mercedes. What a position to be in where their superstar driver hasn't done any hours, any minutes. He hasn't done a second in that car yet. Roman De Angelis, that young Canadian driver, is the hotshot driver. The two arms have done all of the driving so far. Ian James and Gray Newell did a sterling job yesterday to get that car to the front of the field. But I tell you what, the position to start this second six hours, all right, we are going to be interfered with. Uh, with regards to the rain, yeah, quite quite literally, we're going to have this race interfered with. Um, and you know what? As much as I want to put my money on that heart of racing Mercedes, you just I'm I've, I'm I'm going to be sensible and not. You can't put your money on anyone because the action, the drama, the incident we saw yesterday, it's just like you just can't help but think there's going to be more of the same because the weather conditions are going to be the same. What we need to point out is five cars finished uh, after 118 laps and six hours yesterday on the lead lap. And the one I want to highlight is the one that is fifth, the last of that pack. It's the JP Motorsport McLaren started down in 40th, 40th, 4-0. Patrick Krupinski, the boss, did a sterling job working it up the order. Christian Kleen had a go. Norbert Siedler right at the end. Siedler, the Austrian, is the driver starting in fifth. And in a straight line, mm. just think about that run from Radion all the way up to where most of the overtaking happens. That is where the McLaren is absolutely fantastic. So I reckon that one's a podium finisher. And they only came here to do this race because it's not far from their team base, but it's all about experience. And who turns down a chance to race at spa Francorchamps? And that McLaren goes really, really well when it's dry. And we're going to start this second six hour segment in the dry. So we've got, we are going to see that McLaren optimized. So the starting grid, Heart of Racing, Pi, SPS, Ian James will kick off in their Mercedes. Santa Lot Junior Team, Erwin Bustard, who started yesterday, they have a very strong trio of drivers. They'll be starting second. Herbeth Motorsport, they're always at the front end in the 24RH races. And uh, Alfred Renau will be kicking off in that, his first proper race in the new Porsche. And then a car that just went better and better through the stint, Modena Motorsports. It's run by EBN Giga, that's uh, Earl Bamba's team. Their Porsche will be starting uh, from fourth. And then the JP Motorsport McLaren from fifth, Norbert Siegler at the wheel. Charles Espinal will kick off the first of the cars that is a lap down. They're going to have to work their magic. But then some of the drivers and, uh, brought their cars in for a pit stop not long before the end of the six hours. So they might be a lap down, but they could be starting on, you know, nigh on a full tank of fuel and uh, fresher rubber. Seventh place got better and better, particularly uh, at the end. Alexander Prince, the number 11, Hofer Racing, Mercedes, and then E2P Racing, a really good run for the uh, crew in their Porsche. Now, one of the features of the 24H series is the number of Lithuanian teams. You don't get them in many other championships, but the best place of their cars is the 71 Juta Racing Audi starting ninth. And one of our favourite cars, it runs in the GTX class, it's the VDS Racing Adventures Mark car. And Nathan Van Springle stood out yesterday on his debut in that car. Leipert Motorsport brought their Lamborghini. They'll be starting 11th. The 34 Land Motorsport Audi, Tim Fogler will kick off. That had its problems, but it was quick. It was a gearbox problem late in the race that dropped them back. GT3 Poland, second in uh, the GTX class. Their Lamborghini 763 starts 13th. 14th is the RD Signs, uh, also a Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo. That's car 720 from 14th. The second of the Juta Racing Audi starts 15th. That's car 72. Then the 9 und 11, the 719 is its race number. Porsche starts from 16th. Uh, the remaining Vortex, the 701 car, starts on the inside of the night throw alongside the PB Racing GTX class Lotus of which Stefan de Asto is not letting anyone else take the wheel at the moment. Haas RT, there we are, the car on pole yesterday in which Fred Vervish was making an early escape that had its problems. It had an accident, it starts down in 90. It did car 21, look out for that. And likewise, another front runner yesterday, car number one, the Audi from Shearer Sport PHX. They're way down the order, 19th and 20th, but on natural pace, they should be at the front end. And likewise, the 55 Land Motorsport Audi. It's got Christopher Meese on board, that's starting 21st. So three really quick cars, way down the order. MP Racing, that had a big shunt yesterday with David Gosner. That's been repaired overnight, the green Mercedes, car number 58. Then 755, the Land Motorsport. Motorsport Audi, 
that starts from 23rd, 24th position, HRT Performance. That is the highest starting point of any of the cars in the Porsche Cup class. And Adam Christodoulou will kick off in that. We heard from his one of his two Chinese teammates. Vili Motorsport, we also heard from uh, Fabrizio Brogi. He will start 25th, or his car will, with Sergei Nikolai at the wheel. Red Ant Racing, they've been really strong this weekend. 903 and 904, their two cars start 26th and 28th. In between them, 909, Red Camel Jordan's Porsche. That's fourth in the Porsche Club Cup, Cup class, but it did come in for fuel just before the end of the six hours. So it's sitting pretty down there. Going back to the Porsche Baltic entry, that's 992 on row 15. That's uh, alongside the 967 HRT Performance uh, Porsche Cup class car with a Stefano Monaco kicking off in that. Then PK Car Sport, their number 924. Porsche starts with Steen Slongin at the wheel. That's in 31st position. 32nd position is 920, the first of the Black Falcon cars. HRT Performance, 929, that will start 33rd. 919, second Black Falcon car, will start 34th. Then the Speed Lover 979 car, that had its own problems in the Porsche Cup, that starts 35th. 36th, the GT4 class leader, Adam Lacker, will kick off the check entry there. Bugira ZM Racing, that's 36. 37, Lion Speed GP uh, Audi, started by Patrick Kolb. That's not 427. Along 403, the Korean entry with uh, Jong Young Kim kicking off that. And then Row 20, TCL Motorsport, running in the GT4 class with the BMW. Gary Teklevers starts that alongside the only Toyota Supra in the race. That's car number 408, starting 40th. Then going down to the second part of the grid for the TCE entry, it's Home Guard Motorsport with their Cupra starting first. Martin Vedel Mortensen will kick off in that. Yasmin Prizik went very well yesterday in her Audi, 1-2-1. And that is as the cars come out of the chicane, the start of the race is nearly upon us. Six hours of racing today. The lights are red, waiting for them to go green to add to the six hours racing from yesterday. Five cars start on the lead lap, and it's Ian James on pole position who gets the hammer down, looks though his nose is in front of Erwin Bastard. A car length clear as they go up to La Source. It looks clean and tidy. Up the inside looks Alfred Renauer. He's been around long enough to know to play safe. It's three abreast in the battle for fifth place, and the McLaren seem to lose a little bit of ground, possibly by taking the tighter inside line. And in behind the Porsche Cup class cars going through very carefully indeed. The race is underway, and uh, Owen Bastard in second place, but Ian James leads into and out of Eau Rouge and up the crest to Radion. A little bit of sorting out behind, and just remember, Joe Bradley, a good exit from Radion. You will be gaining a place with a wonderful slipstream up that long straight. And it's at this very early stage that you can gain many, many places in already we're seeing Erwin Bastard challenging there for the lead of this race the Audi the green Audi challenging the Mercedes of Ian James but Ian James is a, a wily old fox he's maybe the am driver in that car but uh, you saw him there defending the line in a Lecom and as the field of GT cars getting tripped over one another as it looks like there through Malmody heading down to Brussels it looks like James has hung on to that lead the rest of the field coming through. And we, like I say, Bruce, this is where you make up the places. It's very, very crowded out there. And incredibly so, we saw no one trip over one another at the source. And we're almost halfway around the lap, almost into the downhill sweep of the double gauche corner sequence. And everyone through without any kind of issue. There's the Haas RT car making its way through the order. And that car on a rebuild completely to try and salvage just some championship points after a bit of a nightmare first six hours of this 12 hours of spa yeah it felt yesterday there were so many incidents that teams like house rt but there are three teams in the gt3 class right down the order they all had like a season's worth of problems now the early overtaking is not right at the front of the field it's uh, just around the point the gtx class cars are and in fact the RD, the VDS car from Van der Straten family, the Mark II Mustang, appears to have lost place to a couple of the Lamborghinis in that class. Up front, though, it's still Ian James stretching his leg at the front. Owen Bastard trying to keep up in the Santaloc Junior team, number 26 Audi, but it's that 27 Mercedes leading at the moment. And as they go up through Blanchimont for the first time, it's cloudy, but there is blue sky beyond. So the first, the starting drivers will be going, you know what, if there's rain, my teammate can have it later on. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm just going to enjoy this drive. Got a car moving 
moving slowly towards the bus stop. Uh, we saw the, 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 the 992 car lead the race overall. That's very, very rare to see that the slow class... Oh, we've just had a crash off. coming to the... It's one of the, the Audis stop. from Juta Racing, and it's, uh, it's turned hard left, coming off the kerbs as it came onto the start fish straight. Porsche Cup class car also involved. I'll just run you through before we get full footage of that. Ian James led from Owen Bastard, Alfred Renauer, and the brilliant start from the CP Racing Mercedes up to fourth place on the track, but bear in mind that's a lap down there, clear of the trouble. And just trying to see if it was 71 or 72 that has uh, smoked, has had a sm bash against the wall coming onto the start finish straight. Yeah, I'm looking out the window, Bruce, to see if I can see down towards the bus stop, and I can't quite see it. Nick can see it though. Okay, so let's go. We'll just talk through a replay, then we'll go down to Nick because replay is coming up. But uh, clearly, a car running a little bit wide and a little bit wider still coming onto the start finish straight. In fact, well, how do you call that one? Because I, it looked I, like a thump from behind that well, sent the Audi hard left. That could have been a very eager right foot as well, just spinning up the rear of that car and spearing off to the left. It looks like we can confirm. Let's go down to Nick to confirm who, exactly who that is, Nick. Uh, to my eyes, it's the 72 car. Correct. Um, it is absolutely smashed. Uh, it's gone very heavily in front left. I think front right's collapsed as well. Rear left is flat. So we're right as fat. So from all three angles, that car is bashed. I'm not sure. Yeah, the driver's out. The driver's out. I can see him behind the barrier. The other car scarpered off who is involved. Uh, obviously, we have a code 60. So we've seen some visitors. The Buggy Rad team have come in and the Land Motorsport uh, Audi TTTS as well. So these cars obviously uh, probably needed some fuel anyway. I expect we're going to get a plethora of machines in. All the people who are running light on fuel will be coming straight into the pits. Uh, no one's going to change a driver because there's no point. But uh, the rescue truck's already getting into position to pick up the Audi. So this might not be the longest mm. of Code 60s, though there is quite a bit of debris uh, spread at least three quarters away across the track from where the input packed and the spin afterwards happened. It's Jonas Karklis who was at the wheel of that car, and we saw Jonas get out there, and he's gotten into the intervention vehicle. Um, so the, uh, the good news is that the driver is very much OK as he got out of that car. Just unfortunate there, Bruce. Looked like from the the tyre, the stripes, uh, he maybe spun the rear wheels on that Audi R8 coming out of the bus stop there and uh, car spearing off to the left and big heavy impact. Yeah, uh, on, on later analysis and the different angle, it looks as though that 72 due to racing Audi, just too keen to get the start fully underway. At the, well, the end of the first lap fully... Uh, completed. Due to racing, still have the 71 car, the set other Audi, Arunas Getschikukas, uh, up in 13th place. But uh, it was uh, one of those things, just those curbs. Yesterday, you had to stay off because it was wet. Today, it would just stay off because you can't accelerate too eagerly over the curbing. You get the rough stuff, Joe, and that's always a problem when you're trying to put the power down. I mean, it was a very crowded exit of the bus stop there coming through to uh, cross the line to complete one lap and uh, a bunch of cars. And now we see how the Audis just speared off to the left. But um, looking at the uh, the overview, we saw big black tyre stripes. So for my presumption or speculation would be that he has spun the wheels up. I'm not sure. You could hard to tell from the head on shot into the bus stop chicane just whether or not he was helped into that spin. But uh, I suppose we don't need to speculate just how badly damaged the car is. Heavy frontal damage on that car, which, of course, is where the radiators and the suspension will be damaged. That, that, that is a huge job. We saw the Haas RT team take some damage. Nowhere near as bad as what that looks like. And that car took two hours to be rectified and repaired in the car, now, uh, in the just, pits. Just to explain what happened to the Haas RT car, it just went a little bit too far to the left, exiting Redion, and it was all down one side of the car. It looked worse than it was, but uh, most accidents are Redion. The car goes to the right and hits the barriers, but that was a fairly straight line thing. But this one, every single corner, possibly bar one, appears to be quite heavily damaged. And the flatbed truck, there is no chance of towing that car. There's nothing to hook it onto, but they're going to put the, the bar over the roof, pick the car up, and it's actually quite easy to remove from the track because it comes onto the start finish straight because there are gaps in the barriers they can go to. In fact, they were rather annoyingly just past the barrier, yeah. which is on the left-hand side, the driver's left as they come out of the chicane. But uh, they were very quickly on the scene, but really unfortunate. They had a clean run, as clean as anybody yesterday in, in the six hours here. In fact, the 72 car, the one that's crashed, 
that was tipped into a spin now I think about it at Malmedy, uh, not just before Malmedy, at uh, Les Combes yesterday, but reversed out, lost a bit of ground, but no damage. But today, damage aplenty. That, that's kind of an example of what I alluded to about just how important it is to make up ground in those early stages and an eagerness of the drivers to get back on that throttle on that run out of the, the bus stop. The, the car is perhaps the slowest it the is at, at any point of this spa circuit so you want to get out of that corner as readily as you can and that's maybe what we saw. Another thing you like to do is serve any time penalties. I think that's maybe what Nick is looking at. I'm looking at, uh, it looks like the 85 is serving a penalty, the Santalock car is serving a penalty, the McLaren, the JB McLaren is serving a penalty. Ian James has got out of the car. Uh, they're doing a full service on the hard of racing machine, tyres and then later fuel. Now, the problem they've got is there's only, I think, uh, six or eight tanks, and everyone is now coming past them. I, can see right now, I haven't seen a single car yet go down the main straight. They've all come out into the gap. Oh, that was an unsafe release by the heart of racing car. But they will get into the fuel tanks first, fuel Bowser. Uh, the 909 Red Camels is stopping, which is interesting, because that stopped very late uh, yesterday. And the 21, the Haas racing car, is the first one to go down the main straight. Everybody else has peeled into the pit. So, for example, here's the 34, the land car, the LMB11 for Mercedes. It's, uh, I've seen two cars not come down here. And I'm not sure what they're going to do. Yes, they can get a cheap tyre stop, but there's going to be an absolutely massive queue at the fuel stop almost immediately, guys. There's, so, a, queue, there's a queue, Nick, at the penalty box. Yeah, there's one, it's, it's a brilliant point. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars trying to serve a penalty. And I think that the, this is the Porsche coming towards us now, which is the 16 car, which is the Modena Motorsports, that tried to serve a penalty and was weighed on, saying there's no room, no room at the inn for penalty serving. Uh, there is a space now. So they, ha so they have to work out, is there a space for a penalty? And is there a space for fuel? Just to uh, remind everybody as well, Nick, that penalties are doubled. So if it's a 10-second penalty you're serving under the Code 60, it's doubled to 20 seconds. But 20 seconds lost when everyone's doing 60 kilometres an hour is less time lost on yeah. the track oh, than oh, it would be taking time. It's, it's Indeed it is, but, Nick, it's worth pointing out, not everybody was coming in to serve a 10-second penalty, and I would suggest the MP Motorsport, the number 58, the yeah. metallic green car of the Gossner family, that had a far bigger penalty because of uh, its incident where it rammed another car up at La Source. So they'll be sitting... If it was a 20-second penalty, that would be 40 seconds at a standstill, thus the bunching, but now only three cars in that area looking to stop for their penalties. But uh, well, out top, of course, in terms of leading the pack around, those that didn't come into the pit is the Haas RT oh, Audi, but they are way the down. EV they lost Motors so much car, time in the pits. Has Joe, got, has picked Nick. Up, the EV Motors car has picked something up on its... Oh, it, it went over an advertising hoarding on the uh, front right, which completely stuck to the very hot rubber to change those tyres. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you've got eyes on the fuel stop because the pit lane is empty now. Penalty serves, tyres change, even the odd driver change. Uh, and now it's a case of queuing for fuel, much as you would do on any Sunday morning at Tesco. Uh, bit of an interesting penalty being imposed on the 929 Porsche. That's the uh, HRT performance. Greg Gorski starting that car. Driver's equipment not in accordance with the regulations. 10 second penalty being imposed there. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm not even going to speculate on that one. Driver's equipment. Forgot Greg, to arrive in the pits wearing well, a bowler hat, perhaps? Well, just consider what Greg Gorski does for a living as well, of course. That's, driver's equipment might be uh, the, the uh, not according to the regulations. It, it, something was awry. Right, what we need to know is how, in what order the cars have left the pits, the front runners, and it's Roman De Angelis who's taken over that 27 uh, Mercedes that was leading the race at the end of last night, leading the way away from the grid. Ian James started it and tucked in behind was the Herbeth Motorsport Porsche. But I fancy some of the other cars around them had a better run of things into the refueling bay. But Roman De Angelis, as we joked yesterday, he was like a parrot who had a, a blanket over their cage to keep them quiet overnight. But he's in the, in the car and really starting to go for it. But they have really gained in that the, the JP Motorsport um, Car, the McLaren only now waiting, waiting to go into the refueling area. So a few teams really scrambled rather badly through the pits. Probably those that had the shorter penalties got away with it quite quickly. But what we had, let's remind ourselves, five runners who were on the lead lap, they've really been given, given a shake-up. If any of those didn't have a penalty to serve, they're going to be laughing. They'd have got to refueling earlier. 
we've got a queue at refueling as well. It's nothing more annoying than turning up at the uh, the local service station or supermarket uh, fuel station and find you can't get straight onto a pump. Well, that's what's happening here. Just a reminder, if, if you're new to the 24 h series, we don't do the refueling of these cars in front of their pit garage. They have to go off to a separate fueling area. Um, why do they do that? Well, it kind of cuts out the need for expensive refueling equipment on these cars. You don't have to have any of your, um, uh, all of your crew in fire suits. You don't need that uh, expensive equipment. The fueling station is at, uh, here at Spa is on the downhill, the heritage pits, the, uh, the, the, uh, the original pits, pit garages are very, very steeply inclined down towards Eau Rouge, and that's where we've put the fuel stations. So the cars come off the pit lane, turn right around the inside uh, turn of the uh, of the pit lane on the inside of the source, and then head down the incline to the fueling station. We've gone green, Bruce. Cars are being held up, cars are refueling, and I would suggest that that is because they were very, very short on fuel as they did this restart. Yeah, they didn't effectively have any option. The others could have chosen to come in several laps later. And of course, they always want to know how long the period's going to be, but two cars that are challenging for position. Alfred Renauer in the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche, just now turning into La Source, but tucked in behind the bright green Santa Lock Racing Audi car, number 26, Owen Bastard at the wheel of that, but uh, Roman well, DeAngelis is drivers. through ahead of them. They've changed drivers in that 26, it's Paul Everard. Oh, gosh, right, OK. Yeah, under so, our noses there. All right, so reiterate. Roman De Angelis took over the 27 Heart of Racing Team Mercedes that leads. Alfred Renauer stayed aboard the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche that's in second, three seconds further down the track. And Paul Everard has taken over from Erwin Bastard in the 26 Santelok Audi that's running in third place. It's Patrick Krapinski in the JP Motorsport McLaren that is being delayed somewhat in that challenge that he was perhaps in a position to make early on, that car needing fuel. So Krapinski in the JB Motorsport McLaren is dropping back as the cars ahead of him continue to go off at racing speed. Alfa Renauer perhaps optimising the, the, uh, that car at the moment, the 91 Herbert car. And the reason the McLaren from JP Motorsport lost so much ground, it wasn't one of the first two cars in the bay for, for penalties to be served. And I think it even started its penalty after the previous ones got ahead. They then were first into refueling. So it really multiplied. And when the McLaren went down the slope for refueling, it had to stop even before the bay. So it was delayed twice. The other thing, Bruce, when you queue into the pe penalty bays like that, the car in front might have 30 seconds. If you've got 10 seconds or 20 seconds, you're going to have to wait for that car to serve its penalty before you can move as well. Right, as, as the race leaders are going down towards uh, Campus, it's <laughs> only just now as the McLaren left the pits after its wow. refueling. So it's lost fully half a lap. You think how many corners you cut just a little bit to gain a tenth of a second. Mm. That has been a big hit, and it's totally my fault because I said they could be looking at a podium today, but hey, <laughs> it's a six-hour second half of this 12-hour race. There is time, but that's a big setback from for your first step, effectively. One racing lap, dive into the pit second time around, and then get delayed, not once, but twice. So, over the end, after 121 laps, that's three racing laps today. Roman De Angelis leading from Alfred Renard by 3.2 seconds. Paul Everard, third for Santaloc. Now, after 122 laps, the gap just waiting for Alfred Renard to cross the start-finish line, which he does now. He's lost, he lost more ground, five and a half seconds down, but he's pulled away a little bit from Paul Everard. So it's Mercedes, Porsche, Audi, or 27, 91, 26, from Heart of Racing, Herbeth, and Santaloc Junior team. So De Angelis crossed the line five and a half seconds ahead of Renauer. And another four seconds, so that's uh, just under 10 seconds. The Sunderland cars drop off the back of that Mercedes. Just want to say, that first flying lap from Roman De Angelis, 222.4. I think that's the far equivalent to the fastest lap yesterday. So they of, did the right thing. Of the whole race. Keep him keen. In fact, yes, that must be faster because these are, are covering the entire race. So he's about a tenth of a second faster. That's not bad. There was a fair bit of traffic out there. Mind you, he was early to the refueling base. So there wasn't too much in front of him when he went back out. But those who got caught in the queue, they necessarily will have to work their way carefully through the traffic. But, and I always look for the plus point, it's dry here. The track is dry. It's a novelty. Yeah. Grab it. Go for it. There's we, more space to play. We did hear Nick say that there was a little bit of a spit of rain, but it's certainly holding off at the moment. We have got rain forecast, though, and that's going to be coming around the lunchtime sort of break area. 1 p.m. is when it's scheduled. 
At the moment, though, we've got a straightforward race. Three cars now on the lead lap. The Charles Espinel CP Racing Mercedes is the first car off the lead lap, and that's in fourth place. The, the 992 class, still as competitive as ever, it's Rick Boyk is in the 909 Red Camel's car, now at the head of that uh, class of car, and he's fifth overall. That's the significant thing there, just how high up the order these 992 cars are. Kobe De Bruyne in the Red Ant Racing, that, uh, that Red Camel, Red Ant battle has been going on all race long. In fact, it's been going on for the last two years, to be honest. Uh, Sergio Nicolai in the Villy Motorsports by EB Motors, they're the, they're the team, that's the car that is leading the European Championship. The 955 number Porsche is leading the European Championship and they are third in that 992 class, seventh overall. So that's, that's a class that we're going to talk a lot about, simply because there's some fantastic racing going on in there. Yeah, and don't discount, just a tiny bit further back, 10th overall, 4th in class, that HRT performance number 930 that Adam Christodoulou is at the wheel of. But I must say, in the, in the first lap, before we had the problems going on to the start of lap two, I was looking at Rick Broikers in the red camels, Jordan, diving down to Brussel, gaining a couple of positions around the outside. He is Rick Broikers, that's what he does, and uh, he went from 4th in class up to 1st. But any car that didn't need a great deal of fuel, or none at all, because they came in late last night, could jump that queue and work their way up the order. Whereas I think Adam Christodoulou did need to make uh, a full fuel charge, and that's why he's gone from first in class to fourth. So the 909 just they did a little top off of fuel. They did come into the pits, but they went straight to fueling, probably one of the first in the queue, and then didn't, you know, they, they only needed a top off of fuel to gain. And then what we've got now is Rick Breuters, who is arguably, the it's not even an argument, really. He is the fastest driver in that car, uh, in that driver line. He's in there with his dad, Evo, and his younger brother, Luke. Luke's picking his pace up, no question, but Rick, you know, twice winner of the GTD class at the Daytona 24 Hours, uh, f winner in the GTD class at Sebring. That is the optimised driver that we have in that 909, and we'll see that car now stretch that fuel window with a, f a, br a brimmed tank of fuel, and we're going to see that car having a really, really good run now and really try to establish itself and maybe even gain a half a lap or more on the rest of those cars in the 992 field. I'm just imagining the atmosphere in the heart of Racing Team Garage because uh, the cars run for them by SPS Automotive Performers who know their Mercedes supremely well. And Ian James and Gray Newell be sitting back going, 2 minutes 22.4, 2 minutes 23.0, <laughs> the boy's doing well. And the boy is Roman De Angelis. he's flying. And uh, again, for racers from any continent to come to Europe to race it is fun but to come to Spa Francorchamps and then to have a dry track but they saved him yesterday no racing at all in the first six hours they could use four hours of, of Roman today I, I mean I know we're, we're really talking in glowing terms of Roman De Angelis you know Ian James is a very very competent race driver Green Ewell has proved himself to be likewise so they've got a very strong driver lineup with their two arms being blooming quick um, and then just to bring out of the toolbox a caged leopard I know you use the term parrot, I prefer leopard, because that's what both. this Canadian kid is, and, you know, to plug him in. And with very, very brave tactic, really, not to use him at all yesterday. You know, I said, that's impressive, 222.4. Yeah. Try 221 flat. Wow. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. So Roman De Angelis getting his teeth in that into the circuit here, the heart of racing team oh, Mercedes running supremely Bruce. well. 13 seconds yeah. clear. It's gone from seven, just under eight seconds, and now 13 seconds next time by. I did think that car was going to be in a very strong position going into the second part of this race, but there it is. The proof is in the pudding, as they say, right there. Mercedes seems to be super sweet at the moment. He may be a lap down in fourth place overall, but Charles Espenaub's just banged in the two-minute 23 lap. So... That car is going well, and all Charles can do in this stint in the 85 CP Racing Mercedes is try his utmost. Obviously, no errors. See if there's anything he can do to get onto that lead lap. That's what he has to do. Well, he's got Whether the... he can or he can't, we don't know. But he's second in the GT3 AM class, which is being led, of course, by Roman De Angelis' car, because, as you mentioned, Ian James and Gray Newell, they're AMs. Admittedly, there are AMs, and then there are special AMs. They're both very much special AMs in terms of ability and application. But... Uh, you know, we have all these internal battles. Looking back to Rick Broikers in fifth place, who's leading the, the Porsche Cup class, he's already found, what are we talking, let's do some simple maths here, 18 seconds. And now we've got a change, because Red Ant Racing, the 903 cars, drop back to third in class, and up to second in class, Vili Motorsport. They said they had problems a bit yesterday, but the 955 car in the hands of Romanian racer Sergio Nicolau, absolutely flying. 
And that's just a straightforward race, that, isn't it? Totally. That is that has gotten by and uh, moved up that position just on performance. Uh, we've just seen the number 85 uh, CP Racing Mercedes just get ahead of the 34 Tim Vogler Land Motorsport Audi. That's the car that came into the pits. It's dropped off the con out of contention, really. It was in contention for a, maybe a top five finish, but that uh, that car had a problem in the very very late stages of yesterday's six hours. Half an hour to go. They, with half an hour to go, they had the the plug that they checked the level of the gearbox oil level um, it had popped out and Christian Land again talking at breakfast I apologised for wishing him luck yesterday and having a, a rotten first hours, uh, first six hours of, the, of this weekend um, he was telling me he's, you know he's been working with Audis for over a decade and that is the first time that has ever happened I mean talk about bad luck no, absolutely rotten luck, but uh, when the 34 Audi, of which we speak, was going well, it was going very well indeed yesterday. Max Edelhoff was a real star in that car. Tim Fogler's at the wheel at the moment, 16th position overall, but he's four laps down. In terms of his, the pace that Tim's doing, absolutely fine. Two minute 25, so that's actually pretty competitive. So they're in for the long run. It's, we had six hours yesterday, six hours a day to add to that. We'll see how high he can go. I would reckon a top 10 is possible. But let's see. What we started to see there, Joe, was the fact that any we had these um, late race penalties yesterday hanging over today. They've already set some of the some of the crews back because they couldn't serve them right at the end of the play yesterday afternoon. That's jiggled the order. Still waiting for Haas RT to even get into our front page of timing, which is 36th position, um, <laughs> because they lost so much time with their car that started on pole position. It seems really a long time ago. It was only not even 24 hours ago that we saw Fred Vervich, of all people, on home ground, just sprinting away from the field. But then the track conditions started changing and he started going back uh, towards the best of the rest of the Audis. It was Audis all the way. And then things kept on changing from there. But for the Haas RT crew, they've got a long way to go even to get another position up because uh, they are so far down. We had 50 cars starting, uh, probably around 40th position at the moment. And we lost two cars overnight, maybe only one. Maybe it was only the 702 uh, Vortex that didn't make it through. They had a, a big shunt on the way down towards Eau Rouge yesterday afternoon. We've had some uh, pretty draconian uh, penalties issued. Five laps deducted from race results for the 58 car. Which OK, is that was the, the Gossner family car, the yeah. MP Racing Mercedes, and that uh, caused an accident up at La Source, if you remember, and then drove the whole way with the bonnet folded back against the windscreen before pulling off at Le Combe. It was... I'll tell you what the penalty's been given, and it's been given to four cars. Uh, it's oh. been given to the number... The, I'll, I'll read the numbers out, and then we'll clarify exactly who they are. The, the number one, the number 755, the number 55, and the number 58. Uh, working on the car during intervention break after written and approved request. So that was that was the, the teams requesting to work on the cars. A five lap penalty is being given there. It's usually ten, but here at Spa, I think it's been deemed that five laps is enough of a penalty. Ten laps around this long lap. And, and to is, explain what you mean by the intervention break. Right, so they, we, we, we have a 12 hours of spa run, run over two six-hour six hour segments. So we press the pause button after six hours, and then we go into what's called the intervention, where you're not allowed to work on the car unless you request permission to work on the car. If you request permission, you're going to get that five-lap penalty. I think Nick's got something to add to this. Yeah, Nick, this is one of your pet subjects. Oh, I was just saying that there's nothing special um, about... Spa, it's a standard uh, Creventic thing. If you want to work during the intervention and you request it, it's five laps. If you just go ahead and do it, it's ten laps. All oh, right, good point. Good, well clarified. Thanks, Nick. Again, when teams come and compete in this championship, they find a whole host of rules they haven't come across before. They have to work out how to use them, how not to be tripped, tripped up by them. But with all things Creventic, having been... Uh, commentating on the races in this series for, uh, I suppose, about a decade now. I just admire, everything seems to have a very logical pattern. We all know if you look at various championship rules of championships around, not all of them seem to be thought out with um, the aim of getting people on track as much as they possibly can. It's very much aimed at the customer, the competitor, and I thoroughly approve of that. Now, as Alfred Renauer starts to pick up the pace in second place, he needs to... He's just done hit that car's fastest lap of the entire meeting, but he's nearly 15 seconds down in second place in that 91 Herbert Motorsport Mercedes because Roman De Angelis just continues 
to lap really competitively. I think he had traffic last lap because his, uh, the Canadian's pace fell down a little bit. So it was 15 <laughs> seconds, it is 14. But uh, what we've seen with, uh, I think, an incident-free track at the second is some very, very smooth running indeed. So a refresher, car 27, the heart of racing, Mercedes leads by 14 stroke, 15 seconds a lap. Another lap will be going on the board very soon. Alfred Renau, second place, the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Third place still, Paul Everard, the Santaloc junior team. Audi, that's car number 26. They're the only cars on the lead lap. One lap down, Charles Espinal having a very good run in the CP Racing Mercedes is fifth. Sixth place, Rick Broikers, 909, the Red Camels Jordan Porsche leading the Porsche Cup class. And his margin is 15 seconds. A bit like first or second in the overall race, it is 15 seconds between him and the 955 Villy Motorsport by AB Motors Porsche. Sergei Nikolai completing the top six. Just look at those lap times by Nikolai, though, in that Villy Motorsport Porsche. 226 dead was the lap time from that car compare that to a 228.4 from Rick Breukers in the Red Camels car, the gap 15 seconds but the car in second place in the 992 class catching the 992 class leader, we'll keep an eye on that as well as that, Kubi de Breuker in the 903, he's done a 226.7, so only 7 tenths slower than Sergio Nicolai so we've got, we, we, we knew we would have a, a great race for the 992 class Bruce and already I mean, yes, early stages, five and a half hours to go. I can see that continuing for the whole of the next five and a half hours, to be honest. I can. I'm just interested to see if Rick Proikers picks up his pace. He goes across the line to help me in that front, at least. He does a 227.5, so he's a little bit slower than those behind, but I think the previous lap when he did a 2 minute 28 was traffic infested if we can describe it that way. Also keeping an eye out for a driver who's quicker than the trio of them. He's the driver in the fourth place car in the Porsche Cup class. A Christodoulou, not just A Christodoulou, the Christodoulou, Adam Christodoulou. Tenth overall, but he's in the 225s. He's got some distance to go to catch up, but uh, again, showing what he can do. And if you think, why am I talking about Adam Christodoulou in a Porsche? Isn't he a Mercedes driver? Yes, he has an exclusive contract with AMG to compete at the ring. He's already getting super ready for the Nürburgring 24 hours, but he's a free agent elsewhere, and he's really enjoying bringing a couple of uh, Chinese drivers along here. Uh, Eric Zhang and uh, Jinji Ji, who races just under the pseudonym Martin, which makes it easier for us slow-witted commentators. <laughs> uh, let's have a bit of an update on our touring car classes. TCE, the Touring Car Endurance Series, is being led, uh, still being led from yesterday by the Holm Guard car. The Holm Guard Cooper, Le Cooper Leon of uh, the 102 is being driven by uh, Martin Vidal Mortensen. That car has got uh, a lap lead on the second car in TC, which is the rail keep by Todd Carsport. Hoggy Pellet Ruith, the young driver, who is our current European young driver champion uh, from 2022. He still carries that through this season. The 123 numbered car is uh, in second, just ahead of... Ah, uh, now they've just clicked by a lap, so I'm going to have to wait a little while before I see where Yasmin Prysik is in relation to that. The Wolf Power Racing number... One to one, the Audi RS3. The, uh, she's in third place. All of these three cars leading TCE are in the TCR class. The first non-TCR car is the seven, the Porsche 718 Cayman. That's in the TCX class, and it's the SRS team name, team Saw Rensport. Seppi Stiegler is at the wheel of the 227. 36th place overall. A uh, bit of a gap before we get the next of the TCX winners, and that's the BMW. M2, that's the 450 brake horsepower car from Roma Racing, and that's Mara Mercury in the 245 40th overall. And then the final TCE car that is still running in this race, that's the only car in the TC class, that's the less powered BMW M2, the 365 brake horsepower, all for racing by Bonk Motorsport. It's Alex Schmidt at the wheel of the 331, and he's 42nd overall. Thanks very much, Joe. And while that was being run through, checking out everybody up and down the order, we had a car rumbling through the pit. Charles Espinard, the CP Racing Mercedes, lapping very well, but he's just reported through, possibly because he thinks it's a better time to go and get some fuel. The American racers rumbled up through the pit lane, up to the top on the inside at La Source. 
will now be going down the slope and I don't think anybody else is in the pit so he doesn't have to queue could be a very clever tactic indeed but that was going well but the first three remain the 27 Mercedes of Heart of Racing team by a margin of nearly 19 seconds that's the gap between Roman De Angelis and Alfred Renauer in the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche and Paul Everard is in oh, almost the same margin about 20 seconds further back in third place in the 26 Santa Lock Racing Audi, Charles Espinel trickling down. The pit speed limiter must feel as though you are just wading through treacle. So slow, nobody down there in the refueling lane whatsoever. Out comes the pump, the standard looking nozzle, and yeah. one of the mechanics in the crew with 85 on the back of his red overalls and the lollipop board stands in front. The refueling, the, re the actual refueling equipment is standard pump fuel, the type of thing that you and I fill our cars with. Daily. There's none of this. <laughs> quick fill stuff that you know you've got a big churn or anything it's basically the, the hand pistol type uh, refueler and you just know that when you stick that in that race car it's going to take an age to get all of that fuel in you can imagine that i mean all we are concerned with is getting out and getting home when we fill our cars up but it still feels like a long time filling that car to 100 liters is going to feel like an age when you're just sat there and all the cars are going by you at full race speed well just to give you an example when Charles entered the pits, Charles Espinal in the 85 CP racing Mercedes, he was fourth, he was a lap down, by the time he was just pulling in for refueling, on his windscreen his positional marker said seventh, so that means the three uh, cars, in the, the first three cars in the 992 Cup, that's Rick Broikers in 909, the 955 Sergio Nikolai driven Willy Motorsport car and the Red Ant entry of Kobe de Broikers 903 had all gone past him. Talking of that 992 battle, the 992 battle for second and third in class. Corby de Broica right on the tail of Sergio Nicolai. Uh, uh, Rick Broica has responded. He's pulled the gap out now 17 seconds. So the the two the, the cars, the 955 of uh, the Villy Motorsports and the Red Ant Racing 903, drop back off the tail somewhat of the 909 Red Camel's car. So we maybe keep an eye on whether or not we'll see a, a change for position. The cars have just gone by underneath us, Bruce, and they're pretty much nose to tail through the source. On down the hill, they run to Eau Rouge, and it's whether or not Corby de Broica can get a run through Eau Rouge and out onto the Kemmel Street, the multicoloured car of the Villy Motorsports by EB Motors Porsche. Up and over the hill at Radion they go, and they, you can call that nose to tail pretty much. The Red Ant car just dropping into the slipstream and maybe getting a little bit of a slipstream help all the way along that Kemmel Street. I'm not sure he's close enough to mount a challenge and he stays where he is. So second and third do not change in that 992 class battle. No, it wasn't quite close enough coming out of La Source. Didn't gain anything through Eau Rouge. And if you're not close enough out of Radion, you will not be getting a toe. But uh, that said, <laughs> through Le Combe and then into Malmody, the car in sixth place now, Kobe de Broca getting much closer to Ser Sergio Nicolai. There was a car they had to pass. They lost a little bit of time just going into uh, the Le Combe chicane at the top of the hill but certainly it's only about half a second between fourth or fifth place Sergio Nikolai the 955 Willy Motorsports entry and 903 Kobe de Broica in the Red Ant when I say the Red Ant I mean the better place to the two Red Ant racing uh, Porsche Cup cars that's 903 the sister car 904 Sam de Jong another Belgian racer at the wheel of that is down in 12th so fifth in class We've had a, a, a tweet. Welcome along if you're listening or watching wherever you are in the world. And we're joined this morning uh, by our old stalwart listener, Dave Alcock, who asked the question, the last couple of Creventic races, the TCE, Evo cars have had some reliability, reliability issues. Have we seen a repeat of this here? Dave, I really didn't really answer that question because I'm not going to hex anybody. All, I can, all I'm willing to tell you is that the Wolf Power car, the 117, who we were looking forward to see uh, Marcus Menden and, um, and of course, World Touring Car, multiple World Touring Car World Champion, Rob Huff. That car went out very, very early on with, I can't remember the issue in their Audi RS3. Bruce, was it a gearbox? I th it, I think? Gearbox rings the bell to me. It was only with about seven laps on the board. And they just, hardly had done anything. No, it pulled to the side of the circuit, was brought back on a, a flat pack truck, as we like to call them now, and uh, was, was recovered. Right. Roman De Angelis, what sort of pay? He's done another 2 minute 21. That's about the fourth 2 minute 21 second lap. That is why he's pulling clear. 23 and a half seconds clear now of Alfred Renau. Paul Everard falling back, can't match the pace of Alfred Renau. So Mercedes, Porsche, Audi, and 
did I sense a little bit of uh, change well, in the weather? We've still got that 992 battle raging for second and third place as the multicoloured Wheelie Motorsports by EB Motors car continues to lead around the Red Ant car. And let's go down to Nick. I'll give him a few seconds to open his mic. We've got rain spots appearing on some of our cameras. Nick, have you got any rain in the pit lane? It wouldn't be un unfamiliar ground here at Sparta <laughs> have rain at the far end and no rain in the pit lane. Uh, we've got this every, you walk about, and every 20 seconds a drop falls on you. Uh, it actually looks brighter over the back way behind the main grandstand, so a tiny amount of rain. It might get the point where it becomes psychological rain on the uh, windscreens of the drivers, but at the moment, this is famous last words, that's nah, fine. Of course, uh, Fabian in my ears have just said we've got we might have rain. Of course, he's got cameramen around. He's, he's got lenses he's, that have moisture yeah, well, on he's, them. He's, he's, he's got human beings behind those cameras who were feeling the rain. Yeah. Um, what so we can tell you, we can't see any cars as yet with windscreen wipers on. No, there's no windscreen wipers. And we certainly haven't seen any sort of uh, indication from track times or lap times, I should say. Side by side, that's not a battle for position. That was seeing the CP Racing Mercedes going side by side with the number 34, the Land Motorsport Audi, which is on a bit of a recovery drive after losing lots of time towards the latter stages of yesterday's first six-hour segment. Hopefully, they won't trip over one another. They're two laps apart, yeah. but two metres apart in terms of uh, where they are on the real estate. It's the CP Racing Mercedes, white with the blue and red flashes. In front on the track, but of course, his team will be saying to Charles Espinel, well, don't naturally let him through, but don't uh, obstruct him because Tim Fogler in the 34 uh, Audi is trying to get through. He's two laps down. The 967 Porsche, unfortunately, has had a little rotation at the very point coming out of the final chicane onto the start finish straight where we lost the number 72 Audi that went crashing into the wall at the end of the first uh, lap of this That's race. Stefan and Monaco, the HRT performance car, getting all sideways, coming out the bus stop there. Now we've got windscreen wipers, and I'm not sure whether that 967, Stefano Monaco, they're just recovering without any real issue. Well, not he's got his, either. Well, he's got his wipers going. I'm not sure whether he had that half spin or full spin. Uh, we saw the latter part of that car being sideways to the direction of travel. Into the pits has come Sergio Nicolai. That's the car out of second place hold on i think it's got some some what's your thoughts on that Sergio it's just Nicolai. fuel he's uh wandered past when that car spun there was a sudden flurry of activity if people wanted to see whether it's going to cause some sort of code 60. um there is this water in the air uh but nothing that's going to affect grip yet the uh air jacks you can hear for the 919 uh one of the the alpha uh industry sponsored black falcon racing Porsche Cup cars. Uh, very attractively wrapped, actually, that car in fairness to it. They've just done the tyres. But, yeah, so I'm, I I don't think, you know, I'm going to make a major statement here. We're not getting rain for an hour. Oh, wow, that is a statement. Thank you, Michael Fish, reporting on the weather conditions down in the pit lane there. So what I have just noticed, though, we heard the interview on the grid uh, from Alfred Renauer with Nick before the start of the race. His first race in this brand-new uh, Porsche, he's getting to grips with it. He's just putting it his car and the car's fastest lap, so better than anything any of his teammates did yesterday. And then he's put in another lap within two tenths of a second of that. So he's second overall. He's not catching the race leader because the race leader is Roman De Angelis, and Roman continues to escape. 27 seconds uh, is the gap between first and second. CP Racing, yeah, really hanging on at the moment. We uh, saw that yesterday. Um, what we've got is a report from the 85 CP Racing Mercedes, Bruce, of fuel spewing out of the fuel filler gap. It's only through left-hand corners. I saw that and I thought mm. it was tyre smoke. But uh, with the car just having took on a, a full tank of fuel, that is really, really easy to see now. Out there on the track, through left-hand corners, fuel spewing out, and that's... Got sewer, it surely got something to, to, to do with the seals on that filler cap, which is, a, I, I think, it's just a push fit. So I'm not sure what the attitude of the of the officials will be on that. Now, of course, the crew might have wanted to check that overnight, but the element about not being allowed to work on the cars overnight unless you want to ask permission and lose five laps or do it anyhow and just lose ten. So just to reiterate where the CP Racing Mercedes is in the race. At the moment, it's in 14th place. 
it's on 129 laps completed. It's lost time. It was a lap down on the race leading part of Racing Mercedes at the start today. Had that extra run in the pits just a short while ago for Charles Espinard. It's had two visits to the pits and it's down in 14th place. But importantly, it's three laps down at the moment. That so it's, it's been a setback. But again, you talked about how long it takes to put yeah. you know, however many litres in your car. It really, if it takes a while at your petrol station, it takes the same out here, but time moves faster in motor racing. The team may not even be aware that that fuel is, is coming out of the filler. And that's not something if Nick was to pop down there, that's not something they might want to talk about because they don't. It's the sort of thing where if you're going to get a, a, a black flag, um, ah, right, so the, no, yeah, the, so the stewards have noticed there's an official uh, message come up on the screen, car 85, please check fuel leakage at inlet. Um, so the team will surely be aware of that, Nick, and uh, have a wander down there and see if they intend to do anything about that. But it seems to be at its worst, logically thinking, when the car is full, as that fuel gets less and less in the tank, it's going to leak, uh, it's going to leak less. However, as you said, Bruce, it's, it's reducing its fuel mileage, isn't it? Because it's spewing most of it out the side. And also very distracting for anybody who's following. And the person who gets that honour right at the moment and for the past few laps is Tim Fogler. He's uh, several positions further back as that uh, 34 Land Motorsport Audi. Well, he's down in 16th relative to 13th, 14th for CP Racing. But he's sitting behind about a second back. So he doesn't see it when the car turns to the right in front of him. But when it turns left, there'll be that little bit of spray out the side. Just that moment... Joe, where something hits your windscreen and you start to doubt it. Is that, oh, is that fuel? You know, just something. You've got to question it. It, it, and it would, does distract from... And it would smear. Yeah. As soon as you move, as soon as... If you do get that spray onto your windscreen, and you, it's going to be a greasy sort of residue. And the car that's following the CP car, the 34 Land Motorsport Audi, Tim Vogler at the wheel of that car, um, hopefully won't be too distracted, as you say, by that. He's following him round and without sort of getting too close, he was sort of squabbling over that, uh, those track positions. That's all it was, because there's two laps apart. Uh, let's head down to the pits. I can hear Nick maybe with someone. Is it CP Racing? It certainly is, which are Charles. Um, just seen the warning coming up about the fuel coming out of the car. Isn't this a recurrence of a problem from yesterday? No, we don't really have a problem with that. All it is is the aerodynamics on the Mercedes with that white background. You know, there's always just a tiny bit of fuel spilled when they're filling the car. That leaks down, it stains the white. And the car looks pretty bad back there yesterday from all the, the water that it collects back there as well on the wet tracks. But no, we don't have any problems with the fuel tank. On the screen, it kind of looks like there is fuel coming out of the filler. I we're, we're not running short on fuel and we haven't really seen it. So I think that's pretty normal for it. The car usually looks like it has a little bit of a leakage there, but we'll check it and make sure now that you point that out to it. Well, it's, actually on, it's actually on the screen, so you need to have a look at it. Okay, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to do that. Hopefully I'm not the bearer of bad news. Thanks, Charles. You bet. So yeah. the message being taken on board there by Charles Putman. But again, we spend our time looking at timing screens and moving images screens, but they're busy just getting ready. Maybe Charles Putman is well, in the, the drivers car next. Are. Yeah, the Dri en uh, hopefully yeah. the engineers, the no, guys who are running that car, will be fully aware of what here the stewards have said. You need to check your fuel inlet. And also, they'll, they'll not necessarily be watching the, the, uh, the, the live stream, but they'll be certainly unaware of it until that's come up. So that's a notification. I mean... You know, there's been time when, when if, if they are giving the mechanical flag, you've got three laps to bring the car in under that mechanical flag. And, and in within that three laps, I've had cars running around with a door flapping open, and I've said to the driver, stay out, and hopefully the door will clash shut. And invariably it does, sometimes it doesn't. And that's what the team will be open, that that problem goes away. It's through left-handers, and as we say, and it's, uh, it's still happening, I, I can see, that it's still happening to that car. So it, it'll get the point where the stewards will go, right, that's a problem that we're not happy with, uh, fueling raw fuel, spewing raw fuel out onto the racetrack. It's not going to cause it'll quickly dissipate in the air, so it's not like it's spewing oil. But uh, it's something that's going to stifle that car's running. The 85 Mercedes, as you said, the CP car down in 12th at the moment, running in ninth place in uh, GT3, in the GT3 AM class, 12th overall. But that is because of pit stops.
Totally. And that, that will come back. That will come back to it. Yeah, so it started sixth, the first car that was a lap yeah. down. It's made an extra pit stop. But, of course, think back a few years. There's a few more drops of rain or on the, on the lenses of the cars around Blanchiment. Uh, rent the, uh, the cameras, the cars go through Blanchiment. Uh, Ten years ago, the SLS Mercedes. Remember, the problem was the uh, gull wing doors used to just pop up a little bit. Yep. And I remember right. one of the Creventic races at Zandvoort. You know, the drivers resting the car around while trying to hold the door yep. down to stop it rising up, and uh, that would be easily picked up, but not so easy to fix. So little drops of rains at various points on the circuit, not on the start finish straight, but. This car's starting to find rally on a little more slippy. Was that the yeah. Red Camel's Jordan? No, it's the Red Ant car. The oh, it's the Red Ant, the other next yeah. Red Ant. So that's the car second in the 992 class. 24 seconds down, pretty much matching for pace. Uh, Rick Broikers is uh, Kobe Broiker, but there he would have had a chattering moment as he got it wrong going through rally on. But rather than fight the car, he let the car breathe at Kobe de Breuker, and as he came over the brow at Radion, he was kind of off track. Well, he wasn't kind of off track, he was very much off track, but he didn't fight it back onto the track. He just let the car breathe. If you're going to take a track limits infringement, that's better than uh, to, you know trying to fight the car back on the track and losing it. He is chasing down Rick Breuk, as who's um, kind of took command of that 992 class lead. He's got 24 seconds gap now between himself and Kobe de Breuker in that 903. Time for quick news from the meteorological department. Yeah, I'm Michael Fish. Uh, it's raining. Um, not super hard, but now it is... The, the, the droplets are joining up on the floor. So, yeah, they've got... You, if you look at that, you can see a kind of a sparkle way down. There's a, there's a red line of paint in the middle of the pit lane. And you look down it, it's kind of shiny now. As it has, it's, more, it's more drop of rain than not rain, but it's not completely wet. So I don't think still it's affecting the track, but I'm sure it's affecting the uh, the minds of some of the drivers. Would it be enough, Nick, if someone just wide, went wide coming out of that final chicane and, and touched the painted curbing on the outside, perhaps tip them into a spin? I think... Let me look, I'm going to test it, because this is curb paint. Nick, you uh, know... Possibly. Nick, Nick, on your grid walk this morning, you showed us the surface of the track and how yep. you've got kind of grooves yep. put into the tarmac. Uh, what you couldn't really pick up on the on your camera was just how deep those grooves are. So the, there's grooves every, yeah, what, a couple of centimetres going across. The grooves are about half a centimetre to three-quarters centimetres deep. Right, so there's a so, so diamond cut. And that's to let the, give the water somewhere to go yeah, so that the tarmac prevent... protrudes. That's what the tyres come into contact yeah, with. Yeah, it's a spray preventer as well, Joe. Now, interesting, the, right. um, the Haas RT team, who are obviously on a catch-up, of coming in, matching the trace, got out. Uh, and Seth and Perrin's got in, but they're putting dries on, which I don't know. I mean, obviously, again, it's the issue at Spa. We've got uh, heavy spitting as in comes Charles Espenlaub in the CP racing car, and they are now attacking that fuel filler with a, uh, an Allen key to tighten it up, see what the problems are. The team looking at what's going on, they've got at it with an Allen key, and they've kind of walked away. Nope, car's going into the... Oh, dear car in the garage so they're going to have to retire not retire the car return the car to the garage to sort this filler issue out uh, a lot of cars now coming in but we are in this weird situation where the rain we have is consistently not very much and certainly not enough to get anywhere near the change over to wet so it's a mystery boys it'll depend how wet it is around the rest of the track yeah, we had Adam Christodoulou. Adam Christodoulou tell, told us yesterday that this this place here at Spa it dries really, really quickly, and it, it's uh, uh, probably to do with how they've tread the tarmac and how the tarmac is is actually laid down. Um, so it's going to take a lot of water before we see the track conditions change and the track evolve. We can monitor that from lap times at the moment. You know, we've got uh, Roman De Angelis, the car that leads this race. A, one, a 2.21 is his best lap, and we saw that happen this morning. He's been lapping consistently in the 2.24s. When the track does transition, Bruce, it tends to go to about 10 seconds slower. That's when you can call it consistently wet. Yeah, that, that was the absolute key yesterday when it was almost on the nose. So Charles Esper now about us, uh, chatting to the CP racing team there. He, he did a really good job there, and um, but will be frustrating. But uh, actually, he's now looking a little bit more animated in the garage there. But uh, they put so much into their racing. But now, is this something that could be fixed easily? That would be something Nick will need to keep his eye on. But uh, some tape is being brought out. 
we were thinking about an alum key, but we will see. Well, it's going to be a bit of a, um, a desert tactics employed. It's not. I mean, it's the sort of thing. If the filler cap, if the if the self-closing filler is not sealing correctly, then there's nothing really you can do other than change that component part of the filler out and, and renew it. it. That's impossible. Nick, so what they've, gone, what they've gone for is a temporary fix. They are effectively sealing the tank with a combination of a, I think at the top of a sort of a brake fluid cleaner can, which they are then, which fills the hole, which are then taping on as solidly as they can. Uh, this is obviously something that's going to affect them every time they try and refuel the car, because they have to un take it off and put it back on again. But effectively, to put a new filler cap on would take you know 20 minutes, half an hour probably. It's quite a fiddly little thing. So the idea is, let's stop the problem, and when we get to each time we refill the car, the refuelers will know what they have to do, will know how we have to patch it, will take the patches down to them, and they'll be able to do it with a loss, a loss of time, but a minimal loss of time. So it's uh, some good make to amend endurance racing engineering here. Yeah, and, and I just saw that Charles Espinal was helping the mechanics doing what you do oh, at yeah. Christmas when you wrap the presents and you cut the, the sticky tape first and stick it to the type side of the table, cut some strips, then you fold your parcel. He waited and then put three strips across to the mechanics and that helped speed the whole thing up. It's teamwork, Nick, it's teamwork. He was very and annoyed with out. that. I understandably, uh, Nick, Charles Espinlau was not happy to have to come in for that problem. However, it's a mechanical problem that the officials didn't like the look of. And it, there's nothing you can do, but I, I understand him. He's fired up, he's out in the car, he's pushing and pushing and pushing, and then, you know, all of that work go, comes to nothing because you've got to come in and rectify that. So I can really feel for him. And let's just point out at the start of today, with six hours behind us and six hours ahead, the uh, CP Racing Mercedes, that's car number 85, started in sixth position, one lap down, but now it's tumbled down, tumbled down, and is sitting in 13th and falling, and is now best part of four laps in arrears. Of course, you could say, OK, outright win has gone away from it, maybe just aim for victory in GT3 AM, but the car that's leading GT3 AM is the car that's leading the race outright, and that's the 27 heart of racing. Mercedes, so it's not likely to haul that one back, but uh, bigger targets have been achieved. But for Charles Espinal, he was setting, settling in, putting in some really good lap times, and uh, they were going to be one of the cars that were sort of later into the pits after having had a fairly recent uh, refueling stop. So a big setback for CP Racing. In the Porsche 992 class, it's still being led by Rick Broikers in the entry 909, which is Red Camel Jordan. A little bit of uh, moisture still in the air, but he's, yeah, last time I looked, he was 24 seconds clear of Kobe de Broika in the 903 entry from Red Ant Racing. It's now 27 seconds, so a bit of give and take, not much in it, really. Good tactic, though. Good tactic from that team. You know who their strategist is, don't you? Mr. I do. Mr. Trustwell. Um, uh, it was, uh, and I know that the team is kind of like, they make decisions like that by committee. Um, but it was a very good tactic to pit very late on and then restart this second six-hour segment with a full tank of fuel. They were really, really pushing for that full tank of fuel to stretch that early window to the point where they took advantage of the early code 60. They came in and even topped it off even more. And then Rick Breukers was deployed with the mission statement of go out and put as much space between you and that second-place 992 car. And he's doing it. He's been doing it consistently, and he's doing it to the extent of what? Let's, we might as well call that 27 seconds. Yeah, he, it's a half second here and there. There have been slower laps, but it's, it's the average across those laps. It's just that little bit better from the uh, Red Camel Jordan's car, number 909. And it's yesterday, for a long time, we had a 992 Cup class car leading the race. Today, Rick Broika's leading that class is in fourth overall. He's got 137 laps under his belt. Roman DeAngelis leading the race, race out right for Heart of Racing. has 138, so one lap more. And talking of Roman DeAngelis, again, eking his way clear. He can just lap at will in the 2 minutes 22s. It's an absolute gold standard. He's got as low as 2 minutes 21.0. He's 40 seconds. 4-0 seconds the good over Alfred Renauer's number 91, Herbert Motorsport Porter. Another lap about to be completed by the Canadian Charger De Angelis over the start-finish line. Oh, he's let it go at 2 minutes 23. Traffic, and he can still put in laps faster than anyone else. We're, we're only just on three minutes away from completing the first hour of this six-hour 
segment a day, and he's put 40 seconds on the rest of the field in, the, in that time. Um, now, some of that, it must be said, Joe, when we had that initial flurry into the pits, yeah. teams that had penalties to serve, he was at the front of the queue, so he had the shortest time at a standstill for those that had to come in first to refuel, you know, Good. one of the early ones to refueling. Good point, that Bruce, because it's not all on track performance that 40 seconds, is it? He had a good chunk of time when he went out there and, and things settled down after that code 60. Um, he's got, I mean, you know, Alfa Renauer in the 91 Herbeth car in second, he's lapping in the 27s last time by. Um, I'm not sure whether that's got anything to do with track conditions changing now out there or whether that was just a bit of traffic. The car behind the Sonderlock junior team Audi, Paul Everard at the wheel of the 26 in third, his last ta lap time by, uh, 226. So a considerable difference there of, of let's say, three, rounded off at three seconds, the difference between the car the cars in second and third place, and that Roman De Angelis, heart of racing Mercedes, 223 last time by. If the drivers clip the curbing, I'm just sort of seeing a couple of cars coming out of uh, Fania, they, they do actually uh, kick up a tiny bit of moisture, but I think the rain has largely passed. I haven't seen a car for a while getting the windscreen wiper going, and the, the, the place where it seemed to have the most precipitation is Campus, Kurt Paul Freire, Blanchimont, and then it seemed to stop by the time it came to, or largely stop by the time it came to the pits. And I like Nick's description yesterday of summer rain, where you don't get many individual drops, but each one would leave the mark like you dropped a penny on the pavement. Yes, yeah. an old penny. Old penny, yeah, big one. Even before our time, Bruce. Yes, yeah, so it's just yes. allegedly. But in terms of drivers lapping close to their, their, their car's best lap, Certainly, Roman De Angelis is doing that. In fact, he set the best lap. But some of the others are three, maybe four seconds off. Even the cars in second and third places, Alfred Renard and Paul Everard, are about. Uh, actually, Paul Everard, not so much. The 26 Santa Lot Racing Audi. It's another, what are we talking, 40 seconds back from Renault's second place Herbert Motorsport Porsche. But uh, certainly, when the 26 Santa Lot Racing Audi, the bright green one, is handed over to. Well, actually, Antoine Ducoin did a good job yesterday, but Owen Bastard is the, the real fly driver in that car. Yeah, yeah, he seems to be. Um, quick update on the GTX class, who are down in 17th and 18th overall, as Paulus uh, Pescovicius has taken the Lamborghini, the RD Signs Lamborghini, into the pits for fueling. That's given the lead back to the Mark Carr's VDS Racing Adventures. Nick Geelan, the wheel of the 758. Now that's the, the car that's based on the Ford Mustang. And that really is a beast of the car in that GTX class. Uh, V8 engined, uh, 650 brake horsepower at 7,000 revs. And we saw that car being absolutely bossed around the Spa track here yesterday. More of the same, I think, coming today, considering how wet it was. Uh, that car showing fabulous pace for what is effectively a a, a, a silhouette formula car, isn't it? Really underneath that. It's a great car. Land Motorsports, they've had their ups and downs in the race. What's the latest from their camp, Nick? Well, here comes a full service with the 34 car, the blue and white machine, which I do believe is a car collection car that's just been painted. We run slightly differently. Uh, Dr. Johannes Kirchhoff getting in, Tomvoga getting out. Uh, quite sadly, to the left-hand side of the car, but in the garage and... Uh, Retired for the day is the deep, deep green 55 car. They, they're continuing to work on it. I just think it might be that they've got a couple of mechanics spares. So they're doing some of the work they'd have to do uh, anyway in the garage. Another one of yesterday's uh, early runners at the front and then later probably hit cars, the number one machine, the, uh, the Phoenix Racing Audi, that's also in as well. Um, but none of these, much like the Haas Audi, are showing at the front. It's a very strange day yesterday to completely topsy-turvy the field in favour of Mercedes and Porsche and away from Audi, who were so fast in qualifying. Yes, Nick, at one stage yesterday, I think five of the top six positions were Audis, and three of those just tumbled down the order. The 34 lost a lot of ground late on with the, the gearbox problem. The, that was the car we've just been talking about at Land Motorsport. The Haas RT car, Stefan Parra, rubbing it up the barriers, quite hard rubbing it up the barriers at Redion, and that put the 21 Haas car back. And the 55 car uh, from Land Motorsport there, very dark green. I thought it was black, actually, yesterday, but very dark green car. Chris Meese had that right at the sharp end of the field, worked his way up the order. Then they had not one, two, but about three different problems. It seemed pretty much every time we looked up, it was in the wars. And we have the leader in the pits, and at the moment serving a penalty, that's Heart of Racing. 
Uh, there's going to be a change of driver. So Roman De Angelis has given them the lead they wanted. Gray Newell is going to pick up the reins. So that means they have rotated through all three drivers within about an hour of the start of the race, which is pretty impressive. Remember, they have a limited amount of time that Roman can be in the car. I think it's three hours in total. So that's his first hour. He's given them a nice cushion over the rest of the field. And a much bigger cushion, of course, over the AM field because their main rival in the AM class was CP Racing, who've been in the war in this first hour of the day. As I said, it's a full service. Roman, who's uh, had great fun setting faster up on faster that stride past me. And the car's going on. Now they have a clean up. The 10 second stop go, which of course would be 10 seconds because it was done in open racing circumstances, was for a minor infringement during the uh, intervention period. Probably they touched something or cleaned something they shouldn't. And the service just coming to a little bit slow actually because they took longer to the tyres than they did to do the driver. Normally the driver is the uh, deciding factor on the speed of these racing uh, pit stops here in Creventic series, but is now. Wandering down the pit lane, I'll see if I can have a quick word with Roman. But just to tell you that also from the front of the field, here comes the Santalock Racing Audi, the uh, third place as scored going across the line of 26 cars. And that's also coming in for a full service as well. So the leading cars are swapping their pilots. Uh, Nick, a uh, question for Roman DeAngelis when he gets a chance. I'm sure he wants to talk about being a kid, leopard all day yesterday. But Jerry Sepantis, who joins us, uh, um, wants to know... All right, so prototypes and GTEs can go flat through Oroos, but can these cars now... You and I were talking to Greg Gorski, who was telling us that there was a slight lift or a little dab of the brakes, if you're a really good driver, just a slight lift before you went through Oroos. I am just want to answer that question for, for, for Jerry uh, from a GT3 perspective. Well, let me ask him. Uh, Roman, first of all, um, you're like a caged tiger, weren't you? Finally got in the car and it was fastest lap after fastest lap. Yeah, it was good. Uh, a couple of days of not driving and qualifying, only got one lap because it started pouring and we were on slick. So uh, waiting here for over 24 hours to get in the car. Um, the, the team obviously did a really good job yesterday putting us in a good position and it was fun to, to get out and drive again. So you sat there cold for two days. I mean, how quickly, is it like one corner and you're on it or do you have to get your brain in gear for a lap or two? Yeah, I definitely missed, uh, missed a few breaking points and stuff in the first lap. But yeah, I mean, we were here all week, so uh, kind of back into the rhythm. You know where to break. You've been sitting looking at the computer screen for a day, so you know, uh, know what's going on with the car. So yeah, it was really good, really fun. And once you were up to speed, were you able to do the, uh, the mythical Eau Rouge flat? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of rain there, so I tried on my, on my first lap and had to bail out a bit. But a uh, little bit of a lift now with the water. Um, it's kind of a light drizzle throughout the whole track, so just being a bit cautious there and trying to save the tire for a uh, for better stint pace over a, a one-lap flyer. So. I think I'm right. You can do a total of three hours. Is that correct during the race? Yeah, so I can do three hours. Um, they're pro projecting rain later on today, so um, basically I had to jump in this morning due to some circumstances, and uh, I think I was in there for 40 minutes or something, so I have some time left later on. Well, have a nice rest. Enjoy your two hours and 20 minutes. Yes, thank you. Well, you still got, uh, we've still got just under five hours, so plenty of time to plug Roman back into that car. We had a, a car spinning a few minutes ago. It was the 58 Gosner Mercedes. That car down the order, I'm pretty sure that car would have got going. Yeah, it looked like Campus. It was down at Campus. Down in the pits, it's the car from second place, I believe. They would have full drive, full services. It's uh, Alan has got Alpha in now. A very uh, athletically shaped young man got in. So I'm guessing that was Lauren Heimrich. It certainly wasn't. Uh, I don't know, Ralph, Ralph's quite tall and skinny, isn't he? Though I can see Ralph, so it's not him. So I think it must be Lauren Heimrich who's got in. Um, so Alfred, who wasn't supposed to drive, has had a, a reasonable uh, run, and it was pretty obvious he was kind of getting the grips of the car as the laps went on. Rick Broich is significantly in from the lead of the 992 class as well in the Red Camel car. We've got the Toyota Supra moving slowly around the lap with a puncture. Looks like left front puncture on the Toyota Supra. Just trying to see exactly 
where he is on the track. He's heading towards the bus stop, Nick. So Tim de Bortle in the X, X, uh, the X Swift Racing Events Toyota. Great to see the Toyota Super in the GT4 class. The 408 car just coming on the pit road now, keeping out of the way of traffic as he negotiates that car very, very slowly back to the pits, trying to save the suspension. And he looks like he did a great job there. The main carcass of the tyre remaining intact. He's on the pit road now, so he's made it back. Yeah, the first time we picked him up going slowly, or the cameras picked him up, was going through campus. So I don't know how early in the lap, but at least half the lap has been at limp speed. And the good news is the MP Racing Mercedes that spun off in the hands of Manuel Agostino got going again and uh, is no longer on the grass on the inside at campus. The Toyota has decided to serve a penalty. So I was going, all here to wait and have a look at, see how well he'd done uh, managing that puncture, but he's now... Uh, Sitting there, serving either 10 or 20 seconds of penalty. So there's a team wait for him. They've got uh, a full uh, set of tyres. Obviously, it's a GT4 car, so it's uh, one of those very long, drawn out processes. There's five nut wheels in each one. He's now out of the penalty and rolling towards us. They're right in the middle of the pit lane at uh, box 22. So half and half. We can see the car is scored at 34 overall in the GT field at the moment. Let's go and have a look over at the uh, it's uh, all looking pretty good, actually. He's got on the front left has been uh, very carefully managed. He hasn't even likely affected the wheel arch in any way at all. So he's done a very good job on that. He's, as long as he's just a, uh, a benign puncture just caused by circumstance, that car's picked up absolutely no damage whatsoever. It was a little bit of cordage just at the back, uh, sitting on the brake dust. Duct. It's, it's, the car, the tyre has failed on the rear, so on the inside rim is the one that's failed, so it's chucked out some, some uh, smaller bandings, it used to be canvas, I'm sure it's now Kevlar, and they are now that tyre. Oh, don't forget, this car had an electrical fire yesterday, and they are, in fact, diving in and having a bit of a look again around those uh, power areas underneath the passenger compartment, because the whole thing literally just caught fire or caught smoke yesterday. They had taken on the uh, the full uh, Lucas free electrical smoke that used to come with every 1970s British Leyland car. But of course, this is a Toyota, so they did it way better with way more smoke. And the car now about to go again once they finally got all of the 20 wheel nuts back on again. Now, one of the cars we were talking about a short while ago was the 58. MP Motorsport Mercedes run by the Gossner family. Yesterday it was all metallic green, today it's got a black bonnet and that's because the bonnet was folded back against the windscreen when uh, David Gossner used another car as a braking point into La Source. He then drove all the way down past the old pits, through Eau Rouge, through Radion with the windscreen folded back against the, the roof of the car and then pulled off in that escape road that's sort of dead ahead of the crews when they get to the hot top of the hill at Le Combe. The car was then pushed back behind the barriers, but it was eventually brought back to the pits. It's going again, but with that spin by Manuela Gosner, luckily nothing was hit, but uh, the car that was my favourite car in the race in terms of its appearance yesterday just doesn't look quite the same with that black bonnet, I'm afraid. It's great to see that car actually out there, the MP Racing entry down... Uh, about 20 laps, sorry, 42 laps on the rest of the field, having lost all of that time yesterday, currently in 45th place. But it, it's all about getting that the challenge of getting the car to the finish. It doesn't really matter what happens. You can repair the car, get it back out there, and the Gosling family will be continuing to drive that car this afternoon and enjoy just the experience of, of racing here at the Spa-Francorchamps circuit. Manuel Gosner at the wheel of the car, had that little spin and continues around in 45th. Just great to see the car back out there. They could have easily have said, right, that's it, let's call it a deal, because there's quite a bit of damage on that car. Yeah, but just hearing the, the father of the, the proud father of the three children, Thomas Gosner, he just loves racing here. There was no way they weren't going to get the car fixed and go out and play, because it's not like you're just taking part in the second race, which is an hour. It's six hours of playing at Spa Francorchamps, and that's sort of why they do it. Right, there is a car in the pit lane from the front end of the field in the top 10, E2P Racing and Antonio Sonero, who really impressed me yesterday, is a pit visitor at the moment. And he came in from sixth Kobe position. Kobe De Brooke. We've got Kobe De Brooke up. 
And uh, Kobe Brooker is uh, one of the drivers. His car is in refueling well, now. Red Ant Racing 903, and he's with Nick. Well, he actually preferred to get a nice cuddle from a, from a, a pit a lady of some sort. So, I'm fairness, I can't deny that as well. So, Kobe De Brooker, the uh, you're in a massive battle with uh, the Red Camels Jordan team. No. Yeah, you're, you guys are alternating. You're just battling with Red, with Red Camel Jordan, aren't you? Yeah, but not on track. On track, it was really, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think um, it will be still a hard race. Not, um, it's not like we can just sit down and relax. We, we have to make good strategic calls and um, yeah, push as hard as we can. Keep the car yeah, as a whole and uh, don't crash. I think that's the most important. Just stay consistent. This 992 class is incredibly competitive, isn't it? You can't afford to make one single mistake. No, no, no. For example, missing a code 60 has a massive impact. You, you lose so much time, especially on Spa. Um, and there are so many good drivers, so many good teams with good lineups that we, we have to take every bit that we can to, to, to stay in front or to even stay in the running. Now, do you think as a team you have a better chance if it stays dry or, or if we get rain again? Um, that's difficult. Uh, my teammates are both very good in the rain. Um, my stint yesterday was not that good, but we were on all tires in the rain. Um, but I think it's it's both. It can go both ways. Uh, in the rain, is yeah more risk. For example, you can just lose a car somewhere. For example, but yeah, we don't know. It's 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 not like we yeah. I don't know. Well, best of luck. Thanks for talking to us. That's Kobe De Brucker out of the 903 Red and Racing Porsche. That's a battle that's going to continue right to the flag, isn't it? Uh, those cars now of the Red Ant car and the Red Camel car, they've now pitted. That's given the lead of 992 back to the HRT Performance 930 numbered car. Adam Christodoulou stays at the wheel of that car and he's got to be due a pit stop himself for fuel. We are an hour and 15 minutes almost into this uh, race this morning so it's going to be not long before we see again the 992 lead handed back to the two red species teams red ant and red camel just there to trip us up joe it's just there to catch us out we get the red we forget the creature but uh, one thing worth pointing out is who's leading the race is it the heart of racing mercedes surely they were pulling clear no it isn't it's the jp motorsport mclaren while they have all come in for pit stops recently, uh, Patrick Krupinski is pressing on. Norbert Seedler started the race, but so many drivers with that initial scramble after the incident at the end of lap one with the Jutta racing Audi taking to the barriers coming onto the start-finish straight went down into the hands. And Christian Clean uh, is presumably waiting to come and take that over. So any moment now from the lead will be the JP Motorsport McLaren. And now suddenly... You talked about athletic young men, Nick. Lauren Heinrich is the driver who took over the 91 uh, Herbert Motorsport Porsche. He's just lapped 2 minutes 21. And by my standards and Joe's standards, that's impressive. Nick? Yeah, just wandering back from chatting to uh, Kobe de Bruca and uh, stuck my head as you do. And just, I think this is new. The Atlas BX, the silver reflective mirror wrapped uh, GT4 Mercedes AMG, that's in the pits. And uh, there's quite a bit of work going on under the front of the car it's look, looking drive shafty or possibly suspension pick up underneath it. it could actually it could actually be right in the middle hang on i'm going to do this thing which is very dangerous at my age which is get down the floor I may not get up again for the rest of my session um oh yeah they've got the um the under tray uh, off and they're having a look at something else nothing's leaking out so that's an interesting point so whatever's wrong is not fluid based but they are working away. This is the Korean team. Uh, had quite a good Mugello. And there's uh, four of them. I'm going to find out. Since about him, tell me. Oh, he's, he's, oh, I'm just going to ask him. He fell over. I'm just going to ask him. He's, he's, um, what's the problem? Uh, please talk to the team. OK, I'll talk to the team. I think, I think that was an AMG man. Now, the problem is, of the team, it's kind of not sure. Which of them, oh, I'll try this guy. This guy's got a clip. Whoops, I fell over a trail there. Uh, this guy's got a clipboard, he might know. Um, what is the problem with the car? Uh, I don't uh, the, I, I, uh, just one of the video team. So the technical problem is uh, to ask, ask her. I hope someone knows what's wrong with the car. 
Uh, at the moment, it's like, let's ask 112 people. Excuse me, do you, do you know what's... No, he doesn't... Well, OK. Well, basically, it's the mystery problem. No one will tell us what it is. It's not really that important. They weren't doing that well, so... It looks anyway. Pretty, it looks pretty extensive, Nick. They're yeah. all... The car is on the hijacks. They're all underneath the car trying to remove... What something looks like underneath. they're trying yeah, to move the under tray. They've taken out the under tray. Yeah, to get at something. And that's... But there's nothing leaking. That's always the giveaway. There's I... nothing for you, either you nor I to taste to find out what's going on. That could be gearbox. Do you that... think so? Just, well, just from the where... Gearbox, is the gearbox at the back end of these cars? Well, well, good point, actually. Is it on the GT4? I think uh, so. Just to tell you where that car is, fourth in GT4, down in 37th overall. They've just Sorry, no, they've just gone down a place in that class. And it's the car that has literally just left the pits after that puncture. The 408, uh, the X Racing Events Toyota Supra, um, that car has now just taken that position from them. So the Atlas BX Motorsport Mercedes will stay in fifth place in GT4. They've got a chunk of time before they lose that position to the Senkia Motorsport BMW M4 who is down in 43rd, that's car 4 I found out what it is. So the GT4 battle is all about being in the pits. Inspector Clouseau? Yeah, well, I found a man who, uh, A, spoke English, and B, wasn't working for video, wasn't working for AMG, was working for the term. What is it on racing cars that's hard to get at, doesn't leak, but seems to fail way more than it should? Budget? <laughs> Mechanically or electrically? Ah! It's the alternator, which is stuck right down obviously underneath the bottom of the car. I've got no idea why. What is a relatively simple device? There's so many alternator failures. I'm sure you could build a more robust one. Perhaps they're trying to build them too light. But I think if we came up, Joe, it's a business plan. We're working out tonight over the pub. Uh, robust motor racing alternators incorporated. I've got an alternator story. Go on. So when. When we ran a Honda Integra in British Touring Cars, the alternator was about 3,000 quid's worth, and it had a certain um, boutique manufacturer name on it. So it was sat on my desk for a long time, as it wouldn't work, and it, we kept having a flat battery because it didn't work very properly. And I kept telling Alan Taylor that he needed to put his hand in his pocket and buy a new alternator. And then all of a sudden, um, an automotive parts supplier for things like, you know, Transit Vans turned up to the office to sell us parts, and he said, oh, that's off a of Subaru, that. And I went, no, mate, it's off, a, it's off our Integra racing car. He went, nah, that's off a of Subaru. Go to this place, which was five miles away. He says, he'll sort that out for you. So I put it on, I went five miles away, put it on his desk, and he went, uh, what? I says, mate, this is off a, a Honda Integra touring car. He went, nah, not that one, mate. He says, um, uh, 150 quid, I can repair that. <laughs> ka -ching. Yeah, so it's not all about what's on the label, Bruce. Right. It's about what's on the track sometimes as well, because uh, Lauren Heinrich, just not so long ago, he took over the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche. It's now running in third place. It was second, but once Patrick Kropinski pits the JP Motorsport McLaren, the Herbeth car will go back into second, but he has just done a 2 minute 20.6 second lap fastest lap of anybody in this race so far he's followed it up with a 2 minutes 21.1 so he is absolutely flying he's eating into the advantage of Grey Newell the heart of racing Mercedes is now only get this 20 seconds up the track ahead of him and he's lapping 5 to 6 seconds a lap faster the young Porsche junior no wonder he's the young Porsche junior Lauren Heinrich super impressive making that black 91 Herbert Porsche fly right now. He's just stuck behind the 34 Land, out, uh, Land Audi at the moment, but that's way down the order. Just having a quick check how far that's for. It's in 15th place. Max Adelhoff, he's going well, but the pace of that brand new uh, Porsche in the hands of Laurent Heinrich, very impressive and almost not to be outdone or only by margin. Anton Docrin has taken over. He's the third driver today into the 26 Santa Lot Racing Audi. It was started by Owen Bastard for one lap, then it went to Paul Evrard, but Anton Ducroix, I built, I gave him a good bidding. Two minutes 23, that's a good it, sort of lap. He's done two of those in a row. So they're pulling away from everyone else behind. Who is behind? But the car next in line is the best of the Porsche 992s, but they are really flying those two. But they're catching the two cars that are leading exactly. this race, aren't they? Yeah, the McLaren leads. You get to see that in this series. It's great to have that McLaren 720S. Just making its way through 
bat markers, but uh, bat markers that are very, very competitive and high up in their class order. The multicolored Porsche of Philly Porter's second in the 992 class, just ahead of the Red Camel Jordan's car of Luke Breukers, and now Yannick Redont at the wheel of the Red Ant Racing. So the leader of 992, Adam Christodoulou, fifth overall, two GT3 cars in between himself and the next cars in 992. Those two GT3 cars are Francis Tia in the Modern Motorsports Porsche car, 16 in sixth. Chantal Prince now at the wheel of the Hofer Racing Mercedes car 11. Didn't have a very great uh, qualifying session, but that car spent the whole of the first six hour segment of the 12 hours of Spa basically just climbing through the order and kind of stealth-like making the way up, up the field and into what will be not just a class podium contention but a possibly even overall podium contention so the number 11 Hofer car continues to do that and then right behind them is that uh, that second third fourth and indeed let's just add in the fifth place car there uh, of the 992 Class battle. Sergio Nikolai still at the wheel of the Rally Motorsports by EB Motors Porsche in second, and then uh, right on the tail of that car, Luke Breukers challenging 1.3 seconds to be exact, and then a further 18 seconds back is Yannick Redont now at the wheel of the Red Ant car, 10th overall, fourth in class, and then Sandy Younger in the 904 numbered Red Ant car, the sister car circulating uh, not quite together, a bit of a gap between the fifth place 992 car and the fourth place 992 car, their 10th and 11th overall. So still plenty of time to go in this race, Bruce. Four and a half hours coming up to very quickly. We'll be clicking by that point in the race. Four and a half hours remaining. Yeah, so Lauren Heinrich, to, to recap, absolutely getting onto the tail of Gray Newell. Surely Patrick Grapinski has to bring that JP Motorsport uh, McLaren in from the lead of the race in that Porsche Cup. Oh, Adam Christodoulou now comes in the leading car from uh, the 992 class from fifth overall. He will come into the pits and Patrick Grapinski does pit in the McLaren out of the lead. Uh, here he comes. About to hit his mark. It's going to be a full uh, stop. I think it's Christodoulou getting in. So they're going to have a bit of a F1 glamour in this very glamorous gold and black McLaren. Tires on quickly. I kind of think they made a mistake in that first code 60, which has really put them out of contention once they stagger and wind this fuel stop. I think it was basically down to lack of understanding of how this series works because they shouldn't have served their penalty. They were seven foot or six on the road and they should have just gone and got the fuel and then if it was long enough you serve your penalty because it was obvious to all of us that that was going to be a absolute fuel traffic jam and by taking yourself out of the role of the queue you uh, mean you're going to be waiting um so you know excusable it's their first race but you need to learn that it's all about getting the fuel and it's a bonus if you can serve the penalty Exactly. So two things have happened just in the short moments you were talking. We had Lauren Heinrich overtaking Gray Newell for the effective lead of the race. And then Hofer Racing facing backwards, My car fault. number 11, your fault. Who had you just been bigging up? I I'll take full responsibility of that number 11, Hofer Mercedes, having a bit of a spin. Couldn't quite tell where that was on the track. I think that was out of... Uh, Might have been Jack campus. It, or maybe it's out of the second Fania. I think I think we've gone they've gone through double ghost. There was debris on the track at turns four and five. Now we've got code sixty. In fact, a marshal did some very, very quick uh, removal of debris and jumped back over the wall. But uh, in fact, it's up at the approach to Le Com, the uh, debris is on the track, brilliantly caught that, by the camera crews. That debris was from the uh, HRT perform uh, performance Porsche of uh, Milka Panu, uh, the car currently tenth in nine nine two as we was going down the camel. Uh, the camel, the camel straight. We had, I think it might have been a tyre blowout or something, or maybe just bodywork departed from the car. But that was just a, a splinter, a, a, like a bomb going off on that car. And of course, a flurry into the pits when it gets to code 60, Nick. Yeah, but of course they're spaced out this time because they weren't all in a queue as they were on lap. Well, that two of running. CP uh, are racing with the Mercedes have come in again. So it'll be interesting to see how they're going to manage that fuel overflow. They've uh, just done some tyre changes. Uh, one of the GT 
ex-Lambos is in, serving quite a long penalty because he's been there for more than 20 seconds. That's Adrian uh, Lewandowski in the 763 GT3 Poland entry. Yeah. Now, I'm not quite sure, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to you two guys because I think there's been a rule change this year which might actually have stymied JP Motorsport even more. But it used to be that if you came in for your pit stop, under green and then it went purple it was happy days and you'd get a full tank of fuel but i think didn't they change that so if it goes purple at any point before you put the fuel gun in you don't get that you're going to have the half tank again yeah it used to be when you cross the line into the pits mm. and if you got in while it was green however it's i think the point is when you put the fuel nozzle in, yeah. and I think it and might I, even be while, while you've got the fuel nozzle in. Yeah, so I think that's cut, cut uh, poor old JP out because basically they have done a large percentage of that pit stop under green, and then they get the disadvantage of the fuel under purple. Yes, that's exactly what happens, Nick. That's exactly what happens. Um, so a little bit uh, unfortunate timing there. Um, I'm pretty sure the uh, yeah the code 60 was uh, to clear up that debris on the Kemmel Strait. We've gone green pretty much immediately, so a very short code 60 that time by. So Christian Klein getting out on track as well. Um, be interesting to see. I think we've had a change of leader. That's the, the number 91 has now got into the lead of this race. Head of Motorsport just coming uh, across the line to. Uh, show up on the timing screens for the first time in the lead. Lauren Heinrich at the wheel of the 91. Gray Newell confirms himself in the heart of racing by SPS Mercedes. Uh, 9.6 seconds behind now. But he's only two seconds ahead of Anton Duquan. Anton's lapping appreciably faster, five or about five, sometimes six seconds of lap faster. So I think Heart of Racing Team uh, by SPS will be on borrowed time in second place, still easily leading the GT3 AM class. But at the moment, three cars on the lead lap. Remember, we started the second half of this 12-hour race with five car cars on the lead lap. And uh, having lost three of the fastest outies yesterday, had those few setbacks and really I suppose the biggest setback from a front runner has been CP Racing having that extra pit stop and to have that uh, fueling uh, nozzle sorted out and that's dropped them down the order from starting the day sixth CP Racing in the refueling at the moment probably losing another position or so down in 14. Well they're going to have to remove all that tank tape every time uh, uh, every time and then refuel and then replace the tank tape and the more times you use tank tape the less a diesel it becomes and it starts yeah, and, and remember, it's going to be doing 160, 170 miles an hour on the end of the, by the end of the Kemmel Strait, so it's got to hang on pretty, pretty grimly. When I when I wrap Christmas rooms, they come un, come unattached <laughs> at one mile an hour, taking them to the bottom <laughs> of the Christmas tree. Yeah, there is that. There is that. Uh, we've got uh, the 992 class now. We've got Luke Breukers taking over from his brother Rick. The 909 car now in second, uh, still showing in the lead of 992 is the 930. I'm sure that might change next time by because that car is just on its outlap. So next time by Eric Zhang now at the wheel of the HRT performance car. That Eric taking over from Adam Christodoulou. Sergio Nikolai in the Villy Motorsports by EB Motors. He's showing in third place. But we'll just wait to see. And Chantal Prince bringing the Hofer car into the pits after that spin. I'm going to say it was relatively harmless. She went through 180 degrees. Not not very nice experience pointing the wrong direction and watching the cars coming towards you. Um, I'm not going to... I think you think it was at the exit of Fan, yeah? Yes. Uh, coming out of the left-hander. Oh, and there's a spin in the background for the 21 Haas RT. Coming on to start finish straight. Um, that's not going to affect any, any race position as that car is way, way out of contention now. The Haas RT current championship leaders and winner at Mugello having a bit of a nightmare here in Spa. That didn't cause any problems coming out of the bus stop. That, that could have been really naughty. Well, it certainly could uh, because there were a whole gaggle of cars around it, but luckily it broke to driver's left and didn't go as far across and hit the ball as we saw right at the start of the race with the 72 due to racing. Audi stayed short of the ball, got going again, uh, but his was a long way down and is a little bit further in arrears. Right, first to second, Lauren Heinrich, the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche, to second, the 26 Santa Lot Racing Junior Team Audi with Anton Duquin at the wheel, 13 seconds, and with each lap, Lauren Heinrich gets that little bit further ahead and uh, 
Yes, most interesting as the Haas RT Audi went around. Those behind, the two cars immediately behind it, had to curve out around it, go wide over the curbing onto the start finish straight, but no contact, so that was one that was avoided. Car spinning, Bruce. The rain has held off, but we've had a, a bit of a, a flurry of cars spinning and half spinning. I'm, I'm just wondering there, we... I mean, it was quite a while ago now, or a little while ago, that we heard Roman De Angelis say that it was kind of drizzly out there on the track. So I'm not sure if we are seeing maybe an increase in the level of drizzleness uh, at certain points, which are caused, or whether it's driver error that's that's causing these cars to to have these little flurries of, of, of spinach, as uh, as Nick would describe it. Spinach for lunch. Right. Uh, just to confirm that it was Christian Klein who took over the JP Motorsports. McLaren and that has just oh well he's hopped into the car and he's done a two minute 22.999 second let's call it two minute 23 second lap there in fifth place overall but the Austrian flying he's had a couple of seasons now in that 720s he's making good progress and that's a personal best for that car exactly so that's as quick as that car has, has gone so far so Christian Klein you you would imagine so podium uh, step of the podium for him at Le Mans works Peugeot driver former Formula spent five seasons in Formula One in, as part of the Jaguar team. Uh, so Christian Klein enjoying his motor race. He said yesterday, a bit of a, uh, a the level of intensity is is perhaps a, less, a lot less so in this style of pro-am racing, and hence he's able to enjoy it a lot more. Renewal drops to third as Antoine. Duquesne gets ahead and chases down the leader. I'm not sure whether Duquesne is going to actually be able to do anything about that lead of uh, Lauren Heinrich as the Heinrich car, the Herbert car, the car 91, continues to lap consistently quicker than the cars behind it. So we are going to see that lead stretch. It's just under 15, might as well call that 15 seconds. Yeah, Heinrich is absolutely excellent. He's definitely one of the rising stars in Europe yeah. at the moment. Porsche have got him, got him under their wing, but uh, he, yeah, it's it's one and three quarter seconds per lap, and we can do the maths on that. He's pulling away. Is the simple English. Who else is gaining on who? Well, Francis Gia in the modern motorsports. Porsche running in fourth place, car number 16. That's run by Earl Bamber's team, EBM, and uh, he's going well, but he's not going as well as the driver chasing him, which is Christian Klein, who's going to be taking six, seven seconds a lap out of him, and he's between six and seven seconds down, so therefore in the next lap he should be on the tail of Francis and will have a change to fourth place. But at the moment, uh, Botner Motorsports, car number 16, leading Pro-Am element of GT3 in fourth overall, but uh, the McLaren is a hunter, it's coming fast. Uh, we've just had the number 930 issued with a 10-second penalty. Sixth offence for track limits. And Eric Zang continues to push and hence just exceed the track limits. The, the thing about Spa, Bruce, is we've got a... Yes, we've got quite a few gravel traps, but we've also got quite a few expanses of tarmac, which kind of just sort of urge you to use it. And the reason why we see the drivers do that is because it's all about momentum in, in motorsport. It's momentum, it's ca and committing. Once you've got that throttle in at the apex of the corner, you've just got to let that car go where it wants to go. And if, it, if the momentum, if you've carried a little bit too much speed in, you are going to go across the kerb, ideally leaving the, the, the wheels, some wheels, one, one side of your wheels, on the track over the white line. But invariably, that sometimes doesn't happen and you can end up going right across the whole curve. I think it was about three years ago in qualifying for the Spa 24 Hours. Some drivers, I mean, they were only nodding acquaintances of where the circuit really ran. And in fact, absolute fireworks looking at Raffaele Marcello charging along for Mercedes. And um, for, I'm a big fan of gravel traps being close to the circuit. We've had a, a tete a cur, as oh, we call it. That, that was more significant Up than, at that source. than it perhaps looks on the surface. Sergio Serge Nicolai got ahead of Eric Zang as they crossed the line there to take second place in the 992 class. Just crossing the line there side by side and Sergio getting ahead. He then goes to the inside at the La Source hairpin. Eric Zang in the 930 has to slot in behind. And I'm not sure whether there was contact between the 930 and the 955. Yes, there was. 
So the 995 is tipped round into a spin and out of that second place in 992. So that class battle getting a little bit too close and those two cars coming together, battling and literally fist fighting over that second place in that 992 class battle. We'll see just how the stewards take a view on that one because Sergio Nikolai will be not very happy, I would think, in the, uh, at the behind the wheel of the 955, now back down to third place. Yeah, the move had been completed before they moved into into position there, but up the inside by Eric Zhang, you know, a novice first race here at spa Francorchamps, and it's always tempting to dive up the inside into uh, La Source. Now, pit stop time, and uh, Francis Gia has brought in the modern motorsports Porsche from was fourth place, had just fallen back to fifth. Christian Clean had just gone past as uh, Francis came into the pit lane. So let's just refresh the top of the charts. It's Lauren Heinrich leading in the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche by 16 seconds from Anton Duquin. They're both starting to pull away from the rest of the field because Gray Newell can't hang on in third place. So the heart of racing Mercedes car number 27 is now 24 seconds away from the race lead. Bear in mind, it led the early laps, pulled clear very beautifully in the hands and consistently in the hands of Roman De Angelis, but uh, still Gray Newell is pressing on in third overall, leading the AM sector of GT3. So again, Joe, many little battles within the overall war, and that will be one they'll be proud of. But eight, Haas RT, yesterday's race leaders, they were in the wars yesterday. They've had a little spin now and uh, dies down the pits, and she's caught the team boss, Sandrine Haas. Yes, I'm with Sandrine Haas from the number 21 Haas racing team. Sandrine, it'd be fair to say it's been a very challenging race for you this weekend. Um, cast your mind back and tell us when those challenges started. Uh, well, challenges started on Wednesday. Uh, we had a problem with the engine, so we decided to change it, to check the gearbox, to check everything. So on Thursday, the guys worked all day, actually, until half past two in the morning to make sure everything was ready for Friday for the qualifying. Qualifying was fine and yesterday, well, the rain, the weather, and a, a mistake and that was it, so. It's, it's, it's difficult then when all of that unfolds and it goes against you, but how's the morale in the team and how do you keep the team motivated? Well, because we want to finish the race. Um, so we said, okay, today, we don't think we'll be in the, on, well, we're not going to be on the podium. But we said, okay, it's just like driving time, making sure, practicing. Uh, we take it as a practice. If we can do something, we'll be over the moon. And that's racing, basically. And as a team, what is the biggest thing that you're, you're learning going into the next race, really? Well, for, for the boys, it's, uh, well, some parts broke on the car that we, don't usually change and it's the learning to go faster be you know getting trying to get to the professional level because hopefully we on that way but we still have a long way to go though well everyone's still working very hard uh, there at the team and um, obviously motivation is still high but sorry you've had such disappointment sandrine but no doubt we'll be seeing you very again soon we'll be catching you again soon yeah thank you very much Thanks, Drew. Good to hear from Sandrine, putting on a brave face after a very difficult ye day yesterday. But, Joe, at this point, when they're a new team, it's about just getting all the track time you can, because actually you learn quite a lot from having incidents. Uh, as well as that, of course, the, the customer, customer drivers. Customer drivers who, you know, are, are coming along and, and paying their money and, and to drive the car and race the car. So you're giving them track time. We all know that motorsport can throw anything at you. And, uh, and that's basically that. I think SRT, this one, all right, the wooden Magello. They were on the podium at Abu Dhabi before that. Sandri uh, Haas has been around motorsport. She was a Formula One photographer. She, don't, she understands this sport and she understands that motor racing isn't all about glory every weekend. To learn how to win, you've got to first learn how to lose. Entirely so, and the crew have to learn how to fix assorted errors and mistakes and uh, problems on the car. A car that does appear to be having a problem, limping in slowly. The number 720 Lamborghini from uh, CLI Racing is probably three-quarters of the way around the lap, but uh, 
That was sitting uh, quite pretty. He's coming into the pits just now, second in GTX. A lap down on Nathan Van Springle, who's leading in the VTS racing Mark car, number 758. But I don't know what the problem is, whether it's a puncture. Maybe a left rear like puncture. puncture. Yeah, looks like a puncture. We've seen punctures absolutely are dog, just dog Lamborghinis, it seems. It was a left-hand puncture as well. I'm not going to sort of uh, preempt what it's is. It's a left. Yeah, it is, it is a left-hand puncture on that car just beneath us actually Bruce we've got a great view of that car from our commentary box we are seeing a driver change as well we won't see the fueling and he's done a great job actually getting that car back with that left hand wheel the tyre carcass has come off the wheel and we've already got the new wheel and tyre on there so they're happy with what they see underneath that wheel arch because what can happen is that carcass can just start to disintegrate and then caught flat around as you bring the car back. And it doesn't matter how fast you're bringing the car back, it's too fast. And you must feel like you are absolutely crawling back. Well, the good news is the 720 has peeled off its pit box and will head down towards refueling out of our sight, just going out and around the right hand inside hairpin at the source and down the the uh, back down to the heritage pits which is where the fueling area is so a good job a frustrating job it must be all the same for paulius pascovicius he's out of the 720 uh, Sulai racing lamborghini we'll tell you who's in next when it gets down back through the beam onto the circuit after the refueling right lauren heinrich margin is getting larger all the time he's just put in another lap in the one, two minute 21s and he's gained another two seconds in that 91 herbert's most sport porsche ahead of anton duquine the bright green santa Luc racing audi both pulling clear of the best of the rest but in the Porsche Cup it's still very very fierce and uh, certainly at the moment top of that chart is Luke Broikers by three and a bit seconds but Yannick Redout for Redout Racing 903 getting closer and closer he's had a bit of a problem there trying to get around Stefano Monaco also in the 992 class however Stefano was down in sixth so he was a lapped car and it was uh, Yannick wasn't it Yannick Redont in the 903 there he's managed to clear him and he's 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 cleared off as the moment he's got by him it was struggling to get through at the source however in amongst those 992 class runners we've got the third place mercedes of gray newell who is uh, going to try and squeeze by them we've got the number one the sven herberger and shira sport phoenix car back into the european Creventic series the 24 inch series great to see that team back now under the guise of the Shearer Sport team but it's fundamentally the same team that carries the number one that won the championship last year TCE just an update on TCE still being led by the home guard motorsport Cupra uh, Martin Vettel Mortensen is out of the car now as that car's coming to the pit and we've got Diana Biggs who's down with the team now Martin, you've just um, come into the pits, got out of the car after you stint. How was this morning's run? It was really good. I uh, had a great pace, uh, started in first position and was able to keep that position throughout my stint. So um, all in all, the car is good and the pace is good. A very different day today after yesterday and those so many changeable conditions out on track. How has the track changed? Well, today it's uh, dry conditions. We had a bit of rain coming throughout the track in the first half an hour. Not enough to uh, make any difference to the lap time. So today, dry conditions, it's much easier to drive in than yesterday. So I'm happy. <laughs> I was going to say, do you prefer the wet or dry, or did you like both? Well, my pace is fine in the wet. I was fastest in the free practice in, on Friday, so that's OK. But in the dry, everybody is driving more safely. Or it's just it's just more safe out there, so I prefer the drive. And of course, there's quite a few hours to go yet in the race. What's the management of traffic like? Well, it's about the GT threes. They are very fast. Um, so look in the mirrors, be careful, uh, especially going up through a roof. It's, uh, it's really about managing the faster cars for us. Um, but yeah, it's going great. They're good at using their flashlights, so we see them. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you.
always good to catch up with the battles uh, further down the field. But Martin doesn't appear to put a wheel wrong in that car so yeah. far. It, it, it's a race to lose, isn't it, for them? And, you know, it, we're here at Spa. The weather hasn't played a part yet today, but uh, it is due. And it's due. The, the, the forecast said it was due at 1 o'clock. Well, we're at 12.15 local time. And, you know, we, we are never far away from any kind of rain. So, yeah, the home guard car, though, I've, I've got to say, it, I hope I'm not going to hex it here. Please, God, don't let me hex it. But it has, it has run like clockwork. It's just gone round and round. Two, yeah, going into the, um, to the finish of the first phase, it had almost two laps on the rest of the TCE field. And the one or two car continues to circulate. It's got... Jonas Holmgaard has just taken over. It's, I think I think it's got... Yeah, it's still... Uh, yeah, it's still... Sorry. Yeah, it has gone back up to two laps gap between it and the next car in TCE, which is the Audi RS3 of Wolf Power Racing, Ivers Vallas, now the wheel of the 121, chasing that car down. Yep, and another lap and a half back to the car in, in third place in the TCR class. That's Jorge Belloc Diaz, the rail equipped by Tot Car Cupra. So the order is Cupra, Audi, Cupra in the TCR class. And it's the, it's the blue Audi in that second place. Great looking car, the, the Wolf Power, lovely livery on that car number. One, two, one. That's pressing on. Yeah, that's the Yasmin Pricing also sharing the car with uh, Ibis Vallas. And uh, the other driver that we usually see in that car is not here. So just two drivers down to share the 121. So pretty busy for them. Not as grueling as a 12 hour straight through two six hour segment splitting the race in half. Just adds another element, doesn't it, to how we go about tactically, how we go about driving. As the Todd Car Sport car continues round, got a father and son team in the rail keep by Todd Car Sport, Jorge Bellic Diaz and Jorge Bellic Ruiz. It's the, uh, the uh, Bellic Diaz in the driver's seat at the moment. They're sharing that car with Alvaro Rodriguez Sastre and Jorge Bollock Ruiz, I've mentioned, um, the 2022 European Young Driver Champion. Um, he's a very, very quick driver, as is his father, who currently continues round. The 123 numbered car there has been pretty much in contention for a podium all race. It swapped positions with the Audi RS3 of Wolf Power. At the moment, it's third. Just trying to find out the gap there, just waiting for the cars to come through and complete their laps, which is going to be some time at the moment. It looks like that car is two laps off the leader in TCE. What happened yesterday? If I say car 16, modern and motorsport Porsche, who made it fly of the drivers? Um, he was a Dane. He was flying very well at the end of the race. Benny Seamerson, he's yes. got back on board today. He's in seventh place overall. He's Sorry, ninth place overall. He's behind the four cars from fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth place, which are in the 992 Cup class. But he's just done a two-minute 21, which is where we bring the bell and go, good lap. Two minutes 21 for him. He's got to find 40 seconds or so to catch Eric Zhang, who's fourth, the next car up the track, fourth in the 992 Cup class. But that is a tip-top... Uh, lap. So the rest of the crew for Modern and Motorsport will be delighted the Dane is on the fly. Francis Chia started that car. They've still got John Shen and Matthias Besch to come out to play. But Benny Seaman is, is doing what he can absolutely do. But who's going fastest of all at the moment? In the end of the first sector, we talked about the speed of the McLaren yeah. up from Radion to uh, towards Le Con, but Christian Clean has just put in the fastest first sector of anyone in that super sleek 720S. He's fourth, he's got to find a bit to catch up with Gray Newell yet, but he's putting in some very quick laps, as expected, as predicted by our man Nicholas Damon. We mentioned the McLaren 720 prefers the dry weather conditions, and hence we've seen the fastest sector one time of the race so far. Christian Clean, you're kind of optimising the McLaren at the moment, the JB Motorsport Car 69. Fourth overall, we'll keep an eye on that lap time as it produces uh, before our very eyes. He's in sector two at the moment, and he is a little bit behind the front three cars ahead of him. But that was because of the way that the pit stops were working. We've got a personal best sector one lap time for the Santelok Junior team, the number 26 Audi. So if anything, if anything, Bruce. We're seeing the track being as quick as it's been all weekend. 
Yes, and anybody who was joining us yesterday, there were very few laps where everything was equal for very long at all. One of the Porsches going around at the moment, oh, it's the Ebby Motors car. Yeah, front bodywork hang hanging loose, front right-hand corner, seventh overall in the race. Sergei Nikolai at the wheel. He's got a challenge from Eric Zhang in behind. And you know why that bodywork is like that? Because, of course, those two cars came together with Eric diving up the inside. And that has loosened that bodywork. Up in the front of the race, though, putting in consistently excellent laps. Lauren Heinrich lead by, well, among friends, let's call it 30 seconds. It's 29 and a half seconds over Anton Ducat. And with each lap, that margin goes out. So first and second, Porsche ahead of Audi, 91, that is, Herbert Motorsport, ahead of 26, Santa Lock Junior Team Audi, 20, 30 seconds. And then from there back, another half minute or so to Gray Newell uh, in the number 27, Heart of Racing, Mercedes, and then catching him. Some laps good, some laps slightly less. Uh, it's Christian Kuhn. He's taking about four seconds a lap off, but there's quite a margin between them. In fact, there's nearly 50 seconds between them. So even in this stint, Christian Kuhn may not catch uh, the heart of racing Mercedes for third place overall. I'm not really sure whether or not the Willie Motorsport by EB Motors Porsche, Sergio Mick Mc Light. 955 number car currently seventh bodywork uh, appears to be coming detached from that right hand front corner but i'm not sure whether that's going to incur the attention of any of the race officials the officials sometimes get concerned become concerned because of the piece of bodywork will, will eventually detach itself and they don't want to see that uh, cause anybody any problems. They'll be looking at that. They're, they're, the officials, the scrutineers, they're, they're aware of how these cars are built and put together. So they'll be certain of how that piece of bodywork is attached. And it looks like it's had a bit of a cracked bumper and it's the kind of the, the, the flat surface of the right hand corner is just sort of folded back in the airstream. I'm not really sure whether that it would cause anybody a problem. It's just a piece of uh, plastic or even carbon fibre. Uh, sure myself. Looking down the order, let's go to what's happening in the in the 992 Cup class. It's still 909 leading it. That's Red Camel Jordans leading by not very much because Yannick Redon is within half, just uh, two thirds of a second at the start of this lap behind Luke Broikers. 909 from 903. Therefore, Red Camel Jordan from Red Ant Racing, and then there's another nearly 20 seconds back to. The 955 car we've just been mentioning, third in the class, the Willie Motorsport entry by AB Motors, and Eric Zhang is tucked under his rear wing, just another second and a half back. But uh, first and second, it's a fabulous scrap, and it's still chopping and changing. But now Yannick Redon has moved ahead, so he's taken the lead in the Porsche Cup class. He's moved up to fifth place at the expense of Luke Broikers, but Luke isn't giving up. The young Dutch racer tucking in behind as they go down the slope uh, from Bruxelles to Jackie X Curb, and right behind them, they've got Gray Newell in the Mercedes, the heart of racing Mercedes, third overall. He doesn't want to be delayed, but at the moment, this is the battle for the class lead. But actually, having taken that advantage, the Red Ant car is pulling clear. So Yannick Redon stretching his legs, moving up into fifth place overall. But Gray Newell will say, come on, you're going through Fania. Let me through up the inside. And he has. He's gone through. He's gone through at Campus Corner. One more corner to go. And then I know they're in Campus Corner now. It was uh, into the Fania S when he got by the Red Camels car. Now, Green Newell threw Stabel up, and it's the run up to Blanchemont here. And this is where the 992 Cup cars are very, very quick. They're very, very quick on the long stretches here. So maybe Green Newell can line up that car for an overtake and a, and a lap. By the, time to, by the time they get to the bus stop, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled out of the window to see whether or not it is Gray Newell who comes out and ahead of that uh, Yannick Redon red on car. They are due past us any moment now. And the lead... The leader of the 992 class will change on the timing screens this time by. And would you believe the heart of racing Mercedes stays behind the red on car into La Source and on down the hill so, Gray Newell, um, stifled slightly, his lap time there, 2.28, um, and compare that to a 2.22.9 by Christian Klein in the McLaren, that's a green time on the timing screen, so that's the fastest time in this race by that McLaren. 
Uh, very well done. Now, Land Motorsport, one of the drivers going very well at the moment is Max Adelhoff. It's still a recovery drive for car 34. He's only in 13th overall. But let's find out what's happening at Land with Dai. Christian Land, Christian Land from Land Motorsport joins me now. Christian, I wanted a bit of an overview from you, really. Um, you're in charge this weekend. Um, give us a view of how you feel things are going so far. Yeah, at the moment for, for us, yesterday was not the, the, yeah, the best day for us, I would say. We had, uh, with, with all the two cars, we had, yeah, I would say, bad luck with all the Code 60. Then we had with the 55 car, we had, uh, we had a crash that was very unlucky. Get the car in, we had some technical issues with that car. Then we checked it during the night and then we decided with the drivers yeah, to retire the car from the race during a safety reason and we lost so many laps makes no sense end of yesterday with the 34 car uh, we had a small issue with uh, with the gearbox and, uh, there was a gearbox oil leak then we refilled the gearbox now the car is yeah, running running very well and yeah, we are some laps behind the leader at the moment we are p4 in the m series but yeah i think we have four hours of running in the race uh, i think we have a chance to jump on the podium with that car yeah i am um, yeah with that car looks all good so far for today What's the, what's the feedback from the drivers today with regards to how they're feeling with the car and the conditions out there? Yeah, at the moment the conditions are quite quite good. In the forecast, it looks a bit different with all the rain. What's uh, what was in the forecast for today? Today, yeah, track is in good conditions. So far, we had only one code 60. Drivers are happy. Max is going now for uh, quickest race lap uh, for our car at the moment. Uh, car is in a good shape, and he feels very happy in the car. From your perspective, I know you've got one car out, one car still running. Are you satisfied with your progress so far? No. As a yeah, team principal, yeah, with one car out of the race and one car in the race, yeah, you are happy for 50%. But yeah, our our target is when we come to a racetrack to fight uh, yeah, with both cars for a, for a win or for a, at least for a podium. So have the other crew now gone to take some time out? No, yeah, we, we get the crew together for one car. The guys are yeah, still working and doing a bit on the other car. Yeah, we can start loading, but uh, we have two, two busy weeks before us with the 20 hours of Nürburgring. Yeah, we guys starting to loading a bit, get a bit relaxed now. Then today we go home and then. Yeah. How impressed are you with the 24 hour series? The grids just keep growing and growing, and the, the, the driving talent that it's attracting is just always you know, great to see. Yeah, sure. Um, I had a, a big interview before the spa event with the Creventic press people. We was last time with the Creventic series in 2016. And yeah, look back to 2016, come back in 2023. Yeah, from my point of view, the, the series changed 100%. It was so, so much more professional with all the organization. Look how many cars we have here, all the drivers. Yeah, I think um, it was a good step in the right direction what the series are doing. We feel happy here. I think, unfortunately, as we're talking to you, Christian, the Audi TT, I think it's the 755, has just pulled off. We could see just behind us. Yeah, the 755 is a customer car from one of our engineers. Today is only driving by one driver. He will only drive for get some driving time. And then we will get the car in later on, make a small break, and then he will go out again. He is here only for collect some laps and learn a bit. You clearly like to keep busy, Christian, with all these cars, customer teams. Yeah, but we are here with three cars. Yeah, one car out, one car is driving only for fun. Then you can, yeah, it's a bit less pressure than running with three cars in front. All right, thanks for your time, Christian. Thank you. Uh, very good to hear there from uh, how many times when hearing from people like Christian Land, team bosses, do you get a voice in your ear when you're the pit reporter saying, uh, actually, their car isn't going at all. It's not going well. It's just not well, doing anything now. That, that was one of their cars not going very well already. As he said, just on a bit of a driving experience kind of journey this morning. But uh, then all three of the cars that they're responsible for this weekend having an absolute nightmare. So... Eight hours of the 12 are now behind us. Six yesterday, two so far today. The Herbeth Motorsport 91 Porsche leading by 32 seconds. Uh, Lauren Heinrich pulling away slightly from Anton Duquan, who's taken over the 26 Santa Locke Junior team 
Audi. Third, the car that started first today, Gray Newell now at the wheel of the 27 Hart Racing Mercedes in third, being caught but still with a margin over Christian Kleen, who's in the 69 JP Motorsport McLaren, the one McLaren in this race. Red Ant Racing leading the 992 Cup class with Yannick Radon just a lap and a half ago taking the lead of the class from uh, Luke Broikers in the Red Camel Jordan's 909. Third in that class in seventh overall is the 955 Villy Boat motorsport Porsche, Sergio Nikolai at the wheel and HRT performance with Chinese racer Eric Zhang is in eighth place overall fourth in class, fifth uh, sorry, ninth overall this is in the GT3 class, Benny Siemenson really flying in the 16 modern motorsport Porsche, then comes the fifth car in the Porsche Cup class, Sam de Jonge on home ground in the second of the Red Ant Racing's Porsches, that's car 904. E2P, no, number 90 Porsche, Javier Mostillo is 11th overall, then Juta Racing in the better place of the two Juta Racing Audis because the other one went out at the first end of the first lap today. That's 71 in 12th position. Then Land Motorsport making a recovery drive, Max Edelhoff getting that Land Motorsport Audi up the charts bit by bit. Number 11, Michael Kroll has just taken over the Hoffer Racing Mercedes from Schultz Kral. He's in 14th. Then CP Racing, they started sixth today, but uh, with the problem with the refueling, they're down with the refueling element of their car. Charles Putman is now down in 15th. And then come Leipert Motorsport going around in their Lamborghini in 16th place. 17th place with eight hours gone is the 967 HRT Performance Porsche. That had a little rotation a short while ago. Then leading GTX class is the VDS Racing Mark car with Nathan Van Springle at the wheel. They are 18th overall. Another car in the Porsche Cup class, it's car number 920 from Black Falcon is 19th and 7th in class. Then PK Car Sport, Bert Longin now at the wheel is eighth in that class in number nine at 24. Ninth in class is the 929 HRT Performance Porsche. Tenth in class, still in the Porsche Cup, is the Porsche Baltic Entin. That's uh, entry, that's car number 992. And then second in GTX, the GT3 Poland Lamborghini. That just came back slowly, unfortunately, with a puncture. Lost a lot of ground. Then in 24th overall, the 919 Black Falcon Porsche. That's 11th in the Porsche Cup class. Third in GTX is... Uh, Lamborghini Huracan, that is car number 720 from CLOA Racing and seven, uh, sorry, 719, which is 9 on to 11 Racing Porsche. That has lost a bit of ground recently. That's 26th overall. 27th overall in the GT standing and leading GT4 is the 416 Bagheera ZM Racing Mercedes with uh, David Rusecki at the wheel. 12th in the Porsche Cup class, sorry, no, in the GT3 class is the much-delayed number one Shearer Sport Audi, that's in 28th overall. 701 is the remaining Vortex, that's in the GTX class, 29th overall. Then TCL Motorsports, they are second in GT4 with their BMW, Kenny Teclavis at the wheel. Car 427 is third in GT4, that's the Lions speed by GP Porsche. And then 32nd, PB Racing with the Lotus in 32nd position overall. X-Swift Racing Events Toyota, Gavin Pickering now at the wheel of that, is 33rd overall and 4th in GT4. Then the much-troubled 979 entry in the Porsche Cup class with Rodrigue Guillon is in 12th in the 992 Cup in 34th overall. I think possibly still in the garage. Check that in a second. Atlas BX Motorsport with their Mercedes in GT4, fifth in class. Then Senkia Motorsport, 444, their BMW is sixth in GT4. Seventh in GT4 is the 480 PCR Sport GT4 Mercedes. That's from PCR Sport. Then MP Racing, much delayed after its accident yesterday. Their number 58 Mercedes is 13th in GT3. Still ahead, though, of the Haas RT Audi. Car number 14 that started from pole. Stefan Parra driving that around in 39th, 40th position, having hit the wall coming out at the end of the, uh, the chicane at the end of the opening lap today is the Juta Racing 72 Audi. And then Land Motorsport 755. We just heard there that TT being pulled to the side of the track. That's uh, running in the hands of Ben Koslowski. And then Land Motorsport, the 55 Audi, started the race today but was rather pushed back into the garage fairly soon. And the 702 Vortex brings up the rear, didn't start the second part of the race. And looking at eight hours gone in the TCE class, we talked a short while ago that Home Guard Racing were leading. They still are in their Cupra. 
and it's Jonas Holmgaard at the wheel of that, having taken over from Martin Vedel Mortensen. 1 2 1 Wolf Power Racing Audi, second in class. 1 2 3 uh, Top Car Sport, their Cooper is third. Then the 2 2 7 SRS Team Sorg Rensport Porsche is fourth in class. Fifth in class is the 2 4 5 Roma Racing BMW. Another BMW, this one, the 3 3 1. Uh, Martin Kroll driven BMW is sixth in class and seventh is Wolf Power Racing, but that only did seven laps yesterday and was parked up. That's car 117 out of the race. Eight hours gone. Let's take a look back at the highlights because it's been fast and furious today. We had a stoppage right at the end of the first flying lap, unfortunately, with one of the due to racing Audis going around and hitting the pit wall as it came up, not the pit wall, the wall on the other side of the track as it pulled onto the start finish straight. But it was uh, nice and clean at the start. And uh, then, of course, because that threw a code 60, everyone came in. But it was a clean start at the start, a restart of the race. Six hours gone yesterday, six hours ahead of us today. And while the front run... So now we're back live and uh, welcoming John Heintoff and Nick Damon. Welcome back. And for those of you on television, hope you enjoyed the music with the highlights. It's Nick Damon and John Heintoff in the Global Broadcast Centre with three hours and 52 minutes to go today. Diana Binks is down in the pit lane. And so far, so spa with the weather today. Looks like the clouds are dissipating a wee bit, but the moment we say that, of course, they'll bubble back up again. Eric Sang in, uh, in the wars earlier on when he had the coming together, both Eric and... John Shen, who are here this weekend, very experienced Chinese racers. Uh, in fact, Eric, we've seen, uh, John Shen, rather, we've seen in Dubai, haven't we? And Eric has uh, won China GT rounds in the past and indeed took part in Blanc Pan Asia as well, second in Fu Fuji and won in Shaoxing back in. 2017 so the battles that have been keeping us interested are well inside the top 10 for the lead of the 992 class with Red Ant Racing and Red Camel Modern Motorsports their GT3 there's Modern Motorsports that's um, in 7th that's uh, another Porsche Carrera Cup Asia team and they race all across Asia at the moment Benny Simonson behind the wheel of that GT3 car sitting in 7th and 5th in class and notice that there is we've had this before Nick Damon good afternoon good afternoon John. and that the AMG of just seen it as it's gone past the start finish line and the commentary position They've resorted now to putting tape and yeah. various other... A bung, in fact. CP, Charles Putman, has a bung it, uh, in the car it's, uh, it's, for when they refuel. Because it, we've seen this before from this car. We saw it at Modena, didn't we? Round the, uh, 
round the left-handers. It was it was like a vapor trail, but it was a fuel vapor. Quite dangerous, I would have thought. No, they're actually using the uh, the lid of a spray can. Find the pressure, which is just closing the, the seal of those pressure sealed uh, unit fuel areas. Just to, uh, another bit of information: both the top two are in the pit lane. Um, 26 um, Santalot definitely went for a full service. Unfortunately, I can't see the uh, the yeah, Herbeth, Herbeth pit whether they've gone yeah. for a full service or just a driver. Uh, whether the driver's been they're, changed they're or not. In, they're in fuel at the moment, and I think that's still Lauren Heinrich. Um, Helmet, although he's, he's done 24 laps before this green flag pit stop, has Lauren. Uh, it was Antoine Docquin who brought, brought in the Saint yeah, Jr. Junior he's, he's team. Definitely got out. And right. The interesting right, thing about Herbert, John, of course, this is the first time I remember them actually running the pro class. So they've got a lot more flexibility on driver time because they've got um, obviously Lauren, who is a pro, and I think you've got. Roberts and, and Alfred are both classed as semi-pro in this particular championship, aren't they? And then you've got uh, Ralph Bond and Dan Hamlin, who are amateurs. I think they only have to run four hours of amateur, I think, when you're in the pro. And so they can run, I think, eight hours of, of the others of semi-pro and, and, and full pro. So maybe up for most of the day uh, with the, the Renard brothers and, and Lauren Heinrich. I wasn't keeping total tabs on, on what the, the two gentlemen drivers were doing. But uh, they did sit with quite a lot of the, uh, the racing yesterday, despite the poor weather. So still more than half of today's race to go. I would suggest that in the second half of the race, one of the most important screens you could be looking at is the penalty screen. Unfortunately, thanks to timeservice.nl and get results, you could pull that up. Well, the other, the other important screen. Have a look at it. The other important screen, John, is the weather radar, isn't it? Um, now we've got we've reached 20 to one local time, and we've not had any significant rain. We had a bit of psychological rain on the windscreen a couple of times, but nothing that was really affecting the cars. Um, the forecast is that it's um, it's supposed to rain um, at some point this afternoon. It, it, it give you an indication of, of how good the weather is now. Diana has taken her coat off. It's it's quite unbelievable. I mean, you know. Wow. I mean, the, 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 only worry, the only worrying thing is yesterday. She told me she wasn't going to take her coat off because she wasn't wearing anything underneath. So hopefully she's changed her, changed her, her attire. Diana, what, are, are you actually uh, literally singing? Uh, uh, you know, have you decided to, to, to uh, look rather more uh, fresh in the air? It's the mental image. Mental image, darling. <laughs> so there's no camera in the lane so you're okay <laughs> i have taken my coat off but i have got something else on <laughs> oh well <laughs> no, no, it feels like you it, didn't uh, say what <laughs> it, has, it has warmed up uh, here definitely since i came into the pit lane <laughs> everyone's laughing now it's pinks <laughs> yeah i'm sure they are uh the it's diana pinks in the pit lane um who was celebrating yesterday, day uh, 23. Uh, she was yesterday, happy birthday, Di. Um, that'll be a large G&T for me sometime later in the year. And at the moment, we're working through that, uh, the opportunity for these teams to get some good long runs in uh, whilst the weather is decent. The heart of racing have to be a bit careful here because they've got three hours and 46 minutes to go. And I, I still think um, we've not seen, did we see Roman Angelis in that car? Yes, we did, he's done 21 laps. So he's done an hour. So he can only do two more hours. So they've got to work that out. I presume that they'll put him in for the last two hours of the race, Nick. Yeah, they got, uh, the other point to remember is, is there is a maximum single drive time of two hours. That doesn't always fit brilliantly with uh, GT3 uh, fuel tanks either. So perhaps they'll give him three sets of 40 minutes. They've got about 2.20 left, actually. So they might give him um, like an hour and 20 or an hour and a half uh, and, and also another, another 45 minute mm. session early. But they are they are holding him off because everyone is convinced we're going to get rain at some, at some point. And Ian James yeah. obviously thinks, well, he's our best chance of rain to make up some serious time. He's very good in all conditions. Come up through the Porsche route, both in Canada and in uh, what, what was GT Challenge before it became 
Porsche Carrera Cup North America. We seem to have a lot of Carrera Cup refugees. Um, it, it, this week ends. He's done 50 minutes, 21 laps so far. Green Newell has been in for an hour and eight minutes, 27 uh, laps. There was a little bit of full course yellow in that. But as Nick says, the key thing is two hours in the car at the end. So they've got to be a bit careful. Yeah, Ian James also got two laps at the start. <laughs> he came in, uh, he took the start. There was a code 60 at the end of lap one because of the accident to the number 72 uh, Audi, and uh, then he came in and they changed over to, to Roman immediately. So uh, Ian has, has blooded himself today, but just for a lap and a half. Second place for Herbert Motorsport, Robert Renard behind the wheel. And that's 992 GT3 car, brand new to the series. First time in competition this weekend. We've got two of them uh, with the Modena Motorsports Number 16 car, Benny Simonson in fifth place in GT3. I mean, interestingly, John, they appear to have got the band's performance right with it, which seems to be, has, has troubled other series. Um, whilst we have, have seen Lauren Heinrich put in the fastest... They've got more data, haven't they? The yeah. car's been running more, and they did take a look at it at, Mon at Modena, if you remember, when yeah, it ran Michelle, outside yeah. of competition. Yeah, uh, excuse me, Michelle. Yeah, I mean, uh, an interesting thing, the, the fastest overall lap time has been done by that car, but it was also done by Lauren Heinrich, which is kind of like Kamsay Kamsar, isn't it? Well, that's, that's, you know, they're the, the only, what, four tenths faster than the other fastest lap, which was Roman De Angelis in the, uh, um, the Mercedes of Heart of Racing. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like they got the bands pretty good. I mean, it was interesting, actually, I'm not sure how much you saw of the early part of this, but Alfa and now started the car, and he, we've spoken to him on the grid, and it was his first time in that particular version of the new GT3. And it's pretty obvious he's working himself into it. He started off like four, four seconds behind Roman, and slowly got closer and closer and closer and closer. He's just got used to the, the, there was the vagaries or the differences of the new version of the car compared to the old one, of course, which is probably like an old pair of slippers to him. Yeah, true. The changes to those cars are legion. Um, new platform. The engine has gone out to 4.196 or something like that, so 4.2. Uh, effectively, it is the engine from the old RSR19. It's still got the gearbox in front of the engine, but the whole engine and gearbox is being tilted up at the back. And that's to give them a little more room underneath the flat six engine at the back. If you ever looked under a, uh, any Porsche, but particularly the, the current 992s, even the 2.9 engine, and I can say this with s some alacrity because I have, um, the 2.9 engine f is a big old lump, that flat six, and uh, they've tilted it up at the back so they can get more diffuser underneath there, which has radically changed the 992 aero balance and meant that the performance window is much wider and that particularly for gentlemen drivers or non-pro drivers let's call them uh, has been an issue in the past with some versions of the 911 and one year it's been good one year it's been bad it was the same with the gte car to be honest the rsr uh, the, the one before the 19 um, I seem to remember had a performance envelope. It was so small you could barely put a stamp on it, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, and, it, and we saw a lot of porpoising with that car. And you never want to see a 911 porpoising. It's not. It's not going well uh, when a racing 911 is is porpoising. So lots of changes on that 992 body shape, as well as inside. The drivers moved slightly more to the middle. And again, this is all taking inspiration from the outgoing. GTE car, which is competing in the FAA World Endurance Championship and at Le Mans for its final time this year, as all GTE cars are. It would be sad to see those cars go. Rather, unfortunately, I think, replaced by GT3s. But we'll see how long that will last before that implodes. It's interesting, isn't it, John, that the factories, the changes they've made, because you mentioned that they've... they've lifted the engine to get more air, air under the car, which goes to show that therefore the aerodynamic efficiency at the rear is more important than raising the centre of gravity. And the centre of gravity used to be the most uh, important thing on a racing car, and now you're saying, no, we'll have, we'll have the engine up a little bit higher because we want to get the air under for a little bit more rear grip. 
uh, and, in, and in fact, the, the engine and gearbox are tilted. They are at a, a reasonable angle of, you know, several degrees. Um, with the gearbox in front of the engine still on these cars, they swapped them around on the the RSR19 so that the gearbox was behind the engine, pushing the engine into the middle of the car. It changed the weight balance by about two and a half, three percent. That was all. But what it did was it freed up a huge amount of room under the back of the car that they could exploit. Now, why do you want to do that? I'll tell you, because underbody aero will give you downforce but at a fraction of the drag of outboard wings gives you and it also allowed them to and if you look at the 992 even the, the 992 r the gt3 formula car you will notice that there is far there are far fewer aerodynamic winglets on the front of that car than there were on the previous versions uh, of the car and indeed particularly on the old gte car that's because they don't need to balance it that much. They really like what it don't need to balance it that much. They really like what they've got with that draggy car as well. So quicker in a straight line. They can't get very much more power out of that engine than they've got without putting turbos on it. And so that's the thinking behind that and the tilting of the engine. Third place at the moment, Santa Lock Junior Team for the very bright green Audi heading towards the end of the Camel Straight at the moment. That's what I heard your call it this morning. <laughs> the humps at the end of it. It's in sunshine as well. We have sunshine at Spa at the top end of the track. So, you know, you can knock that one off your bingo car because it wasn't very likely given the, the forecast coming into the event was that yesterday was supposed to be really quite pleasant. And today was supposed to be very, very wet. Well, we've had a complete uh, vault farce on that so far. Um, and the, certainly the, the cars are making hay with the sunshine, none more than the McLaren, which is particularly, to, yeah, which is particularly quick uh, during uh, periods of dry weather. So it's uh, got uh, Patrick Kopinski in it, and it obviously has been Christian clean as well. But that car has kind of worked its way back into contention after making a, a, effectively a beginner's error in the first set of um, Code 60, where what they decided to do was to take their, their penalty. And they obviously didn't talk, you've got to Code 60, you've got to take the penalty. But what they didn't realise was, because all the cars were nailed together, they would end up having taken their penalty with no room at the inn as far as the fuel stops were concerned. And then they waited and waited and waited what well, they should have done. They said, heck to the penalty, let's get fuel. Because as I said before, in Creventic, fuel is king, anything else is a bonus. Nick Damon and John Hindolf in the Global Broadcast Centre. And enough sun to cast shadows on cars at the moment. And as the third place, Santa Luc machine heads through to the final two corners dare I say it but I can almost see a bit of blue sky mm -hmm. off to the eastern side of the circuit weather generally comes in from the south and west here not always but generally speaking you'll get the first spots of rain at uh, Campus and Stavolo or up at the top of the hill down from Malmody to Rivage, or Brussels, as it's called now. And it spreads across from the uh, that side of things, which is why quite often the pit lane, if you have if you have a localised shower, it might come over the half of the circuit and it only comes up to about Blanchimont and halfway up the Kemmel Strait. You'll often find La Source stays without weather. Yeah, over the top of the uh, grandstand, which obviously is the where uh, where some of the weather does come from, actually, the start finish straight. It's looking quite bright. There's, it's got that issue where you've got a complete mixture of clouds from complete fluffy and white to slightly dark. And I think it's terribly threatening. The only problem is we've had rain out of that colour of cloud before yesterday, so it's it's very hard to tell. Um, I know, yeah, I know we, we, we've been terribly British here and obsessed with weather, but I think if you're at Spa, you're allowed to be obsessed by the weather because it is the defining factor in many ways of the circuit, apart from Marvel's design and the <laughs> incredible history. It's mostly about the weather. I, I think at Spa, you have to be obsessed by the weather, <laughs> to be quite honest. Problem for the uh, MP Racing, number 58. That's the uh, share at uh, Spa. Uh, sorry, that's not the sheriff's sport at all, is it? That's man. Uh, that's Karenna Gosner behind the wheel of MP Racing. Uh, got the right car, but uh, the wrong part of the track. 
Uh, and that car was going very slowly through Lecombe and Malmedy. That car's been in the wars, John, throughout. I, mean, I remember one of the garages you walk past, and you come out of the, uh, the uh, commentary booth and you walk around the back of the garages to get to where the, um, we pick up the TV, and there are uh, several parts of bright green crushed carbon fibre out the back from previous incidents they've had so far. So I'm not sure they can take them with them or try and sell them on the, black, on the uh, souvenir market, but there is a lot of um, carbon fibre that's no longer weaved and woven in the correct direction anymore, but is splintered and cracked. It's definitely not on, on up to speed for Karina. When did she get into that car? Um, she's been in it. She had a 16-lap stint, then pitted, and a six-lap stint. That would suggest to me... Oh, actually, it could have been Manuela who was in it before because they both had the three, same three-letter identifier, GOS. Um, but that suggests to me uh, 16 laps. That car should be doing 25, 26 laps. So I suggest there may have been a problem. I wonder if that's a fuel pressure problem on that car. We've got the lead of the pits, John. Um, so, yes, they've got Gray Newell. Gray he's Newell. In, they've been, he's been in the pits for a minute and 13, so I don't see the entrance. Either he's served a penalty or there's been a driver change. Um, so we won't find out uh, until um, he triggers the timing loop at the pit exit when we get the information updated from the car driver identifier button. If they remember to turn it, of course. He is on his way to fuel now, and of course will stop for fuel. That was a 31-lap stint um, with a little bit of full-course purple in that. Yeah, I can't. I can't think he would. I can't need to keep him on board because uh, he's done an hour and. So the question 10. is now, Nick, mm. and this is what the question you were asking before is: Do they put Roman D'Angelis in again for an hour now? Uh, he's got two hours and ten minutes or thereabouts uh, to go, but of course he can't do all of that. And I, would, I, I like your suggestion of saying, well, I don't think they'll want to waste ten or fifteen minutes of his drive time. So put him in for a single stint now and, and then let him finish off the race. As soon as his drive time is the gap to the end of the race, stick him in for the rest of it. Or do we see the evergreen Ian James back in the car to take it to closer yeah. to the last two hours. It would make sense for him to get a 45-minute run now. Um, and then obviously he has to take half that time off again before he gets back in the car, which is only 25 minutes. And then that should Good enable point. them to run, you know, with Ian James doing, you know, an hour or perhaps just under an hour, that will enable him to run to the end. So they're absolutely back timing at this point. It's just whether they decide to go short Ian James, single Ian James, single... Um, Roman singly and James double Roman all decided to do slightly different from there but my guess is it would make sense to have Roman but they are leading anyway so uh, they don't need the extra burst of speed at the moment that was a heck of a uh, stint from Graham Newell um, he stretched that out to 31 laps there was a short code 60 in the middle of it but that's all um, that's, I'm pretty impressed by that truth be told um, an hour and 18 minutes behind the wheel of the car. Things remember. Uh, meantime, GT4, Sorry. good. Go on. Go ahead, Things remember. This. this is an AM car leading, and it's leading three pure pro teams. So they're actually they're, they're rotating with one super quick pro and two AMs. And those AMs have to do nine hours of running, unlike the pro teams who can have any who have any number of full pros, and they only have to do four hours with the amateur drivers. So they, yeah, it's an impressive performance. Helped obviously by the change of weather yesterday. But great driving, and obviously Ian James probably the <laughs> one of the fast amateurs you're going to find. And Gray's been really, really good. He's a little bit out of sorts of yesterday, a couple of seconds off the pace in the wet, but brought the car home with no damage and only one piece. And seen much, much more on the pace um, moving forward today. But anyway, the answer to that question is uh, John, Ian James. So they've decided they're going to uh, perhaps they are literally going to take two hours of uh, Roman right at the end to the end. Yeah, because Ian could do sort of one and a half now. Um, and get it towards that. Have we decided, by the way, when we're going to the to Alan Prosser's pub? Hello, Alan. Yes. Good morning. I know you were busy this morning. But where is it? Doing breakfast. The Mar the Marbank Inn at Welland. It's um, it's a, it'd be a good ride on the motorcycle. Where, where, so where, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm, my English, I'm not that good. Where is Welland in the UK? It, it, it's uh, no, no, no. It's um over in in the Malvern Hills. Oh, lovely. So, Tewkesbury sort of way. Oh, marvellous. Um, 
it's and there's some smashing roads around there. When I when I did the when I was out doing the feature about the um, tour of Britain, that's the roads I was out over there, and uh, it's uh, it's it's good Porsche driving country um, or good motorcycling country. Yeah, it's motorcycling. So I think we'll have to. I'm just getting, I'm just getting directions to my house. Think. Hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is. Uh, um, <laughs> it's two hours and a minute. Oh, that's that's the wrong route. That's via the M1. Sorry, I don't want to do that. The, this is the Marl Bank Inn. Oh, that's, well, that's a really good run, John. It sorry, sorry, sorry yeah. to go very parochial there on the radio, but effectively there's some fantastic. It's it, it, you can do it from my house. It it's if my house to Welland is absolutely a straight line. It's a crow fly straight line. If you're driving a car, you up and over. If you know how the um, the motors work in the UK, go up the M1 and up and over on the M45, or you can go even higher on the M6 no. and down the M5, or it's just go straight across in the country roads. And I assume we go past Caffeine and the Machine. It's probably went that way. Uh, it is, yeah. Could have a brief stop there with the guys. Uh, three and a half hours to go. I think a collective meet-up there at some stage in the future. See, they, they, when the, one the summer nights are in. One disadvantage, John. If we're riding over there, yes. there's no chance of having any gin. We're going to ride back. <laughs> That's a very good point, well made. You could do us a takeaway. Takeaway gin. Herbeth Motorsport back at the front of the field with the number 91 Robert Renard driven machine. Erwin Bastard for the 26 blue and white uh, Santa Lock team. Sorry, green. Uh, Audi in second at about a minute and a quarter. Harder racing, another 43 seconds further back. Ian James in that Mercedes. Now, in the 992 category, these cars have been running at the sharp end of the field, certainly within, well within the top 20, and the leaders are within the top 10. And at the moment, we've got a battle between... Uh, John de Vilde for Red Ant Racing and in front of him is Eric Zhang, I think, in the 955, or is it Sabrina Del Castro? She, uh, as well. So de Vilde, yeah, de Vilde under pressure in 10th position from Sabino de Castro. Eric Zhang's further up the road for... HRT. So that is effectively the balance, the ba balance battle for fourth and fifth in the class. Being led at the moment by Red Ant Racing. Out. Oh, Lug Breukers has just come into the pick out a second in class. So actually, it's the battle for third. So Red Ant Racing leading Yannick Redant at the wheel. Then Lug Breukers is in the pits for Red Camel. Then we've got HRT uh, running in the sort of Toro racing colours of Eric Zhang in third, then uh, in second effectively now when he comes through. Then John de Vilda, then Sabino de Castro. And they're all in the top 11 now. What a great race to go, what a great way to go racing in an endurance sport. Yeah, I mean, the uh, other class leaders, let's rattle through those. VDS Racing with the Mark II V8, the red Mustang alike in 16th position into 758 leading GTX. GT4, Bugira ZM Racing, Ale Kolosh for the Mercedes GT4, number 4560. TCR, therefore the TCE leader, Holmgard for Jonas Holmgard in the Leon competition. And TCX, Team. Zorg Rensport in their Cayman. It's the 227. And TC is the Hoffer Racing by Bonk. Michael Bonk behind the wheel in the 365 horsepower version of the BMW 2S Club Sports. Through La Source for the Toro HRT machine. And um, we've got a yellow flag at the end of the lap. And that's right in front of the pit lane. And that's cleared. Look, not sure who was stuck there. Red Camel in for fuel. It's been a very long stop for fuel. It's a very big tank. 
of it up. Fair point, well made. <laughs> but no, it's interesting because there are a few of the Porsches now, they, they do run longer than the GT3s, as we know. Because Joe was asking, Joe was flabbergasted that the GT2 was leading the race overall yesterday. And he said, has it ever happened before? I said, yeah, it used to happen every time after the about, an hour, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, about, about an hour and 10 minutes at Dubai, every single time a 992 would, would pass, 991 would, would lead the race, based on the fact they weren't that much slower, and they've got bigger tanks and better fuel economy. And they're rolling mm. again now. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's no real surprise. And the interesting thing also, as, as, the, as the weather gets sort of more intermediate, so it's not bone dry. Now it's bone dry. There's a definite pace advantage to the GT3. So when it wasn't quite bone dry, there was virtually nothing in it. What the uh, lap time for the GT2s and the lap time, sorry, for the, for the um, lap time for the Porsche GTs and the, and the lap time for the, for the GT3s. It was, it was really weird. Of course, you can spec the 992 Cup car with ABS, not traction control, but with ABS. The GT3s do have traction control and ABS, and quite sophisticated ones at that. The only series I'm aware of in Carrera Cup that has that is the Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup North America. The thinking behind it is that the drivers, um, like Roman De Angelis, Kai von Berlo, all those sort of people, will go forward into ABS GT championships. Um, so the endurance, a lot of the endurance cars will have ABS in those 992 Cup cars. So they, they, they are still relatively, <laughs> say relatively, says Heindorf, um, relatively user-friendly in the wet, but no mm. traction control, as far as I'm aware. I don't so think it's even on the option. This is a really interesting question. Though. So do you think, in the wet, ABS or traction control is more important than one or the other? ABS in the wet is very, very helpful. Um, but then again, so is traction control. I've done skid pan work with, with Porsches, funny enough, where they throw you off a kick plate and you've, and you've got to try and uh, balance the car. And they turn everything off and sort of 18 miles an hour, you're spinning around. Um, if you really fast you can get up to 30 miles an hour before you start losing it and then they put the all the aids back on again and you drive along and the instructor says put your hands on your knees and you drive through with 22 miles an hour put your hands on your knees the car gets kicked sideways don't lift your foot off the throttle just keep your foot exactly where it is and the car pulls itself straight again it's absolutely <laughs> extraordinary so i think working in tandem probably traction control I suppose how it's it's how good you can moderate the pedals yeah, and, and how good your feel is. You know, we grew up on cars that had neither, Nick. Yes. And in the frozen northeast, Hello, head. driving. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the frozen northeast in the winter with snow on the ground, you had to have the wheels spinning. You were generally rear wheel drive cars. You had to have the wheels spinning a little bit. You were sideways and getting sideways to get up the hill to get back to my mum and dad's house. That was just one of the things you do, weaving in and out the parked cars when there was snow on the ground with your probably 155 series tyres uh, on them. Um, ABS can be a blessing and a curse because it will... Um, it, it, I think ABS is better for, to be honest, for the less experienced driver. I think ABS, if you trust the ABS, you can get more lap time out the car. And in the, in the wet, it does help. It won't completely stop the wheels locking up in the wet. Traction control, um, if you're prepared to play around with it, for the pro drivers, they'll normally turn, they turn it off. And we saw the pro drivers here last weekend in um, hypercar coming to grief when particularly the four-wheel drive hypercars were turning off the traction control on cold tyres to try and get heat in the tyres. And then when the front tyre deployment popped in, they were getting dragged off the track. As a, as a non-pro driver, if you're prepared to just change the traction control as you go through your stint and wear your tyres out, then I think it can be, again, it can be very confidence inspiring. But it will lose you ultimate lap time because obviously it's it's cutting the power to the driven wheels. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 if you get a pound as well, my personal feeling is that if you are losing the car on the rear in the wet, 
it's much harder to get it back than if you just lock up because you can cadence it in and probably go wide. So you, so, or you can just, uh, so, so, yeah, you go in the brake, you've got it wrong, your cadence will just go a bit wide. If, you, if the car, if you lost the car at the rear, it's going to spin on you. That's my feeling. And don't forget, I have very leaden feet. <laughs> Let's uh, head down to the pit lane as the ETP Porsche number 90 has just gone off at the top of the circuit, coming through Le Com, but regains the track. And a good run from Benny Simonson. Uh, he's out of the car, which means Diana can speak to him down in the pit lane. Benny, uh, John, um, he's just jumped out of the car and he just said to me, I can't hear anything at the moment, so I'm going to have to really try not to shout into the microphone but ask the questions. Um, Benny, how would you summarise the weekend for you so far? Uh, yeah, so far so good. I think we're leading our class, perhaps. So, um, yeah, we can only be happy with that, really. Uh, I think as of the race yesterday, we were still on the lead lap in a Pro-Am car, so pretty good. So, yeah, so far so good. Conditions very different today. What's the, what's, the, what's the key here? Is it managing the tyres, the traffic? I mean, for us, I think we had a quite good gap from yesterday in terms of our class lead. So we really just take no risk, uh, bring the car home, manage the traffic, really. And what's the balance of the car like for you? Is it obviously you satisfied that you've got everything out of it? It's not too bad. It's a brand new car. Uh, first time we're driving it this weekend. Uh, it didn't do any testing with it, so um, really just of a, a test race before the Spa 24. Uh, so not too bad. It's, uh, it's a bit of fine tuning still. What have you learned? Uh, just new car. Uh, it's just I think it's just time in the car for everybody. You know, the team learning the car, uh, just yeah, getting comfortable in the car, and obviously the adjustments we're doing, what's working. And what's working. How much do you enjoy these 12-hour races? I know we've got the split format in two, but um, there's so much track time, but from a driving perspective, is that what excites you about this championship? Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's always fun to come and do spa. It's always fun to drive, of course, and uh, it's um, a, bit, a bit split into two. It's a little bit more of a relaxed for everybody. You can, you can go back to yesterday night and uh, have a good laugh, good dinner, and uh, and then come back and refresh. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, but it's always fun to, any endurance racing is always fun. Thanks, Benny. Thank you. So looking at the uh, overall order, uh, it's uh, Robert Renauer leading from Irvin Bastard. So it's Herbert from Santa Locke and Ian James in third. He's down by just under a lap, actually. Lapping uh, equivalent times to uh, give or take the traffic with Irvin, but uh, Robert is um, a couple of seconds quicker, as you might expect, for the Herbert car. And that's your top three. Uh, Eric Zhang and HRT Performance has rotated back to the front of the 992 class and in GT uh, X it is Nathan Van Springle of the fabulous sounding VDS Racing Adventures Mark 1 uh, Mustang. Mark 2 I think it is. Well um, that, you, you've a point, I'm a Mark out. <laughs> it's a Mark VDS Mark 2. <laughs> Just, you need one of Ken Bruce's t-shirts, just one out. <laughs> um, a, a point about that modern motorsport car, Benny Samuelson just out of it, that, that's one of two new GT uh, three R's. We've talked about the Herbert. That is the other one in the race. I'm interesting that he's talking about gathering uh, some info for the CrowdStrike break Spa 24 hours. We'll have regular updates uh, and a full preview of that race coming in the next few weeks on Midweek Motorsport. John Shen, who's in it at the moment, it's the same number as his uh, Carrera Cup Asia car. Carrera Cup Asia celebrating 25 glorious years this year. John Shen started racing in 1999 in Formula Campus, and he's done just about everything else. He's been doing Carrera Cup Asia since 2009. Um, and he's we've certainly seen him in Dubai the 24 hours mm -hmm. in the past. Um, he has, I, I think he 
did the 24 hours of Spa um, in 19 or 20, and Bruce will know that he's done Blanc Panasia as well. Been around for a while, has Sir uh, John, an uh, import export entrepreneur from Hong Kong. And when he's not racing, he likes much quieter and more relaxed things, fishing and golfing. John in that car now, ga gathering valuable experience. That's interesting, that's, that's two of the major pastimes of the world, which I genuinely cannot get any interest in, golf or fishing. I don't mind crazy golf or adventure golf, but I, you know, it, it, it's a weird thing, isn't it? I mean, one side, total adrenaline, the other side, a pointless walk, and the third side, just sitting quietly, trying to see if you can outwit a, a very, an animal way lower on the evolutionary scale than yourself. I can throw a golf ball uh, further than <laughs> yeah, I can hit it with, true, with true. anything other than about a seven iron. Anything that's got a straighter face than a seven iron is pointless to me. It'd be a cheap sport for me. Probably um, some kind of wedge or a sand wedge. Mashy, old fashioned mashy niblick, actually. A putter, maybe an eight iron. That would be all I would need um, to hack around. And 150 golf balls, probably. Um, fishing. I've fished from a boat before and caught my own dinner, which, you know, get up at the crack of dawn, and there you were, the finger lakes and there you were, eating a Wellington boot. <laughs> mm. No, they were little pillows of loveliness, I'll tell you now. They oh, were really? fantastic. Were they? Yeah. Uh, fish. Um, uh, they had a breed. There's a breed of fish. You've got to say fish. <laughs> it was a white fish. It okay, was lovely. And we sort of deep fried them and bought them and barbecued them and had them that same evening. And that was great fun. Um, but at sitting, coming from where I come from in the northeast of England, watching people beach casting or sitting on the wall of the of the pier for hours on end, or you know when I was riding my uh, bicycle on the on the trails, um, watching people by the side of rivers, I can see the tranquility of it. Maybe it didn't interest me as much then because I was moving a lot quicker. I give you ten Nowadays, minutes, I've ten. learned to relax a little bit more. Ten minutes, John. Ten minutes. You could do fishing for. Then you'd just be climbing the walls. Or wanting to do something else. I suppose it depends what else was going on. I'd probably have to have something in my ears to keep me yes. interested. Leader coming through traffic now, including the Audi Kirchhofer Group Audi through Pouam. Double gauche, as I've heard uh, Joe and yeah, that's Bruce calling it. And that is a really today. bad or a double, really, double. A, Sorry, that's a really bad rename. Who wants on. way better than double left, isn't it? I mean, some of the, some of the renaming they've done at this track has been well, quite it, poor. Well, if you if it's if it, if you're going to use the French name, you have to say it in a French accent. So it has to be double gauche, not double gauche, um, or just say double left. Um, if, you, if you're going to anglicise it. Uh, you, uh, speaker's Corner, which is now Jackie X. That's, I'm sure Jackie X would rather have a, a different corner named after him than, than that one on, a, on the Premier Circuit in his home country. Well, that's exactly the same as all the chicanes being named after Ayrton Senna. And the last thing Ayrton Senna wanted to do was go around a chicane. But because it's the bits of the track they had to just because of the, all the bits they had to build since yeah. the accident. They go, we built this chicane because of it, and so we'll name it because of it. And, then go, oh. and, his, and his logo for his foundation is a chicane, isn't it? It's an S, yeah. kind of. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, 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 the, the naming of parts of track did not almost, always line up with what the person they named after would probably have wanted them to be. The biggest crime in all of motorsport Ooh. around the world, particularly F1 tracks, and particularly in the UK, is that there is no part of a track named after the person who, outside of Max, has done more for driver safety, and that's Sir Jackie Stewart. Oh, you know, oh, you know this is a bugbear of mine, the, the lack of um, acknowledgement of Jackie Stewart, both his racing career and his post-racing career, is because they, they, he was, what he was doing was so deeply unfashionable when he was doing it, and it hasn't at the been, time, and we yeah. haven't yet had the um, people rewrite. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it'll get, it'll get properly written until after he's gone, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, by far, of all 
the, the everyone says he was the greatest racing driver of, of, of all time. Well, if you want to know who had the greatest influence on the sport, that's the man who was actually a world champion. Because a lot Three of other times people, a world champion, and a lot of people are still here because of him. Mm. Absolutely agree. And not a single part of a track bears his name in the UK, and I'm pretty certain that that is the case. There's a Jackie Stewart grandstand at Watkins oh, yeah. Glen International. That's as cl close as I've seen, to be honest. So Robert Renard still leads the motor race. And this has been a good run in terms of seeing what the relative pace is of the, the race cars, relative pace of the race cars is. Renard, Bastard, Ian James, Patrick, Krabinski. Good to see the McLaren. Um, yeah. Just off the lead lap, as you said uh, earlier, Nick, with um, a little bit of a foo bar in terms of their tactics this morning. That JP Motorsport cars performed very, very well. Can't miss it, of course, with its gold wrap. That car is showing good pace and would like to see more of them, please. Just crossing the line and heading down the hill now. Is the very fetching Porsche in that dark green? It's the Neun und Elf Racing, and that car with uh, Georg Gerda behind the wheel, fourth in GTX at the moment. Yeah, that's another good thing. You've got, a, you've uh, got driven a, by God. Well, obviously, at the moment, if you, you look, at, if you look at, <laughs> he's on a mission from God, perhaps. As, <laughs> is the well, the good thing, because this obviously is a car that was, which was able to be into the in the 991 class when it was a class before they, the cars moved on. But you can still race it and prevent it. They just just move it to a different class and carry on going. You know, you don't obsolete your your race vehicles just because there happens to be a change yeah, within the point. manufacturer. And you know, we've had a really, really good GTX turnout here and a really good GT4 turnout. So it's where the major growth has been is in these middle classes. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not a cup car. That's an, that's an MR. So that's a Manti breathed on car. I didn't expect you to ne necessarily know that, Nick. Um, no. But um, <laughs> it, it's so that is, a, if you will, a, um, I think... I'll have, have to have another look at it now, but I think it's a 991 uh, Gen 2. Uh, you can tell that on the uh, the engine cover. So yes. I'll have a look at that it's next time around. That's an MR. It says it is, 991. Uh, uh, MR Manti Racing. Breathe, breathed on, so it's got a different air roll, and that's why it's in GTX. Penalty soaked up by the Lotus, going, as you mentioned this morning on the grid, showing... Um, Good reliability and uh, Stefano, Stefano Daste, wasn't it, that you were talking mm. to about that car? Um, I did suggest that after you'd uh, spoken, oh, we've had the Porsche Baltic GT3 Cup car going around at the final corner, now pointing in the right direction for Tadvudas Vidokas. That's the uh, green and yellow car, 25th. In its in overall 11th in class, I did suggest Nick this morning that um, you might want to do a whole show of Nick just interviews <laughs> Italians. It was brilliant. <laughs> oh, it's great. I mean, I, I, it's the, the enthusiasm of Stefano De Asta and uh, Fabrizio Brogi is, is why you want to talk to them, isn't it? Because not only do you get good information, you get yep. a, a great, a huge amount of personality, and people are absolutely so excited to be doing this. I mean, Stefano De Asta been doing it for years, and he's still excited to be doing it. So it was, he, he put first one in 19 years ago. Uh, and Fabrizio, obviously, it's, it's important to get a marriage update, see how things are going. You know, it's a tricky first couple of months. <laughs> mm. Through to the end of the Camel Strait for the Kirchhoff Gruppe number 34, Land Motorsport. It is Dr. Johannes Kirchhoff behind the wheel of that car. Eighth position in GT3. That blue and white colour scheme 
it's become one of the classics. Um, the Baltic car, by the way, the 992, carrying a version of the 75th anniversary Porsche cars, 75th anniversary colours. Uh, it is three quarters of a century this year since Dr. Ferdinand Porsche realised that he couldn't find a car that he liked, so he decided to build his own. Porsche, as a company, is older uh, than that, but that was that's the anniversary of the first actual car. They did a lot of engineering consultation um, work, engine design, suspension design, etc. Hence the type numbers. They were, if you will, in some ways, project numbers. So Dr. Ferry Porsche couldn't find a car that he liked, so he decided to build his own. That's one of his famous quotes. That was 75 years ago this year. You'll hear a lot talk about Gemud, where those cars came out of at various points. And it's, of course, 60 years of the people's sports car. The Porsche 911. Problem for a big lockup at Rivage for Brussels, sorry, for the 21 Audi. Hass RT and car. That car has... Yes, that is a car that's... Well, how the mighty have fallen. Oliver Bertels, after two phenomenal races for that car. Now, was that a lot up or was it something more sinister? Because he's not up to speed as he comes down to the double left at Puan. It looked, it looked like the, the tail end of a lockup. It, yeah, it, you know, the sort of thing with absolutely mm. flat spot a tyre, but it's a rear right. That's the tail really end of a lockup from the tail end. Oh, no. Rear right, I don't know, yeah. I don't yeah. even think it was a tyre rubbing. Um, that looked, I'm afraid, that odd reflection looked somewhat more sinister and possibly more requiring of a pit for another. a pit stop for some remedial attention. Yeah, as you say, another pit stop. Another point, as you say, I mean, they, obviously the problem they had was was uh, halfway through yesterday's uh, part of the race, when unfortunately Stefan Perrin just got the top of the uh, the uh, straight wrong and, and ran down the barriers of, at, um, at the top of the hill, and that was uh, took out you know, the front very badly and the, and the rear suspension not so bad. It was a two-hour fix, unfortunately, for a complete corner um, onto a Audi R8. Looks like he's going slow enough. Is he coming in? Looks like he's going slow enough to come in. Yeah, he's coming in. So the Haas RT car is coming into the pit. Not quite sure. Okay, I'm not one of the pits that I can see, but I'm sure Dial tells us what's going on in the moment mm. down there. Meantime, the leader in 992, HRT performance into the pits. Pick that. One of the uh, HRT cars, I think it was the 929, the Carl Becker Laxonen car, lost its uh, the rubber bit of its front splitter earlier on, which is a nightmare. Oliver Bertel's taking a penalty in the pit box at the moment. This will be standard penalty length. You double it, of course, if it's code 60. Um, just also, a couple of people asking about the code 60 fueling rules. They have changed this year heard the guys talking about it earlier on just to reiterate if the fuel hose is on the car then you can take full fuel when the code 60 comes out if it is not then you have to take half even if you're already in the pit lane so it is absolutely it's trying to just sort out the vagaries of where people are on the track so when the code 60 comes out if the fuel hose is not on the car, regardless of where you are on the track, effectively, whether you're in the pit lane or not, then you can only have half. If you are in there and being fueled and you've started fueling, then that's fine. You can have full fuel. Let's check in with that pit stop. Left rear was where the problem was, Diana, on uh, that Audi with the smokiness coming down the hill. What can you tell us? Hello, Dyke. Uh, it looks like we've got a, a reception error. Oh, there we go. Uh, hello, Di. Try again. OK, I've moved away from that area. Maybe that makes it better. Yeah, I'm not with the Audi, John. John I'm with, with the, the Haas. Haas. 
21 car that's just come in. They took a, a, a penalty in the penalty box and then they've come up here, but they've had lots of challenges. They've done a driver change and um, Frederick Gavac has got back in to that car, but the car's still sitting here in the pit lane at the moment. They're doing some checks at the rear end and around the front. I did ask the team manager earlier because the car has been in a couple of times and they are just checking everything on that car after yesterday's incident. The Audi, I'm not seeing yet, but I'll run up to the other end of the pit lane to see what I can find out. Thanks, Di. I think I got, I think I confused you there because it was indeed the Haas RT car that uh, we needed to find out about. So thank you for that. And I think it's uh, something a wee bit more severe. Oh, actually, they've dropped it off the, the Jackson. It's back into action there. They were looking at the left rear, though, Nick, when it came in, and that's where all the smoke came out of. That's mm. a bit of a worry. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not quite sure whether, you know, perhaps a, a long way into the into the run, or perhaps it'd be, he'd had he'd flat spotted it prior to that, but it did seem like a, a big lock-up for just a let's put a tire on and send the car again, to be honest. But, you know, we are not, we are not the mechanic. We've not got all the information, but sometimes I think that didn't seem, as you pointed out, John, didn't seem just like a, a innocent, innocent, innocent a big lock-up. Just before we do um, a quick update for you, this to RSL, at RSL underscore studio. Um, if I come back to that in just a moment. That's a couple of seconds ago. The Lamborghini of Lightbook Motorsport, which has got Jean-Francois on the, on the on board, into the gravel. Gravel much closer to the side of the circuit now than it has been in recent years. Um, Evergence has said, Quick question for you guys, seeing a few Audis in the 12 hours of Spa this weekend, they were first, second and third on the grid um, in quali after qualifying. It's got me wondering about the rumours of Audi ending their entire customer racing programme to focus on F1. If this happens, what can the teams that run with Audis do with the cars? Well, the car, the, the big issue, you use the, the right word there, rumours, because there's nothing official from Audi. And Nick, you talked to Chris Renke, head of Audi Sport recently, um, on the grid and he was saying look we're still supporting our customers I think the start of these rumours has come because the Audi R8 and the uh, is likely not to be replaced as a road car as Porsche Black Falcon number 920 has gone around at the end of the lap Norbert Schneider at the wheel of that car and that's got lots of rumours going but at the end of a car's production life the homologation continues and Chris was pretty insistent to you uh, Nick, that they would continue to support customers whilst there were customers. And yes, I've seen those stories, and I urge everybody to read them again. They're not from reputable um, places, to be honest. They're not with, from places that have got very good, a couple of them in particular have not got very good um, backstories. Uh, back and there's a lot of mites and coulds and mares in that. And I, I think. I'd prefer to find out from Chris Renke exactly what's going on. So the next time we see him at a track, and, and from the customers as well, who have clearly supported that for a lot of years. All right, let's uh, go and find out what it's like on the track. Elliot Earhart is down uh, with Diana. I'm still with Haas Racing, actually. The number 21, Olivia Bertels, is with me. He's just jumped out of the car. I think we were hearing about the pit stop. We didn't see it on, on visuals. Um, we, were, we were discussing whether there was any issues with the car when you came in to drive a change there. What can you tell us? Um, the, in the last lap, we had some uh, problems with the ABS. So um, the stint went very well. But at the end, we had a problem with the ABS. We had a really bad uh, flat spot, so the car was shaking, shaking like, so yeah. So it's important, I know, I talked to the team manager earlier and he said to get the car, keeping the car going out on track just to learn and check everything is very important for you all? Um, yeah, we, we are learning, we learn today, we don't do anything for points or a place, but we're uh, learning the car, we're learning the track, some issues, so... And what are the conditions like out on the track? As we stand here in the pit lane now, it's been really hot, but it's, the wind has just picked up. It's much cooler now. Uh, today it's much cooler than yesterday. And for me, 
Yesterday there were uh, very tricky conditions on track, but today I think the track is uh, less good than yesterday because I don't know, it's, maybe it's colder, it's more windy. Well, I'll let you um, get back to the team, Olivier. Thank you. Thank you. Tells you just how noisy it is down in pit lane that Olivia Bartel sounded like Elliot Earhart in my, in my ears <laughs> from Die. Sorry, Die, entirely uh, my fault. Uh, that Herbert Motorsport lead by a minute and 24. That's gone up by about 10 seconds in the last hour. Gradually easing away from the green. Audi in second. Santa Locke Jr. team. Erwin Bastard behind the wheel of that car. Two hours and 55 minutes to go. And the top four are all GT3 cars. Then it's the first of the 992s. Red Hot Racing swapping with the 909 of Red Camel Racing. Now that's interesting. That car's back in the pits again. And that was in, as I remember, not that long ago, well, not that long ago, but certainly since I came to the mic. So, yeah, that was only an 11 lap stint from Evo Broikers. So, my rattled old brain doesn't deceive me. And that car is not in the pit lane, it's in the garage. Evo Broikers, open faced helmet in the car at the moment, still aboard the car. It's been pushed backwards into the garage. What I can't see is what is being attended to there on that car. So, really dramatic turnaround in that great battle that we were having in 992, well inside the top 10. And at the moment, it's gone towards Red Ant Racing. Now, the GT4, the green and black GT4 AMG has had a grassy moment. That's the 418 car for PCR Sport. Jasse Kleichberg, seventh in GT4, as JP and the McLaren, JP Motorsport and McLaren, into the pit lane. And that is out of fourth position for Patrick Krupinski. Now, that is spot on time, I think. Let's just have a quick look there at the... 69, 26 laps, that's all right. There was a short stint before Drapinski got back into the car. That car has done a 28 lap stint, but there was a little bit of full course purple in that. So that was an hour and three minutes. There was a 13 lap stint before that. But that car still in with half a shout, certainly with a shout at the podium, only a minute behind Heart of Racing for third spot. As Herbeth Motorsport, for a moment on the timing screen, are a full lap ahead, but it's because we're waiting for Santa Lock Racing a junior team to come across the line. They are, in fact, about a minute and 24, 25 seconds between those two cars. In the second half of this race, just under half of the race today still to go so into the last quarter if you will Shane Lewis aboard the red white and blue AMG CP Racing ninth position in GT3 for that car what great supporters of this championship there have been and just gone past the leading or past one of the BMW should I say it That was not a passive position, of course. At RSL underscore studio, if you want to get in touch, good morning to Tom Marshallak in Ohio. I know that Jerry Z was up with the fact before the crack of dawn in Florida to tune in today as well. Ian McCarthy. Also, hello to DJ Crusher, Irwin. Thanks for your comments as well as Alan Prosser, who was up doing all the breakfasts this morning. I'm very tempted now. Pack a tent, stay overnight. 
Another big lot up coming down the hill. This time for BMW 411 right outside the university. In TCE, we haven't mentioned the second part of this race for a wee while, so let's do that. TCR and Holmgard Motorsport with Roy Edland behind the wheel of the Leon competition, the red, white and black car. He leads first in that part of the race and first in the class. This is the Sonax sponsored car in the new version of that uh, Cooper Leon competition. Second place is Wolf Power and Yasmin Thrysig back behind the wheel of their Audi. That is the 121. We've got an intervention vehicle in the pit lane. That's very unusual. Following in a BMW. Ah, because it's got a. I think it's. Is it a brake fire or is it just a tyre off the rim on the left rear? It's one of the BMW M2s right at the end of the Grand Prix pit lane and they've followed that car in what great safety procedures there. Brilliant stuff. As Norbert Seedler returns to the track for GP, he's just got into the 69. The gold and black McLaren. Let's take an update from Diana. She's made her way down to the 909 Red Camel Porsche 992. I'm being told by the team that they think it's a steering uh, issue, uh, suspension issue, so they're just checking it all out, but they're not 100% sure, which is why they're working around the front of the car. Um, but I've just also ran out of the pit lane, John, up to the top where you said these safety rescue vehicles here and uh, nearly at that BMW and I think uh, yeah everything's under control now I think Seb's up there with the camera so whatever's happened has I've missed it by a few never run in the pit lane time never um, it's gonna go it's on the dolly track jacks the trolley jacks to go back in or the go jacks as they're often called it'll go back into the pit lane they're right at the end of the formula one pits the refuel by the way if you are just joining us today is in the what are now called the endurance pits the old pits on the downhill towards or rouge absolute nightmare to work in as joe bradley will attest because unlike donington where there's a little bit of flat surface outside each of the pit garages and then are we almost a uh, a drop down almost like a little curb um, it's actually on a downhill so you've always got to chop the wheels of the car Joe haven't you when you're working in those endurance bits even worse with loose wheels waiting for your car of course oh good leave, point leave go your loose wheel it's off mate it's off and running and you <laughs> said you pick it up at the bottom of all rouge <laughs> never never run in the pit lane unless a you're being chased or you're chasing an errant wheel that's rolled away we'll quickly pick up speed as well don't I've seen that now and again it hasn't happened to us um, and plus the, the garages, I mean, the, the, those garages, the, the original pit lane uh, that we used first in, I think, the 60s, may even been earlier than that, they are tiny, narrow. I mean, I, you know, we, we see cars in there, GT3 spec cars in there and, and the like, but uh, you've got very little room to work from there. It's, um, they are a heritage pit, though, that, so we hang on to them. Yes. Doesn't that just tell you how small the cars used to be formula one cars and sports yeah, cars of the days used to be ah now rolling on the pit lane and coming into the 40 kilometer an hour area that goes down to fueling uh, then it goes down to walking pace five kilometers an hour in the pit in the refueling area itself 909 red camel so whatever was ailing that car it was battling for the lead remember and we've got the leader in the pit lane as well brought in by Robert Renau this is a different type of Porsche the GT3R the 992 type machine whatever was ailing Red Camel and the Breiters family outing then that steering stroke suspension issue looks to have been cleared the steering wheel wasn't straight when it was sitting in the garage but I didn't really take much attention to that as Evo was still in the car I thought they might have just been working around the front end and it didn't really matter but maybe that was because they were doing something with the steering arm replacing the steering arm and making sure it was all set back up again 
We didn't see what and was the cause of that as well, did we, John? No, we no. Didn't see that in Put, the cause. It was the eleven, only an eleven lap stint, and it's dropped them from battling for the yeah. lead in nine nine two down to fifth. Um, and in fact, HRT Performance and Amadeo Pampinini, along with um, PK Carsport, um, are right or will be right on the tailpipes of Evo when he comes back out. Now, the good news is they won't need a huge amount of fuel because they've only had to put 11... Uh, um, they've only used 11 laps worth since the last time, so they'll probably now fill it all the way to the top. In fact, that's what they are doing. And Evo now will go till the end of his two hours, I'd suspect, unless there's a full-course purple in the meantime. Oh, you talk about a Porsche, and then it gets dropped. The GTX car. This is the 718, the green and red car we were waxing about earlier on. Driven by God, has just looped it, coming out of the final part of the last chicane onto the front straight. Georg, what are you thinking about? And that, again, was too much kerb on the left-hand side and too much right foot, but no harm, no foul. Fourth in GTX for the 911 Elf Racing dark green car no harm no foul though regained his composure never a nice position to be in is it facing the opposite direction to where you should be and having the the whole field coming at you managed to compose himself and get that car round we've just had the heart of racing mercedes just move off its pit box ian james was the driver that brought that car in not quite sure whether there was a driver change there, we'll check that out when it goes out of the fueling area, but it will maybe be making its way down to the fueling area, joining the overall leader, Robert Renauer, in the Herbeth car. Who's already down there in that, you mentioned there, John, the very steeply inclined, or Bruce is back, uh, the steeply inclined pit lane where we're having our refueling station. I think it's a great idea from the organisers to actually have the fueling station there. You get the get the feeling. Let's head down to Diana Binks, who had some information on the 27 stop. Di? You were, you were talking there, Joe, if there was a driver change, but there wasn't. I'm at the garage now, so no driver change for that one. Well, that goes to prove how fast Diana can move from pit out to pit in, pretty much, up and down the pit lane. What's never really appreciated until you've worked a pit, as a pit lane interviewer is the sheer distance you have to cover. And it's uh, always entertaining if the other person in the pit suddenly has to go the opposite end of their beats. I've enjoyed over the years working with uh, Nick Damon at Le Mans in particular. You hope your end is busy, but it's, you've still got to shuttle from the middle to the far end, and uh, a lot of shoe leather is worn. So, right, while we were away... Uh, Joe and I had a quick lunch break, but Herbeth Motorsport, with some exceptionally good lapping with Lauren Heinrich, really propelled them to the front of the field. Ian James stayed on board the Heart of Racing Mercedes in second place, as uh, Diana just explained. Paul Everard still pressing on in that uh, Santa Lock Junior Team Audi, but with what have we got left on the clock? Two hours, 40 minutes, and a little bit more, plus one more lap, really, one bonus lap beyond the two hours, 40 minutes. It's pretty much time uh, for some of the top crews to be putting their top drivers back in, and uh, one driver in particular is still being saved for the closure of this race. The final two hours, and we think about 20 minutes, that'd be Roman De Angelis being put aboard later in the next 25 minutes or so, perhaps to take over the heart of racing team, Mercedes. Actually, that's said and done. If they've just made a pit stop, now he's not going to be in for no. another hour but right. uh, the canadian race has showed what he could do and the fastest lap of the race was a two minute 21 well second lap and he, he did quite a few of those the maximum stint cut stint time you can do bruce is two hours oh yeah okay of um, course at any one point and then you've got to then rest for half of that half of the amount of time that you've done uh with two hours 41 they're probably going to time that to put roman in past that two hour mark he's not going to be able to go two hours of course he's going to need to refuel but you could sort of plug him in and let him take the car to the finish and then you're kind of optimizing your run to the check and flag with that young driver in there but um green newell and ian james have done a cracking job that car's never been out of contention and you know into and out of the pits whether it hangs on to that second place i pretty much uh, expected to do that because the cars around it have also pit stopped. Yeah, for people who didn't join us for the first six hours of the Spa 12 hours, which was run yesterday, 
there was quite a lot of incident, and there's certainly the conditions were seldom the same for whether rain or track conditions for more than about two laps at a time. Today, though, we were forecast actually fairly heavy rain for around one o'clock. Well, it's not one o'clock anymore. It's moved on past. They're getting towards two o'clock local time in Spa-Francorchamps. And although we still have grey sky, we've had a little flurry of rain earlier, but not, not almost enough to hit the ground. Uh, things are looking quite good for the crews to run a more balanced conclusion to the 12 hours. As we say, two hours, 40 minutes remaining in this race. Of course, all crews always at Spa look to the skies, but maybe if they can have it dry to the finish, that would be a big advantage for some of the teams. Well, they can settle down the running order. A lot of them were saving their best drivers to cope with the heavy rain when it came. It hasn't as yet. And it was forecast for 1pm. Well, it's 1.50 now uh, to be pedantic. It's 1.49 and 43 seconds. Um, and the rain is... You know what the thing is, though? I've, I did notice it's a lot warmer now than it has been. Now, that's great. That's great if you're sitting in the stands, get your T-shirt on. However... With that increase, that rapid increase in ambient temperature, that can cause a build-up of precipitation. And when that gets to an extent, that's what causes the rain effectively. So, you know, all right, the forecast said one o'clock, but it's not an exact science in weather forecasting, is it? Um, we mentioned the 909 car, and uh, John Eindhoff and I, who was uh, in earlier, were kind of speculating as to what the problem was. John was on the nose, and it was a steering issue broken steering I've just had that from uh, the team there uh, so it was in broken steering he noticed that the steering wheel was off to the side and um, so that is now rectified and that car now on a bit of a recovery run now the 909 it was in contention it did lead the 992 class however it's dropped four laps off the leading 992 car which is if you stay with me the 903 currently fifth overall would you believe 190 laps completed, the 909 is on 185 laps, so that's flip-flopping between four and five laps down. And, and, and again, that's a very, very impressive run, considering that the race leading Herbert Motorsport Porter, the black one, car number, number 91, is only two laps further up the road. 192 laps completed, about to be 193. Daniel Alleman not long in that car, and that means today alone, the 91 Herbert Motorsport car, started by Alfred Renauer, handed to Lauren Heinrich, on to Robert Renauer, and now Daniel Alleman has grabbed the keys and hopped aboard. So uh, good that they're rotating, through, cycling through their cluster of drivers, sitting on a margin of advantage over Paul Evra, just waiting for Paul in the Santa Lock. Easy to spot. Audi, bright, bright green. He's in second place. Third place is Ian James. Norbert Seedler catching... Catching the pair of them, but most notably catching Ian James at the moment in the JP Motorsport McLaren. Long views out over the circuit afford views of the sky rather than just clouds, so maybe that one o'clock storm that missed one o'clock will miss two o'clock as well, but we know as, uh, from experience of being at Spa-Francorchamps, the rain can come in very quickly and not uniformly, but at the moment, I think the team's non-rain dance has worked wonders. The whole guard car continues to circulate, Roy Edland now at the wheel of the number 102 that continues to lead the TCE the touring car endurance part of this 12 hours of spa it's currently class leader TCR class leading the way in TCE uh, the second place car the Audi RS3 Yasmin Preissig sharing that car with just one teammate Ibis Vallas Yasmin uh, at the wheel of the 121 and they have completed 178 laps to 179, so that's remained pretty uh, static. That gap between our TCE runners, just on the just under two laps, to be exact. And there is that Holmgard car just going into Lacombe, and just ahead of it on the road is the Pricing Audi. So about to put two laps on the Pricing Audi. So the Holmgard Motorsport Cupra catching second place Audi RS3 of Wolf Power Racing to put another lap, put that car another lap behind it, so that'll be a very, that's a very strong lead for the home guard car. One thing that was a, a big big feature yesterday was uh, towards the end of the first six hours of this 12 hours, uh, quite a few crews accrued penalties and a lot of them served it at the first instant in today's race when there was a code 60 thrown when we had a car crashing at the very end of the opening lap of today's part of the race. In they came. The seven, sorry, the nine onto 11 racing 
number 719 Porsche from GTX from fourth place in class has just been one of those to serve but uh, of course a lot of penalties are accrued over time and as we get deeper into these races Joe always there is a flurry of penalty notices on one of the timing screens and it's a very long long list in fact just looking over your shoulder it must be at least 30 oh, penalties yeah. on your screen alone and then you scroll down 120 150 good grief is there a team that hasn't had a penalty I think <laughs> the, not you said good grief when you saw me scrolling on my pad there didn't you it's like it's like it's a constant really and especially I think Spa is probably one of the worst t tracks to lull drivers to pull drivers uh, for those track limits infri infringements because the nature of the track and the, the nature of race driving all about keeping that momentum uh, exiting the corner and keeping the speed up and using all of that runoff the runoff where there are massive expanses of tarmac and and outside of the curb the out curbing there is tarmac rather than gravel and it's also really, really, it seems annoying to you if you're called in to serve a penalty that's largely been earned by one of your teammates, but you go out and fight together. Car 71, the remaining due to racing Audi from the Lithuanian team, having uh, front left corner repairs yet again. This actually got damaged right at the start of yesterday's race and was patched up and patched up. And it actually, when the weather conditions became really foul and we were relying on headlights, it only had one that could show because the uh, front left wing absolutely mangled and covered in tape. And even now, deep into the second half of this 12-hour race, the repairs still go on. And uh, 71 just brought in by Yevgen Sovoloski from 12th place overall, 8th overall in GT3, GT3 overall, and that puts it 1, 2, 3, 4th position in GT3 Amps. So they're having good run due to racing, but uh, again, nursing those repairs. If you're just joining us for the latter stages of the, of the weekend here for the 12 hours of Spa, and you're wondering how are the Haas RT team, the team, uh, are doing after winning Mugello, third uh, step of the podium at Abu Dhabi, well, you'll notice the big 039 digital board on that windscreen of that car. And 39 spot overall is what that board says. How many laps have they got on the board? The race leader is at 194. So, um, I have to look way, way down the hole to see if I can find him. Fred Mavish is at the wheel of the car. And I'm struggling to find him, actually. Uh, 39th. So oh, down. there he is. There he is. 45th, actually. 45th. Okay. And, and how many laps he negotiated? He's done 140 laps. Okay. He's 55 laps down on the race leader. So more than 25%. We may need to explain why. That's not just a performance issue, was it? <laughs> uh, we had a bit of a, a, a myriad of, uh, of nightmarish issues with car. Uh, being damaged quite extensively, and the car lost a, a, a just over two hours in the pits yesterday, put them out of contention. Uh, the team have resigned themselves to yeah, putting some miles, getting the drivers uh, some miles in the car, and Haas RT uh, live to fight another day. So they've had, a, they've had a good run today, completely out of it, completely in another race. But um, Kim here leading the European Championship after one round, and the 21 Audi, as I speak about it, comes into the pits. Fred Vavish at the wheel. They're treating it as a test session. And I'm wondering if they're going to be, you know, accruing data on how the tyre wear uh, sort of uh, affects the car, um, whether or not they've got issues with the car. You know, they can find out or learn all sorts of things about running that Audi R8. They've got a very ex experienced team of mechanics and engineers around them. Krista Donka is the man on the pit board there, chief engineer and team manager right-hand man of team principal Sandrine Haas who has resigned herself and I can see Binksy lurking in the background there of the Haas RT team uh, they're treating this as a bit of a test session aren't they Di? Yes uh, they are but the car and, looks and like also they're just treble checking everything on the car um, they, each time it comes in they, they, they said earlier that they wanted to give confidence back to the drivers so they were checking um, but do you know where the, the vents are on the side of this car, Joe? I saw the team just sort of tightening those up. So whether that maybe come loose at all, I don't know. But I saw him That's, tightening them. That, that is the inner wheel arch that has come loose. That's probably as uh -huh. a result of the damage that the car incurred. Um, and that's flapping around. That'll be coming into contact with the, the tyre and, and not, much, not causing it a massive amount of problem, but there'll be something that they'll... 
want to rectify. But it's also, Joe, when a car has been rattled up the barriers at no lesser corner than um, Radion, things really do shake loose. And it might have been fine when it was fixed last night, but today, going over a few more curves would have loosened it. But the, the effect of a wheel arch liner being loose just starts to spook a driver, doesn't it? You, you can just start to sense a bit of vibration, a bit of almost air movement sometimes. And uh, so far better. But to see mechanics not in a race, but able to go and do as exactly Dai said, treble check things, that's a luxury. Isn't it? <laughs> well, you never get a chance to do that in a race, and and, then, and again, it's it's you you know you you may as well uh, treat it as a test session. It's it's mileage for the drivers. They've come here to drive the race car around Spa. They can still do that. The car's going. So yes, I can I can understand the the spirit of of wanting to keep the car out there. Now down in the pits uh, <laughs> from third place in the Porsche class. Also, uh, the second and third both in the pits. 904 from Red Ant Racing and the 955 from Willie Motorsport, Nick. Well, yes, but I don't know what came off the back of it. I think it was mainly a, a vast amount of dust, but they have literally just tried to kill me. Um, you know, I, I'll be suing them for the uh, ingress of carbon fibre. I'm sure at this point I've got le I've got less than 50 years to live now. I can tell that's happened. Um, yes, yeah, a very fast service. Uh, Simon de Castro is out of the car, um, and I forget. Let's get a quick word with him. How was that? St how was that stint? Oh yes, all uh, good. Uh, the problem for start. Uh, my my. Um, other driver make a spin, but no problem. Push very hard. Good. Now I make um, two, three, distinct push to fight to win. Uh, when you push hard, uh, sometimes wrong and go in track limit, but other 992 make the same problem. Uh, is a race. Yeah, when you're really going for it, it's hard not to go those couple of inches over, isn't it? Uh, it's hard just to go outside the track limits. Ah, track limit, yes, because when you push and you stay in the, uh, near the GT3 or the other GT3 cup, uh, you have a problem for the wing. Uh, don't have a, a good downforce, and when the tire uh, go down, uh, it's difficult. Great stuff, thank you very much indeed. My five car. Yeah, they're having a bit of a, a mix. They're in a proper uh, endurance race, aren't they? The, 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 they've, they've been up there, they've sort of been at the, certainly on the podium position, then they've had incident on track, they've had dramas, they've had situations to overcome, and, uh, you know, still still plodding on, though, still getting on with it, and they're currently third. So that pit stop will maybe will drop them just behind the 930 car. And we still continue. Martin at the wheel of that car, Shinji Z, to give the driver his full title, known as Martin. Uh, the HRT Performance Porsche, currently in fourth, may go to second now. We've seen that car lead that 992 class. OK, Joe, so here we are with uh, just under two and a half hours remaining, and we've got the 904 Red Ant Racing Porsche coming in from second in the 992 Cup class. Sabino de Castro, 955, Willie Motorsport. We've just heard from him when he got out of the car, came in from third, but effectively half a stint behind them, because with nearly 35... Uh, minutes on the board is Shinji Shi, but we're working towards the end of the race. They're clearly approaching it differently. We often talk about teams counting back from the end when we get towards the end of the race, but you know, when you're half a stint different, it can really make a change. Obviously, what they want to do is get as much of Adam Chris and Dulu time in, in that number uh, 930, but Save, the, it's a different way of doing it. Saving the biggest bullet for their gun for the end for the mm. last time they pull the trigger, which is kind of what we're seeing, the exactly what we're seeing, the heart of racing. Uh, by SBS Mercedes do Ian James and and and, um, and Grignol doing the heart the, the stint of the heart of the stint of the work that's gone on since the start of this race yesterday. Grignol um, did a, a sterling share of the stint with Ian James. Ron DeAngelis had what I think he did about 42 minutes this morning. Yeah, he said it was just over 40 minutes or 40 minutes thereabouts. We'll yeah. we'll take his word for that. They've unplugged him, put him back in his cage, and then they're probably going to unleash him. And we're getting close to that time, 26 minutes to go before we announce the final two hours of the Spa 12 hours. So 10 hours of racing will be the timeline we click by in about 26 minutes, and that is exactly what we're seeing. Bruce, we're seeing teams beginning to look towards the, those, that final stint, that final run to the flag. 
And what we've got at the moment, the race is being led by the Herbeth Motorsport Porsche car number 91. Paul Everard in second place, uh, one minute and 17 seconds behind. They're both very early in their stints, so they've just been out over a quarter of an hour. But the car in third place, the number 27 Heart of Racing Mercedes, that is oh, has just topped an hour in the stint. So they'll be running again almost like an opposite stint pattern yeah, yeah. for them. So they'll be the first of that group to come in. The second in that group will be the car in fourth place, but that's only got 23 minutes into this stint. That's Norbert Seidler, who bit by bit, lap by lap, is taking uh, seconds out of Ian James. And it, it sort of ebbs and flows, that one, but the, the motion of travel, when we took uh, a moment to dive out of the commentary box and get lunch about an hour and 20 minutes ago, the gap between Ian James's Mercedes and JP Motorsport with uh, now with Norbert Seeder on board in the McLaren. It was about 1 minute 50 seconds, and it's now down to far, far less than that. So the pace is there with the McLaren, but they're still just playing catch-up. Yeah, they are. And the Herbeth car have done a Herbeth again, haven't they? They've uh, maybe taken a little bit more time to do a Herbeth. What do I mean by that? Well, you kind of get a run from the Herbeth Motorsport Porsche team where all of a sudden it will present itself in front of the field and then you will see it just consolidate that lead, and certainly that's what we're seeing now. Daniel Alleman has just taken over the 91 Porsche from Robert Renauer, and Daniel now um, lapping... Uh, I'm not even going to consider that lap time, because he's just... Uh, I think he's just on his second flying lap past the pits, actually. Um, 1 minute 12 is the gap to the second-place car, which is the number 26, Paul Everard, at the wheel of the Santa Log Junior Audi, and then just behind them is the heart of racing by SPS. The Mercedes of Ian James, he continues to lap 2.25, Ian James last lap by, 2.24 for Paul Everard in the Sonoma car. The CP Racing Mercedes was delayed somewhat by a problem that I'm not sure I've seen very often, Bruce. We had the fuel pouring out of the filler um, and, and, well, pouring, uh, sucked out, I think, was uh, what we saw. A little bit of pouring. It was mainly through left-handers, but the airflow of the car, sucking and spraying fuel out, that car lost a bit of time for that fuel filler to be to be sorted. I'm not sure, and uh, it's Nick down in the pits now, isn't it? Nick might be able to find out the next time the car comes in um, whether or not they've rectified that car, because what we saw was a bit of a, what I would call a bit of a bodge job bit of gaffer tape, I think they used the top, the plastic top, of an aerosol can where they they basically taped that on. And that's Nick Nintelos. Do you have you seen Well, I was having a spot of lunch a few minutes ago and I was chatting to Charles Putnam. Charles Putnam said, Oh thanks by the way, we hadn't noticed it when he came to interview us. They, oh, they really? hadn't noticed the problem. Uh, and the fix they've got is the fix they'll carry on using. Uh, because otherwise they have to dismantle and rebuild yeah. the uh, fuel filler, which would take too long, whereas it's only costing them a few seconds each pit stop now to put on this kind of uh, pressure closer, which in fact is the lid of a spray can, but take down, which makes that uh, closing effective on that uh, quick fill uh, filler. Yeah, I th you know what, Nick, I thought that when you were talking to Charlie Pumpman, and he was saying, oh, it's just the stain off the bit of fuel residue. He, the, the team hadn't seen that. And I think you and I speculated there, didn't we, Bruce? We said, well, the team have got their head buried in the data screens and the timing screens. They're not watching the stream like we are and like the fans are, so they wouldn't have seen that. They didn't, and they, they wouldn't have seen it passing the pits. Well, thanks very much. The harbinger of doom, as we call Nick Damon, <laughs> down in the pit, but it really was a helping hand. But we spotted it late in yesterday's race when the, the rain had uh, cleared enough for us to see it. So it's a problem then. They weren't aware of it, didn't see it. The officials didn't pick up on it, but there was that message today on the screen to uh, do something about it, and something has been done. But it did drop the CP Racing Mercedes down to about 15th position. It's back into 10th. It's uh, looking at the uh, best part of five laps down on Daniel Alleman's car. So it started the day a lap down, and it's ended up five laps down. It's cost them big time, but they press on in the way that CP Racing does. Their next target is about three minutes up the track. In fact, they'll close in, because the next target, the number 34 Land Motorsport Audi, that's the white and blue one, is in the pits at the moment. And let's not forget, that is a, the next car ahead of it is on the third step of the GT3 and podium. So Shane Lewis, Charlie Putman, Charles Espelade, they want to spray, they like spraying champagne at the end of these 24 series races. So uh, that's what we'll be targeting now. It's a full service for the land number 34, the uh, Kirchhoff Group 
uh, Audi R8, the least troubled of three relatively troubled cars in that land pit. Um, that'll teach anyone to listen to Joe Bradley at breakfast or before a race starts. Um, you don't want the wish of luck from Joe. Uh, this car is back up to ninth place overall. Uh, Dr. Johannes Kirchhoff has got out. I think from the size of the person getting in, I'm guessing it's Tim Vogler because uh, Max Edelhoff is not the uh, most, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, lofty. Lofty is an excellent word. A word straight out of Adolf Hotman as well. Uh, lovely boy he is, shoulders back, but uh, he's not that tall. Very good, Nick. Very good down in the pit lane. Keep those TV references coming. They all go over my head, I'm afraid. Right, 200 laps on the board. Daniel Alleman leads by... Well, we'll wait for the next car to come through. It'd be about a minute and 12 seconds, I think, from Paul Everard. So the Herbert Motorsport Porsche. When the Audis were super strong in the early stages yesterday, you thought, well, who else is going to come and play? Now the top Audi is in second place, but it's the remaining Audi, because the next one is Johannes Kirchhoff's car in the pits at the moment, down in ninth place. And as Nick was mentioning, Land Motorsport had the problems, Haas RT had their problems, yeah. and so it went and, on. And, and the thing is, Bruce, that 34 Land Audi, that now makes its way down to fueling. That car, the least of the Land Motorsport problems, but a big problem later on, very, very late in the first six-hour segment yesterday, the, uh, the plug in the gearbox where you check the level of oil in the gearbox popped out. Now that's on a thread, it's not just push fit, that's on a thread. I mean, it, how, how does that even happen? And it came after, what, five hours, 40 minutes or so of, of going round and round? That's yeah, bizarre. They, they were just, the number 34 car was on the cusp of being a lap down. It was fifth, sixth place, I think sixth place at the time, or maybe seventh, but anyhow, it was thereabouts, but then into the pits. We weren't even sure if, if it was going to get out before the chequered flag right, came yeah. down at the end of the first six hours. It, they did scramble it back out with about 10 minutes to go, but obviously that costed an awful lot of time. Yeah, so bad look all around for all of the cars here with land. They've had uh, their share of season share of bad luck here. Talking of bad luck, Abel Boykers continues in the Red Camel's car, back up to sixth now, and circulating after that steering issue that car had. That car was certainly in contention for overall honours. That is the property at the moment of the number 903, the Red Ant Racing Porsche of... Ayrton Redon, currently in fifth place overall, cracking run, 198 laps completed, and I think it might have just turned a lap ahead of the 930 in second place, the HRT performance car. Yeah, and the, the difference is that the HRT performance car will have another sort of 20 minutes in its run after Ayrton Redon brings the 903 class in. Uh, Porsche Cup class car oh, into right, so the pits. That's flip -flop, is it? it, it oh, may right, do. That's what we're seeing, It'll yeah. sort of close the gap back yeah. up again, but obviously yeah. we have to count back from the end of six hours, which will be at six, th sorry, four thirty local time. That's Bar Frank and Sean. When we will have added six hours to the yesterday's six hours, and who's going to come out on top at the moment? I can tell you, Daniel Alleman is leading by a minute and a quarter or thereabouts. Paul Everard, some laps is closing in a little bit. Uh, in the 26 Santa Lot Racing Audi, but uh, at the moment that rate of gain isn't enough. And also knowing just who Herbert Motorsport have still to play. I, I reckon we may have some more time from Lauren Heinrich. We may not, but uh, certainly he's been very quick. He's been the fastest driver all weekend out there, along, of course, with the driver who's taken the fastest lap of the race, which is uh, Roman De Angelis in the 27 Heart of Racing. Mercedes, one minute, sorry, two minutes, 21.0 seconds. That was the best lap of the race. Alan Pross has just, um, just noticed some very, very hard driving there, some lurid driving from the 909 Porsche of Evil Breakers. Car squirming in the corners after that. Is the rain starting? I think it's more of carrying too much speed into the corners from Evil. Evil's on a bit of a recovery run. We haven't got any sign of windscreen wipers. We haven't had any reports regarding any kind of rain. And none of the other cars, Alan, seem to be being driven with as much aplomb as perhaps Evil Breakers. Yeah, having... Let's just wind the clock back about a week and a half. Eva had a burst appendix. They yeah. fixed him up. They gave him a choice of, uh, could we definitely fix it or should we uh, possibly partially? And he, he went for the, the sort of partially because I'm more likely to go back racing soon. But as they took the specialist told him, if you wake up and still tube sticking out of you, you're not going racing. But Evo 
woke up, there were no tubes, he's come racing, and then to have that steering issue that happened about uh, well, 45 minutes ago, he's just playing catch-up, and I saw that moment too, Alan, it was a mighty squirm and definitely carrying too much speed down into Bruxelles, the tail wanting to, uh, the dog, the tail wanting to wag the dog, I think we should say, but uh, good dog handler, Evo. Rear end just giving up the ghost as uh, Evo pushed on, gathering momentum. The McLaren, that started in 40th place, that's currently in fourth place. But it's only four and a bit yeah. seconds down on Ian James, is catching about a second, a second and a half a lap, so we could have that change for position. Look at the lap time though, Bruce. 24-4 uh, for the McLaren, 25-7. That's how slowly that gap is coming. We're soon not going to need a stopwatch as the heart of racing Mercedes goes into Lacombe joined very shortly by the McLaren, who turns right into Lacombe as well, through the left. And what is going to happen? I reckon Ian James is about to bring that Mercedes in to make a pit stop. He's an hour and 11 minutes into his stint. And I think if we, we're not quite counting back as yet, we've got two and a quarter hours to go. We're still waiting for the Roma de Angelis issue. We may yet get another stint from Gray Newell as a buffer between now and the, the final couple of hours uh, for yeah. Roman. We'll we're see. Actually, we're actually still 15 minutes away from that two hour window, aren't we? So I'm wondering, I think we've had Ian James in that Mercedes already in for fuel. So that may be, he may have done one hour and 11, but that's not one hour and 11 of fuel. I think he's been in for a top up, maybe to stretch that another 15 minutes. That's, that's going to be a one to watch there. Meanwhile, within that 15 minutes, we are going to have the McLaren closing down that gap. 4.2 seconds, the gap last time by. I can offer you another gap to consider at this point in the race, two and a quarter hours remaining for a long time in the GTX class. Sitting normally in about 16th position has been the VDS Racing Adventures Mark car. Raphael van der Straten is at the wheel at the moment, but the gap is only a lap now over the rivals. It was a lap early, fairly early in yesterday's race, but uh, Nicola Michelon's just taken over not so well 50 minutes ago. The RD signs. Uh, our Lamborghini, that's car 720, and is closing in. But uh, what we do know is the fact that Nathan Van Springle, who was so impressive yesterday in the 758 Mark car, he's probably going to close out the race. And he hadn't driven that car before, hadn't driven any type of car like that before, hadn't driven it in the wet at Spa, and yet was so strong. So certainly for VDS Racing Adventures, if Raphael van der Straten of the van der Straten VDS family can keep pressing on for now, the quick guy's coming in at the end. He, and as someone said yesterday, he looked too young to be handling 630 horsepower and did it supremely well. So just remember the name, Nathan yeah. Van Springle. Near, uh, keep a note of that. Jot it down now, everybody. Grab a pen, grab a notepad, jot that down. You're going to see a lot more of that. You man, he was absolutely outstanding in that car in yesterday's atrocious weather conditions. And it wasn't just consistently atrocious. It was wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, really wet, damp, dry. It was, they had everything thrown at them. Well, they did, and we were talking about this yesterday, Joe, that you could, if you just about thought, I braked a little too early for that corner, that could have gone yeah. a bit deeper. There was no point trying to even do it at the advance point because it would have changed by the following lap. So for right. a young driver, driving a car with 630 horse and not a lot of bodywork, you know, that was really, really impressive. In fact, Overall, the standards were really high. We didn't have many spins. We might have had a few moments when the tail went a bit loose on some of the some of the cars, a few saves at Radion, but the provocation was there, and we could have expected way, way more. So, you know, job very well done by a lot of the drivers out there. That Mercedes-McLaren battle continues. The heart of racing Mercedes in, in third place, still battling with the McLaren of JP Motorsport in fourth at 225-203 for the Mercedes last time by 225 254 so literally thousands of a second difference with the McLaren losing out to Ian James's lap time there so Norbert Seidler in the McLaren Ian James in the Mercedes they are trading lap times and Ian James can see him in his mirrors he can see that McLaren distinctive in its black and gold livery he will see that car with only 4.3 seconds, it's been about around about the four seconds mark for the last at least five laps. The buffer has remained fairly s similar margin by dint of the fact that whenever you catch sight of the McLaren on, on, on screen, it appears to be behind other cars. It hasn't had the best of the traffic. And I think as soon as they get clear track, particularly with that amazing straight line speed up from Radion up the Kemmel straight, the McLaren will close in on that third place. But look, here we are. 
What have we got? We've got uh, just over two hours to go, so we've nearly had 10 hours of racing. Look at the make of cars at the top. Porsche, Audi, Mercedes, McLaren. This is what GT-style racing is all about. It's about variety and the people who've come in through the gates here to enjoy the racing today. Some may have been here last weekend for the World Endurance Championship event, another six-hour event where we had 72,500 people coming in, biggest sports car crowd uh, for a World Endurance event at Spa by a huge margin. The, the desire is here to come and watch it, and today they've just got a, and yesterday, a very different mix of cars. Yeah, and you know what? We might have had Audis who were quick, not just over the lap, of course, because it's three laps that are considered for the 24 inch Series qualifying format. If you haven't tuned in, for our qualifying show it took place on friday and it's uh, it's a it's, it's a really clever format where we have three drivers per car qualify the car and then we aggregate the three lap times so it means that you, you the, the way that we use the am drivers you're not allowed to run a pro driver for your first run in the qualifying session so it means your am driver's got a brand new set of tires and uh, a full fuel load um, then add in, then bring in, so your AM driver qualifies first, then you bring in your pro drivers, and then you aggregate the time. And it really gives a massive contribution from three drivers to qualify and where you start on the grid. And I know we, we, we put a lot into that qualifying day, don't we, Bruce? And we look towards the race, but hey, 12 hours is what it's all about. And that's why we've got a mix at the front. And all it took in that time, that quick fire qualifying, 30, 13 minutes, eight minutes off, 30 minutes, next driver in, eight minutes off, etc. is a slip up. If you don't get a time in each of those sessions, you're automatically behind the slowest of the cars that's managed to register a time in all three sessions. And that's why the car that is now fourth, the JP Motorsport McLaren, started 40th yesterday. Then, of course, worked its way up the field. Any moment now, if it can find another three seconds, it'll be in front of Ian James. It's taken a second and a half out of the Mercedes running in third place at the moment. but. Uh, Qualifying is always such a quick fire thing, and some people just simply don't get it right, not necessarily always their fault. And even, here we go, just over two hours to go, and the 34 Land Motorsport Audi finding a, finding a face full of uh, Porsche as it tried to turn into Eau Rouge. And so even though they're running in different classes, because it was a Porsche Cup class, class car, these moments can suddenly change things. And quite honestly, Land Motorsport don't deserve any more problems. So Tim Fogler did the very, very wise thing there, and he, he backed out. But uh, again, even when the track is dry, with so many cars going around, then, of course, little events can happen. But for Christian Land, thank goodness there was no contact there going into uh, Eau Rouge. And then, of course, Radion follows thereafter. And again, many a time you have a car that has just one or two little problems, and it's suddenly in such a competitive field, way, way down the order. But Tim Vogler avoided any problems and he'll work his way forward up the field, I'm sure. But again, 12 hours of racing across two days mean there will be hearts in the mouth moments for a lot of the drivers, and that was a good, good save. Daniel Alleman, though, not having any heart in mouth moments. He's lapping consistently at the front of the field. Paul Everard is chasing that Herbert Motorsport Porsche for Santa Lot Junior team, but uh, he's just got to keep plugging away. But for Santa Lot, they know they've got uh, Owen Bastard to take that car over, probably to take it through to the finish of the race, and he will definitely close in on the race leading Porsche. But at the moment, Paul Everard, a very good average, putting laps of 2 minutes 44, 2 minutes, uh, sorry, 24, 2 minutes 25 consistently. But at the moment, he's probably still the wrong side of about a minute and 10 seconds down on Daniel Alleman in the race lead. If you aren't watching the live stream, then why not? Well, you may be cutting the grass or washing the car or even at work, so you're, you're just listening on the audio. But we've uh, we've just seen some footage. Dave Olcott asking if that Robinson helicopter was our camera helicopter. It's not, Dave. We've got some fabulous aerial footage, though, from two drone cameras that the 0221 production company are producing some fantastic aerial pictures of this beautiful circuit at Spa. And if you do get a chance this afternoon, or if you are working and you're just listening to the audio, then I'm pretty sure you can catch up on YouTube with the uh, retrospective catch up with the uh, the live stream as you go through your, the rest of your week. But Joe, is there a circuit that works better for a drone shot? Because the beauty of Spa Francorchamps is the fact that when the drones go up high, you can see so much of the circuit, and you can just see how it knits its way uphill, downdale, through the forest, and back up. A circuit like the Nürburgring Nordschleife is incredibly spectacular, but it's so big you can't yeah. see almost the entirety from one shot. Or if you did, it would be tiny. Well, the majority of the camera shots you get on the TV coverage from the Nürburgring in-car, 
a lot, massive percentage, and also a helicopter. When the Formula One Grand Prix was there in the 70s, um, the majority of the lap would be covered by a helicopter. It was, you know, normally conventional tracks, um, which I suppose Spa is a conventional track. The non-conventional tracks, I'd like to think, would be the Nürburgring and maybe Le Mans. Um, Depends because, how you define yeah, yeah, conventional, really, doesn't yeah. it? I think maybe a lap and a, a, a minute and a half lap time is conventional, whereas two and a half minutes a little less conventional. So, and, also, yeah. and also, it's just a very good way of understanding how the circuit here at spa Francorchamps fits into the topography and where it's close, that you don't think if you're looking on TV it's close, and the, the drone shot really affords something. What we need to look at right now, though, I said that Norbert Seidler was closing in on Ian James. It's down to just over a second, and let's hope we're not going to have a yellow flag because the 929 Porsche has just rotated. I don't think that's anywhere near them on the track, but just as Norbert Seidler in the JP Motorsport McLaren gets onto the tail of Ian James... Uh, down at campus, we've had a lot of cars spinning at campus. Some end up on the infield, but the good news is the 929 Porsche is just waiting for a gap in the traffic before it rejoins the circuit. It's facing effectively 150 degrees, the way opposite where it should be. Now drives across the track onto the grass. Be careful as you rejoin. That's Carrie Pekka Larson in that 929 numbered Porsche just rejoining. No harm, no foul. And that's for seventh. HRT performance, but we've, that's down seventh in class, but their best placed car, their better placed car, is in second in class. So in the hands of uh, Jinji Xi, races under the pseudonym as Martin, one of two Chinese drivers sharing, well, the other is Eric Zhang, and uh, the driver who isn't Chinese is Adam Christodoulou, and he'll be the one that should presumably take that to the end. But the moment uh, for... The 929, when it went round for Carrie Pekka Laksen and was one of those ones you can blame nobody else. Was running on clear track, turned right into campus, and the tail just started to edge a few degrees out of true, and then a few more, and the round it went. But the important thing was that he got the back rear right wheel out of the gravel somehow. I think just enough of the, that tyre was on the kerb to get a tiny bit of traction because it uh, would have brought definitely a yellow flag down at the bottom. Back to that battle going on for third coming through the bus stop there. The Mercedes has tucked right under its rear wing the McLaren of the SP of the JP Motorsport team. They've got three cars, a gaggle of bat markers to get by. And Ian James takes the inside line, goes down the inside of the Hofer Mercedes. He's been stifled, his momentum was stifled somewhat as they go down the hill towards Eau Rouge, the McLaren. Looks like it... No, I thought it was going to pull alongside. And if anything, Ian James being massively held up now. We've got a, nine, uh, a, a 992 class car. Then we've got the... Um, it's the Hofer Racing Mercedes, which is right in front. But we know the McLaren's really fast up oh. the straight. And delayed into Eau Rouge means delayed through and slow through, Radion. So uh, that is bad news for Ian James. He's going across to drivers right now. He's in the middle of the circuit because sticking behind the VDS Mark car goes the McLaren. He's on the outside line at Le Comte. Not quite enough space, but that could have fallen into... Norbert Seedler's lap very well, it still can, he's going to the outside at Malmody and Ian James does just enough behind the marked car, but suddenly it's like the first lap of the race, eight cars covered in one camera shot turning into Bruxelles. This breathe where, in, breathe this, in. This is where it can all go wrong, right in front of Ian James is the VDS Mark V8, right there blocking the road forward of him. Max Partl, it is in the number 11 Hofer car, the McLaren remains behind the Mercedes, and Ian James just struggling to get by that Mark V8. He does so into double ghost, the McLaren going with him, and once again stifled somewhat on the exit of double ghost on the run down to Piff Paff. As they come through there, down the inside of the 992 class car, and it remains the same. The Mercedes has stayed ahead of the McLaren. The Mac you could just tell that Norbert Seidler was just looking for an opportunity to pounce on that Mercedes when the Mercedes tripped over that traffic. But fabulous job for me and James there to get through there. Down in the pits, Nick has action. Well, yeah. Uh, we had the GT4 leaders in the Buggy Raw uh, Mercedes AMG. Uh, Ali College has got out, and I think. I think it was actually, I think it was, David, it was uh, Adam Lack who got in, but I might be that wrong. To my left, the Leipzig Lamborghini, the GT3 car, has stopped as well. So it's like a London bus situation. We had nothing for ages, and now our third bus has turned up in the, in the example of Shane Lewis getting out of the CP Motorsport uh, Mercedes. That car has come in for a full service as well. So 
the king of time. Suddenly we've got nothing but cars and all three of them going through the nose. Of course, the GT4 stopped much slower than the GT3s because they had to change 20 uh, wheel nuts rather than just four. And the Lamborghini managed to avoid the uh, Mercedes AMG, which is in the next garage. Down goes the GT3 version of the Mercedes while the GT4 is still having another one of its nuts tightened. Deja vu for Ian James in the Mercedes of the Heart of Racing by SPS as they go down or Rouge. He's still got traffic in the form of the number 11 Hall for Racing Mercedes. That's not going to be an easy move, though. Max Partle is the driver in that number 11. Still got the 992 class cars in front of it as well. And once again, as we go into Le Camp, Ian James gets kind of stifled there, if not bought in the McLaren, once again, right under his rear wing. Yeah, going down the hill past the old pits, there was a fairly much, much bigger gap between Ian James in the heart of racing Mercedes and the black and gold McLaren of Norbert Seidler. But we know that the McLaren's very quick up the hill, but he got a far better exit because no one was impeding him out of Radion, but just enough space for Ian James to hang on. And now, now we've got Nick in the pits again. Yeah, good to a chance to talk to Ali College straight out of the boogie rock car. Um, we've come out in the best position so far. To, that this, this race is going well for the team. Uh, yeah, this race so far has been going pretty good. Uh, the last race we had a problem in the last 15 minutes. So um, <laughs> the first part yesterday, it was uh, really tricky with the weather conditions. But uh, we managed to keep the position and I think so far we're leading. And uh, hopefully it will go good and uh, we will see. Give us some background on this team. You were so close last time. So an idea. Who are Buggy Rock? Who are Buggy Rock? Um, well, well, here is Buggy Rock. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a private team. It's a, we're like family here. It's a, we do a lot. We do trucks. We do GTs. So um, very diverse team, and uh, it's just uh, like a big family. An even more difficult question. Who is Alia? Tell us about yourself, tell us about your career, how you found yourself in Spa racing uh, a GT4 car. Um, well, I'm Alia, if you didn't notice. Um, it's my second time racing here. Well, no, third and second time I did race here last year. Um, it's pretty surreal to race in such an iconic track. Um, and uh, so far I've been racing a lot. Um, yeah, and that's it, that all to say. <laughs> So is that you finished for the race or will you get in again before the end? Sorry? Will you get back in the car again before the end of the race? I'm not sure. So far I don't think so because I did a, now a pretty long stint. So I, I think Adam will finish it, but I'm not sure yet. We will see. <laughs> Great stuff and good luck and hopefully no last quarter now problems. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you said it now, Nick. Tempting fate somewhat. Uh, we've got a challenge for that third place side by side into Lacombe. The 27 Mercedes, the heart of racing Mercedes, just hangs on. And the McLaren there, just again, I mentioned earlier how he was looking for that opportunity to maybe find the Mercedes tripping over, but Norbert Seidler just cannot find that opportunity to pull alongside and even overtake that number 27 heart of racing Mercedes. I think Norbert Seidler has been very, very frustrated the last few laps, and that was a, a move that wasn't quite on. He nearly went into the door in the first part of Le Comp. He'll have to wait. He's been slightly distracted by the number one Audi. There's many at laps down in 26th overall, but lapping in the same place, Sven Herberger, and he will jump, and that'll be one of those things. So Norbert's just got to wait a little bit longer. We know the McLaren's super fast up the Kemmel Strait. Next time around, perhaps he can make the move. But again, They've been frustrated by traffic, and I think Norbert Seidler is just diving for the moment. But Ian James, nearly an hour and a half into the stint, and surely about to pit. And they've ticked by the two hours to go mark, one hour 57 to be precise. So we can we can insert Roman De Angelis next time that car pits, and he can take the car to the finish. He'll not be able to take the car to the finish on a on, a, on fuel, but he'll certainly be able to take the car to the finish on driver stint time, maximum allowed two hours. And once again, Ian James finds himself under the rear wing of that number 11, the Hofer car. There's no requirement for the Hofer car to make, the li make life easy. And sometimes it's a matter of etiquette, sometimes the Hofer car having its own race there in ninth, uh, currently seventh in the GT3 uh, class, third in the AM class. 
Well, I think it uh, looks as though the heart of racing Mercedes are going to continue for another lap. So let's, with just under two hours remaining, take a look at where we're standing. TCE, the Touring Car Endurance Series, Holden Guard Motorsport, have dominated this class with two, almost two laps on the second place, Wolf Power Racing Car 121. It's really keep by Top Car Sport in third place. And then we've got the first of the uh, Caymans, the Cayman GT4, the 718. That's the SRS Team Sorg Rensport. In fifth place, we've got the Roma Racing BMW. That's the first of the TCX runners, the M2CS. And then another BMW, but this time it's the TC class, the only car in TC class, the Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport car 331. We did have another entry that would have been classified seventh. However, the Wolf Power Racing car 117. Marcus Mendon and Rob Hoff had very little time to show us what they can do, and that car was an early retirement. Now, taking a look at the GT results, the race leading car, the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche, leading at the moment by about just over a minute from the 26 Santa Lock Racing Audi. Paul Everard at the wheel of that. JP Motorsport and Heart of Racing. Now the graphic is showing that JP Motorsport McLaren has died by. I haven't seen that as yet myself, but the Heart of Racing Mercedes is about to be coming into the pits. Ian James pressing on with that. Fifth place is the top car in the Porsche Cup class. That's Ayrton Redon for the 903 Red Ant Racing entry. Then the 930 HR, HRT Performance uh, Porsche tucked in behind in second place. Jinji Ji Martin. Chinese racer at the wheel of that. Seventh place is Moderna Motorsports now in their GT3 Porsche with John Shen, Canadian racer at the wheel. And then Hoffer Racing, Max Partel at the wheel of that, car number 11, eighth overall. The third car in the Porsche Cup class is the 904 Red Ant Racing entry, so they're first and third in class with uh, Philip Wills. Tenth place and fourth in the Porsche Cup is Willie Motorsport, the 955 entry. Then the sixth car in GT3 is... Uh, Paolo Bugera in the E2P racing number 90. Then Land Motorsport, they are ninth overall, sorry, 12th overall, the 34 Audi recovery with Tim Vogler at the wheel. CP racing after their refueling uh, nozzle problems uh, down in 13th place, making up ground in their number 85 Mercedes. N uh, 10th in the Porsche Cup class, it's, uh, sorry, the, in the overall class is due to racing with their Audi, that's car 71. 5th in the Porsche Cup class is 924 PK Car Sport. 6th after the steering problems in the Porsche Cup class is a car that's led it before, the Red Camel Jordans 909. And then we go to GTX, still being led almost as it has been from the start by VDS Racing Adventures, Raphael van der Straten at the wheel of 758. 7th in the Porsche Cup class is 929 HRT Performance. 11th in GT3 is the Leipert Lamborghini, car number 10. And then second in GTX, still chasing after VDS, is RD Signs with their Lamborghini. That's car 720. Uh, 967 in the Porsche Cup class is 21st overall. 919 also in the Porsche Cup class is 22nd. Uh, that's for Black Falcon. Then Porsche Baltic, 10th in the Porsche Cup class, 23rd overall. And then in GTX, third car in class is GT3 Poland's... Uh, Lamborghini, that's car 763. Black Falcon, their second car, is uh, 11th in the Porsche Cup. That's car 920. Then still making up ground after so many delays yesterday. The number one Shearer Sport PHX Audi, that's a car that led the race yesterday afternoon. Uh, 26th overall, 27th overall and 4th in GTX is the 9-11 racing Porsche. Then number, uh, number 416, we've just heard from Aliyah Kolic, it's the, the Bagheera ZM Racing GT4 Mercedes, that's leading GT4. Second in GT4 is the 488 TCL Motorsport BMW. Third in GT4 is the 427 Lion Speed Porsche Cayman. Then comes the wonderful rumble in 31st position, that's the 701 Vortex V8. 32nd, the 979 Speed Lover Porsche, running in the Porsche Cup class in 32nd overall. 33rd position, had problems very early on yesterday's race, but the ex-Swift Racing events, Toyota is running fourth in GT4, that's car number 408. PB Racing, sixth in uh, GTX, and that's the lovely little Lotus, number 726, Federico Leo at the wheel. Atlas BX Motorsport, they've had all sorts of problems, they've been stuck in the garage, but uh, the, seven, the uh, 403 Atlas Mercedes will press on. Roloff Bruins at the wheel at the moment. Then Senkia Motorsports BMW, that's car number 444, is sixth in GT4. Seventh in GT4 is the PCR Sport Mercedes, 
then uh, after all sorts of problems the number 58 MP Racing Mercedes that had a big crash yesterday completed uh, the whole run from Assos to, uh, to uh, Le Combe with the bonnet against the windscreen that's car 58 in 38th position still pressing on after many delays the 21 Haas RT Audi that started on pole is down in 39th due to racing had a crash right at the start today that's car 72 classified in 40th position in GT class car which leaves us 755 Land Motorsport that's the TTR that pulled off about an hour or so ago. Another car from Land Motorsport, it was the 55 Audi that retired first thing today, and the 702 Vortex that didn't get to start today. Well, it's finally happened, Bruce, while we're having that rundown. Ian James has finally relinquished that third place to the GP Motorsport McLaren. Norbert Seidler finally taking that third place. However, it all came by the fact that the Mercedes of the Heart of Racing team was brought into the pits. I'm not sure. Did I hear Nick saying that they changed drivers in that 27 Mercedes? Um, I'm not sure if Nick can, can let us know. Uh, yeah. But Ian James will not see who's in that car. It's until Roman the... DeAngelis. It's Roman DeAngelis. We well, can I speak yeah. to Ian or have we got highlights? No, no, you may go right to Ian right uh, now. Ian James Ian, out of third place. Uh, we've, been, we've been trying to work out how you're going to get Roman in for the max amount of time. And you just went for the very obvious way of just bugging him in with an hour and 55 minutes to go. Yeah, so uh, he'll be 15 short of the three hours, but we'll maximise him, and uh, yeah, we're leading our class, and everything from there is a bonus. I shouldn't say this, but we've not had any rain. That must have been a bit of a surprise and ruined your strategy slightly. Well, at the beginning of my stint, it started to sprinkle. I'm like, oh no, here it comes again. But you know, I, I think we'll get some before the end. But anyway, he's he's blindingly fast in the dry as well. So, I mean, how important is the overall result for you? Because you've done pretty much enough now, touching wood, to, you know, to win the AM class. But is the overall result important as well? I think there's a little bit of bragging rights there, you know, up against these pro lineups. But uh, ultimately, here we're we're here to enjoy it, to learn, uh, get Gray as much track time in a GT3 as possible. So uh, wherever he finishes uh, is a bonus from now on. Now, you've done a lot of endurance racing. I mean, are you as surprised as me that you can have 45 cars on the track, but 10 of them are in the same three seconds of track at the same time? The traffic you had the last few minutes there was unbelievable. I know. It's just like uh, I clear a bunch of cars. I'm like, OK, we'll get some clear running here. And then there's five others all together. But, uh, you know, I think Preventic's one of these hidden secrets of, like, you know, traffic management and all that and a place to come and race and have fun. And it's nice to be in the top class for a change because I'm used to being in the uh, in the slowest GT class. Yeah, you can bully them. You can bully them rather than bully it yourself. Yeah, I try and uh, I try and think of them from my seat as well. But there's real good driving cooperation out there from the slower classes and uh, everybody coexisting. Thanks, Ian. Best luck, best of race. Yeah, thank you. Good point made by Nick and Ian there about uh, the cars from the junior classes. And I liked Ian's point that normally. He's the one who has to look in his mirrors, even when he's attacking. So that little simpatico sentiment, I think, is very key. It also gives him the perspective of when he goes off and risks in the World Endurance Championship of what it's like for those hypercars and LMP2 cars who are coming up to lap him as the faster cars in that race. So great. And he's able to understand and empathise with their, the perspective from that. So time for the McLaren to come in for a stop, and Nick has picked it up. Car 69, JP well, Motorsport. Rather sneakily, they went to enjoy the interview, so all I got to see was him driving away. But uh, my assumption is, which I think it's pretty safe, is they've done a completely full service, and I would guess they'll be doing Christian clean to the end, as he is their quicker driver. So let's sign out. Oh, that boards well, doesn't it? Christian clean, the fastest of them in the McLaren, and Roman De Angelis, who is not just, he's not just, he's not going to be satisfied with third place. He's, he's going to be after the Herbeth car. He's going to be he's going to be pushing and pushing. He's going to be flat out. This is going to be pull up your chairs, everybody. Hold get on the, to your hats. Absolutely, it's about to happen. Get yesterday your, we get saw your kids off the fences. Yes, yeah. Christian Clean when he got in right at the end yesterday, been held right back. The conditions were tricky. They were slippery, and suddenly that car was setting its fastest laps, its fastest lap. But at this point, we've got just under two hours remaining. In fact, one hour, forty-seven minutes. The best lap so far. Roman De Angelis, two minutes, twenty-one point zero one two seconds. I think that was his second flying lap today. Yes. That's the standard. Who else has lapped in the 221s? Well, the McLaren that Norbert Siegler is just handing over, we think, to Christian Klein. And he's going he's, he's, he's going to not be able to do an hour and 45 minutes. I've got to interrupt minutes. myself and correct myself, because I heard Nick's voice. Of course, the fastest lap 
went after that to 20.6 to, 20. to yeah. uh, Lauren Heinrich in the race leading Herbert Motorsport Porsche. He will probably get back in for another stint in that, but at the moment it's Daniel Alleman at the front of the field, and Paul Everard making no gains on him at all, but that gap it has come down a little bit, but it's, only, it's still 53 seconds between the race leading Herbert Porsche and the Santalock 26 Audi with Paul Everard at the wheel. But wait till Erwin Bastard gets on to take that through to the finish. It's bright green. The big question is, how fast is it going to be? And the answer is, I think, faster than it is at the moment. I, I actually, I'm going to say this again. I've said this so many times in this series. I don't know how that Herbeth car has pulled itself a lap on everyone else, but it has. It's, a, it's, gone, it's gone a lap ahead of pretty much the whole fit. It's certainly ahead of the part of racing Mercedes, the JP Motorsport McLaren. I'm just waiting for the Sonderlock car to come through and see just whether that is a full lap or whether indeed it's uh, it's just about to put that Sonderlock car down at a full lap to where that car is. It shouldn't do, because last time I saw the gap, it was about 52 seconds. Yeah, it is it's now 55. 54, 55 seconds. Yeah, a slight improvement there from Daniel Alleman over Paul Everard. So, phew, thank goodness. It's uh, that sort of margin. The question is really Norbert Seidler and Roman De Angelis, or, or more to the point, we think it'll be Christian Clean when the McLaren exits the pits for JP Motorsport. It's still being refuelled. And almost immediately, Roman De Angelis, bang, first flying lap, he's into the two minute 22s. Just doesn't hang around, does he? No, no. No, we're going to be monitoring that as we get towards the chequered flag. There's one hour and 45 minutes to go in what has been a quite intriguing 12-hour motor race as we see the Vortex stranded at the side of the track, half on the track, half off the track, 701, showing signs of damage, and the 701 down in 34th overall. Right, he's, he's, he's nosed the grass on the inside. I think we're looking at Malmody. Yes, they've gone through, and yellow flags turn seven, and also turn 18, which is right towards the start of the chicane. I think that's actually the point between Blanchimont and the chicane. Haven't seen sight of that. The 701 is still diagonally across the track with the nose pretty much pointing towards the direction of the cars coming out. That's a really horrible place because the cars coming into the second part, or well, out of uh, Le Combe and into Malmody, are already that's snaking for position. And plus, you come out of the... the, the so you go right, left at Le Combe. Malmody, the right-hander, is an acceleration zone. You, you, the throttle is planted, you commit it through there. There's, been, there's weird flags being, being waved, so they're, they're ready for something. But they'll want to keep their foot in through that right-hand section of Malmody. You just don't want to be... Yeah, you've got to maximise up there, but unfortunately, I don't know if the 701 with the... Uh, the Vortex V8 with Lionel Amrouche at the wheel has stalled because it's still sitting sideways in the track and just about see some movement through the dark windows at the side of the cockpit. Right, out of the lead comes Daniel Alleman. He was le leading by, what would he be say, 55 seconds before there's going to be a driver change. I can confirm that Christian Klein took it over and it's about time for Lauren Heinrich, Nick. It is Lauren Heinrich getting in. Uh, there was kind of consternation because this was this was planned and they were looking to see what was happening with the 701 which to me seems like that rear left wheel might not be aligned correctly anymore so maybe he can't get going now they need to get themselves down the bottom of the hill and the code six is being called so they will not get a full oh. fill of OK, bear that in mind, Nick. We'll, we'll keep bearing that in mind. But also, uh, the fact is the 701 uh, Vortex has moved across the track diagonally into the gravel on the other side, and the rear wheels aren't quite doing enough turning to get the car going. Possibly the car is now beached on the kerb. Yep, it looks like it's beached on the kerb on the exit of Malmody, now on driver's left as they go through that tightish right-hander. But the point we need to make need to make. In fact, the Lotus now is being pushed into the pit lane. Has that run out of fuel or was that the car? There was a moment at turn 18 a couple of minutes ago that might have had an incident and is now blocking the pit lane potentially with a couple well, of marshals pushing it exactly, in. Exactly, Bruce. So what I was going to say, the nature of the pit lane here is when you come into the pit lane there's a concrete wall to your right, there's a concrete wall to the left and it's a car's width. If that car gets stuck in that pit lane, it's being pushed by marshals, and that's quite an uphill. That's quite an uphill push as well. So a so lot of effort penalty? needed from the marshal. They're doing a cracking job. Right. What you need to do when the code six is out is serve a penalty. It might be twice the time. But the car from second place. Thank you, Nick. Paul Everard is sitting in that 26 Santa Lot car, waiting to get going again. But the penalty is served. Yeah, you serve the penalty. The uh, second place car comes down the road. They that get half a tank of fuel, but they knew they were getting half a tank as
So the 701 Vortex has got going. It's been released from the curb, but it's coming down the hill quite tight to the apex, the first first apex as you go into Bruxelles, and the car is not pointing in the direction of travel. The body is about, what do you say, 10 degrees to the right yeah, it's crabbing. and side. Crabbing, bodywork is rubbing on the rear left tire. That's going to be a long lap rear. back to the pits for them. That's a rear tie rod tooling on the rear left of that car. So you're basically the, the, the left hand rear wheel is pointing not straight ahead. It's scrubbing because it's uh, it's towing in or it's towing out. I couldn't really tell because there's so much smoke pouring from under that left hand rear wheel hotch. Uh, meanwhile, the 91 Porsche is now with its new driver, its superstar plugged into that Porsche. It's in fueling and it's gonna be very shortly being released from there. Meanwhile, this Code 60 will remain, I, th I would think, while that car, the 701 Vortex, makes its way around. We're getting rid of some debris while we can, so some track maintenance going on while we are under Code 60 conditions. But uh, no official message coming through on the screens about how long the Code 60 will remain. And the 91 is, is done with fueling, and it will be... Heinrich, who will continue and take that 91 Herbert car to the finish. It will retain the lead over Paul Everard in the Sonderlock Junior Audi because that car has pitted as well, the number 26. And just look at that coming out right behind the third place car, about to put that car another lap down. So that will go down two laps if that car can get by. Obviously, no moves can be made now, no overtaking during Code 60, no speeding during Code 60, and there's no danger of that for the 701 Vortex. It's still pointing about 10 degrees, so the bodywork to the left of where it should be. And the Lotus has been towed into the pit lane. That was the one that was being pushed by Marshalls. Fortunately, they got it through the twisty pit entrance, got it out of the way so others can come in. But I have been here before when the pit lane entry has been blocked to massive detriment of all those who are put out the other side and just simply can't get in to do what they needed to do. The TCR cars the, in the TCE section of this race can, uh, if they were to pit now and f uh, fill their tanks of fuel, they could go to the finish. Whether or not, though, under Code 60, where you're only allowed half of the allocation uh, of what you're allocate, alla allowed fueling-wise, whether that will top off the tank is something that I'm not able to tell from where I'm sitting. Home Guard is the car that leads TCE, and it's still Roy Edland at the wheel of the 102. So we're getting towards that fuel window where we will see cars being able to take it to the flag. Uh, the cars that will always a splash and dash will be the 27, which is the heart of racing Mercedes with Roman De Angelis now at the wheel. Christine Klein uh, McLaren, that will uh, have to come in for fuel towards the final few uh, minutes of this race. Not quite sure, maybe 50 minutes to go point. We'll see those cars. Right, so when the Code 60 is released, we get the wave green flag. We've got the drivers who set the two fastest laps right next <laughs> to each other. Admittedly, a lap between them on the overall score, which would be Roman De Angelis in the heart of racing Mercedes, sitting right across the nose of the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Talk about battles within overall yeah. big battles, but that would be, be absolute fireworks. And if they don't hit too much traffic, the next few laps when we've gone green could be fabulous and we could see the race's fastest lap, or they could both trip each other over. You don't yeah. know together on track but uh, quite far apart but the, those two drivers will will kind of draw each other around this circuit and we're going to see some blistering laps i'm pretty sure we're going to see the fastest lap of the whole race uh, be sort of panning out as we get into the new uh, the final stages of this race one hour 37 minutes we've got the vortex still struggling around trying to get round to the pits now not quite sure where it is. I think it's on the run-up to Blanchimon. He's done a cracking job getting that car. Whether he has any of that tyre left, it's kind of run, running at 45 degrees to its direction of travel. Yeah, I think he's only at the curb Paul Frere at the moment, so he's still got quite a way to go up the slope towards Blanchimont and then into the chicane. But it's just a thought. It's hard enough getting in with a car with four wheels doing what they're supposed to in the pit lane. Can he manage it? And uh, those still out on the track are just waiting. The fueling area is very full, but already quite a few have been in and been out. Track conditions dry. Now, one thing we discussed a while ago, Joe, was with uh, 90 minutes or so to go, we're pretty much 90 minutes or so to go, 
Better start having a look at the, the penalty screen because a lot of teams... We're seeing right now the Willy Motors uh, Porsche 955, which is now down in fourth in uh, the Porsche Cup class, serving a penalty. But just to reiterate that when the car comes in under a code 60 to serve a penalty, what happens? They have to stay for twice as long. Was that what Nick said earlier? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah it's doubled. If you try and, t try and take a penalty un un under code 60, uh, the so to give an example, if you've been given a 10-second penalty, which you're being if lashed the, out uh, left, right and centre for track limit infringements, okay. if you do, if you come in and you serve that under code 60, that 10 seconds turn to 20. Well, let's get our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the Porsche Cup class. Nick? No, 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 I'm with the Lotus. Oh, the I, Lotus, sorry. To I, say. Far more important is having some exciting Italian action with Lotus. Uh, it appears that it may well be a drive shaft, given they're attacking the rear right of the car in a drive shaft style. I think we can ask uh, Valentin Leo uh, just to grab a quick word with him. He's, he's trying to con me by one of Stefano's other race suits. suits, suits. So uh, we'll just uh, see what the problem was. He's just uh, coming through. So what was the issue, sir? Uh, it was carried off the gearbox, but uh, I think we, it is only a drive shaft. So we will change it. We will lose uh, 10 minutes. Unfortunately, because we had the problem with the braking, with the brake, they are almost finished. So I did a stint with the freeze uh, four seconds off. But uh, yeah, we are lucky, but we are happy that we are here after four hours now. So with the brakes not being there, what do you do you just brake much lighter or do you coast into the corners? Yeah, the whole two while. I'm doing lighter and before the corners. So in, the, in some corners that were only, only brake a little bit. I'm not braking. I leave the bra I'm coasting a little bit. That sounds like a quite, <laughs> quite a difficult thing. Yeah, but we, uh, we, are, we want to finish the race. Great stuff. Thank you indeed. This is the, uh, the fantastic uh, PB Lotus team. And that was uh, Valentino Leo. So, nursing problems in endurance racing. <laughs> Lots of teams towards the end will be nursing problems. And a lot of the teams that even don't have any particular problems, how the Code 60, how are you reacted? Are you lucky, lucky enough to be in the pits at the right time when you don't get hit? But, you know, you can just see how a race can, can pivot. And certainly for the Herbeth Motorsport crew, the timing of that Code 60 wasn't entirely kind, was it? Because they were just going down towards... No, they came in and under green and it went to purple while they were in there. They're in now for more fuel. OK, so right. just a message. We're just starting to talk about that. And Nick's pointed out that uh, Herbeth Motorsport were in under code 60. You can't put as much fuel in. They've had to come in again. So that's going to cost them big time. Well, just over 94 minutes, what you've just described there, uh, Bruce, is the very essence of endurance racing and the, the spirit of endurance racing. And we, we are getting towards that part of the race where we're going to ask for some ideas as to who should get and who should be awarded our Spirit of the Race Award, which we will be looking at to uh, with about, you know, maybe 35 minutes of this race remaining. That's when we usually make our presentation. Um, have a bit of a think, everybody have a bit of a think, and then we'll decide on just who has shown the greatest spirit of the race here at the Spa 12 Hours. As we go green again, all eyes on the timing screen, the Vortex has made it back to the pits, we'll head down to Nick in a moment, but right now, Lauren Heinrich is still in the fueling area. When we've gone green, that might not do him any favours. I think he uh, just moved out, Nick. It's, it is crabbing, is it it's not? It's crabbing completely. I mean, the, I, I think I said, you see from the picture, there was a problem with that uh, rear left uh, mounting on the uh, suspension. But the impressive amount of crabbing there, he's done half the lap going sideways. But, um, you know, it's, I just hope it's not a wheel rim failure because they've had enough of those. But it's uh, more of that rear end. The interesting thing is what I didn't realise, in the back of that garden, garden the back of that pit <laughs> where it's sunday down the garden center in the back of the pit they not only had the completely broken 702 they got an absolutely pristine car as well i didn't know there were three of these so the entirety of vortex is in one pit garage now the damaged 702 one and the very lovely and pristine 702 reserve well it's all in the planning now 
Lauren Heinrich shortly out of the pits and a lot of drivers pressing on very soon but what happens you lose tyre temperature we just had a moment uh, for the CP racing Mercedes between Eau Rouge and Radion completely off the track on driver's left that at the moment the CP car Charles Esper now but the wheel is down in 12th position but that was a, a mighty save but uh, basically it's once you're back on track after refueling it's about getting going again not having a knockback but what we've got to see that second run through for Herbert Motorsport how far that's going to pull them back onto the nose of the other cars we talk year in year out Joe about Herbert Motorsport they seem to with their experience just read the code 60 so well and yet this time they were in the pits and for once it's bitten them on the backside they are so good at reading these the way, the way that they strategize through these 24 series races they have dire look with their older car at Mugello, they went out very, very early. That gave them uh, a little bit of an opportunity to put some light miles on the brand new car, which is what they're here with this weekend. So the brand new spec GT3 spec 992 Porsche is what we find Lauren Heinrich in at the moment. And he's gone out. The gap has closed because we went green. The, the gap has closed, but, um, you know, Anton uh, de Quinn, can he keep up the pace in that Sonderlock Audi? Can he keep up the same kind of pace as we're about to see from Lauren Heinrich? He really is the Porsche driver, the Porsche factory driver. He's absolute, absolutely going to optimise that 19, the 91 Porsche's run to the flag. I know why Charles Espinel went off at Radion there. He's under pressure. He suddenly got uh, the Hoffa racing Mercedes. They might be fighting over... No, they are fighting over 12th and 13th positions, below where they expect to be. But Charles Espinel has suddenly got Alexander Prince closing in there, almost precisely two seconds apart. This time around, with no cars immediately in front of him, Charles Espinel makes a better fist of getting through Radion. As again, does try and stretch his legs. He's got one of the GT3... So the uh, GTX class uh, Lamborghinis up ahead, but... Uh, Alexander Prince flying. They are just off the GT3 AM podium at the moment. They're in fourth and fifth in the GT3 AM class. Yeah, but they're, they're a, a minute and a quarter down yes. on the car that's third at the moment, which is the E2P, the Spanish entered uh, Porsche in the hands of Antonio Sanero, who has been going very well. But it's always worth getting ahead of a car that's ahead of you in class. Um, and it's always worth keeping the car that's behind you in class, just in case we can make any sort of inroads into that one and a 15 gap to that third and final step of the podium. Antonio Saniero in the E2P racing Porsche currently holding on to that third and final step of the GT3 and podium. Yeah, the two chasing Mercedes are both faster than him, but as I pointed out, just a, a minute, well, fully a minute and a quarter is the advantage for E2. P racing seventh overall in GT3, but third overall in GT3 AM. Of course, that class still being led by Heart of Racing team. There, Mercedes in third place. Roman De Angelis at the wheel, and again, he's uh, what? What time is he lapping in? Two minutes twenty-one. Has he done it again? Yes, he has. Another lap in two minutes twenty-one. So he is the fastest driver out on the track at the moment. So dispiriting for the JP Motorsport McLaren with Christian Clean firing along, but he's losing four, four seconds a lap to Roman De Angelis. So as quick as the McLaren has been, right now with the heavy fuel tank, it's not exactly closing in on Roman De Angelis. Quite the reverse, in fact. The 9.30 HRT performance car now being optimised with their driver lineup. Adam Christodoulou now at the wheel of that car, leading 992. But look at that, Bruce, 2.25, 2.53. That's as fast as that car has gone all race long. Green lightening up the timing screen for that car. And that's going to be a very, very tough car to get past. We've got Kobe De Broica in the red ant car. He's currently second, and he is quite a way down. He's not a full lap down, but we're going to just wait and see what that gap is, and I'll, I'll update you on that. But uh, that car at the front of the 992 class, Adam Christodoulou it is, they're in a very, very strong position to take that class win with uh, we're, we're inside of 90 minutes now yeah and the margin it has over Kobe de Bruker in the 903 red ant car yeah as you pointed out just under 50 seconds but it will stretch to beyond that because certainly at the moment Adam Chris is Dulu is lapping nearly a second a lap faster third in class at the moment is the second red ant entry that's car 904 fourth in class is Sergio Nikolai pressing on very hard indeed for the Willy Motorsport team. That's car number 955. Tenth overall, so again, showing how the Porsche Cup class the 992 really does infiltrate the top ten if you have problems for a handful of the cars. And we've got four in the top ten, so they're doing a great job. Yeah, quite incredible, really. We've seen how just how slippery those 992 cars are. A bit less aero 
than the GT3 spec car. Uh, you'll see a little bit less wing, underfloor, aerodynamics, rear wing, slightly smaller. But that does make it go very, very quickly along that Kemmel straight. Very quickly. Alexander Prince, another fastest lap of the whole race for the Hofer car. The number 11 Mercedes of Hofer Racing. 1.8 seconds behind the CP Racing car of Charles Espinlau. So that is a battle that you mentioned, Bruce. One, uh, sorry, 2.23.8 is the fastest lap for that car now. Under two seconds, and I think this is one of those battles. It might be for 12th place overall, but it could be one affected by traffic, like so many if you're fighting in the GT3 class. There will be cars from the junior classes that you'll come upon. And often in gaggles, it's a question of whether luck rides with you or not. One car that I really feel sorry for, Tim Fogler's got it into eighth place now overall, is the 34 Land Motorsport Audi. But really, for one problem, that little gearbox plug coming out, uh, they, they would be challenging in the top five or six. Um, I've just seen the gap between first and second, and that flashed up at 16 seconds. Well, of course, it was the extra pit stop yeah, for Lauren Heidrich. Oh, look at that. It's 20 out, seconds. Yeah, yeah, but why is it going to go out again? Because we just had the yeah. second fastest lap of the race. Lauren Heinrich probably slightly frustrated in uh, the way that the 91 Herbert Motorsport car was caught in the pits, couldn't take on as much fuel as it wanted, only half a tank allowed during Code 60. They were in before Code 60, but got caught by it. The extra pit stop, it's closed it down, but 2 minutes 20.9 uh, for the last lap, second best lap of the race, only to his own best lap of the race, 2 well, minutes 20.6. So Lauren Heinrich, I pat did, him on the back. I, I did ask the question of whether Anton Duquesne could actually uh, pull out a lap time that will be that will draw that car into him. The answer is there, right there. Uh, 2 minutes 20.9 to 25.1. Considerable margin, gone out to 20 seconds, just under 21 seconds. And that's just going to go... That's just going to extend. Yeah, the, the only... <sighs> element that could help Santa Lot Racing get closer is the fact that uh, they have got presumably for the final stint their fastest driver Erwin Bastard but I think Lauren Heinrich may be able to do this stint and the final one what have we got left an hour and 25 minutes so the answer is probably yes to that looking back to the Porsche Cup class still first number 930 for HRT performance with Adam Christodoulou but I tell you what last time round going faster than he was was Kobe de Broica second in the class the better place the red ant racing entries 903 46 seconds in a rear but I think that was probably traffic dependent there because certainly every time Adam's been in clear traffic he's put in very very quick lap times first three cars all suddenly finding their best ever run through the first sector of this lap that's Lauren Heinrich the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche it's Anton Duquin Santa Lot Junior Team Audi that's car 26 in second place and Roman De Angelis heart of racing team he's done another lap in two minutes 21 something he's not just quick De Angelis he is so so incredibly metronomically yeah that's the quick. word that is the word that is the word at the moment Bruce we are not going to see any of the drivers in the number 85 CP Mercedes or any of the drivers in the number 11 Hofer Mercedes spring champagne on the podium because right now they are in fourth and fifth place in the AM class, the GT3 AM class. They've come together on the road, the CP car ahead of the Hofer car. That's the white and blue with the red nose. That's the CP car. And then the black and purple liveried car. That's the Hofer car chasing down Charles Espinlaub in the 85, Alex Prince in the number 11, and the gap last time by, let me just find that on my on my screen, it's uh, just a bit, well, about a second and a half, but there's another fastest lap, another 23.5 from Prince, now just look how close they are, 223.564 for the CP car of Espinlaub, 223.595 for Alex Prince. I was just taking a look at what was happening with JP Motorsport, went through Radio and the McLaren, that's why Christian Clean wasn't gaining too much ground, but he suddenly came across the tail of the Leipert Lamborghini, 18th position overall, but uh, snaking its way with Brendan Leach at the wheel, uh, up the straight because he's got a puncture, a rear puncture on the number 10 Lamborghini, and suddenly it was a face full of smoke for those in behind him. It's a right rear puncture by looks things. In fact, the tyre is coming off the rim, and the uh, 
certainly for Christian Clean. He suddenly, instead of just using a bit of a slipstream and then trying to go past, he had to jink past because the Lamborghini was slowing. So that won't be such a quick lap from Christian Clean, but it was a very, very good avoidance from the McLaren driver who's in fourth place overall. But Brendan Leach, again, that's a long lap anyhow, but on three and a half tyres, the Olympian back. Did that tyre just blow up on him on the Kemmel there? It, it, the first I saw of it, was, I thought he kicked up the, the, the smoke because he because he just kissed the grass at the side of the circuit. Right, wow. But yes, it was uh, probably going, I didn't see it going through Radion, but certainly not long after that, the tyre was down at the back. Well, he's got to get that car pretty much the all the way around this track here at Spa. And there's the CP car coming into the view of the 11 Hofer car. We've been monitoring this battle for fourth and fifth places in the GT3 Amp class. Just ahead of them on the road is the McLaren of Christine Kling. And they are well inside of issues with back markers. If anything, Bruce, the 85 Mercedes looks quicker than clean in that McLaren. You know, at the moment, the, the Christian Clean very quick in the McLaren yesterday in those slightly slippery conditions, drying in that final hour. But today, it just doesn't look so comfortable for him in this stint. And the fact he's got uh, Charles Espinal and Alexander Prince both lapping marginally faster, moving on to his tail, they're laps down on the McLaren. But... Uh, Anyhow, certainly it doesn't look like a smooth run. I thought Christian Clean might be able to close in towards uh, the heart of racing Mercedes, but of course the heart of racing Mercedes has got Roman De Angelis at the wheel and he's frankly slackened his pace terribly. He's done a two minutes 23.8, but uh, joking aside, he's 53, nearly a minute second, near, uh, nearly a minute clear in third place of the McLaren that just seems to have lost its form a little bit. Just when we thought Christian Clean, the flying Austrian, would really grab it by the scruff of the neck, maybe just the performance of that car is sliding away. In fact, his last lap, 2 minutes 29 seconds, traffic has afflicted him, but having to back off when he nearly clipped the back yeah. up the Kemmel straight, of course, all that momentum cost him big time. That would have cost him lap time. I thought I was going to see the number 11 Hofer car, Alex Prince driving that, lose more time as he's dropped off the back of the CP Racing uh, Mercedes now. But lap time-wise, he, was, he was only two-tenths of a second slower than Charles Espen live ahead of him. They continue to make their way through back markers as the Leipzig Lamborghini continues to make its way round to the pits with that puncture. Once again, that battle for fourth place in GT3 Am following the McLaren of Christian Klein around, who's fourth place overall, third in GT3. And of course, Roman De Angelis, He's third overall, but he is leading the AM class. That car registered as the leading GT3 AM class car. The second car in GT3 AM is Tim Vogler. And what, what a result that will be to see the 34 stay in that class position. And that car had that issue that you just described recently, Bruce, with the gearbox plug. Third in GT3 AM is the... E2P Racing Porsche, and that car spread out from its other class runners. It's run pretty well, actually, that E2P Racing Porsche, but it's always just, just outside the top ten or thereabouts. Right, good to hear that Lamborghini has, and see the Lamborghini has just got get going again, right, right onto the tail of the VDS Mark car as that came in, the 758, to report for a standard pit stop. We have code 60 at the moment, suddenly all slows down. We have yellow flags at turn 13. So let's pop down while it's getting a little bit uh, busy in the pits and Norbert Seedler is standing alongside with Dai. Norbert, we've just had a, a Code 60 uh, come out right now, but um, first of all, I just wanted to chat to you. It's a bit of a lottery, this race, it appears. You seem to have been making gains, but slightly dropped a little bit back. Yes, you know, it's not easy the first time here, so we need to get used to it. Uh, with the Code 60s and everything, uh, it's not so easy to get it right. And yeah, it's a good experience, first time here. Uh, it's a nice championship, and let's see, maybe we, are, we will be back. What can you tell us about the McLaren? Oh, it's a nice car. It's a really nice car, English car. A lot of power, uh, high-speed corners, very good. A bit of mechanical uh, problems sometimes, but anyway, we are happy with it. I mean, you really had to st you start you started really from the back of the grid and you worked your way through in the first part of this race, and then in the second today, you've just held station. Yeah, Patrick did an amazing job at the beginning. He went from, I think, B45 or something to top five. 
in the first one and a half hour, so he did really good. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, we had some issues with some track limits uh, on my side, and uh, yeah, but anyway, we are fighting for a podium now, and that's, that's the most important for us. Yeah, Christian's behind the wheel at the moment. What feedback are you getting from him, and what's the sort of plan for the last hour and a half? I don't need to check him because he's doing a good job, always, as always, and uh, I think he can do it. Okay, thank you very much, Norbert. Thank you. Good positive response there. And the reason we have a code 60 is a yellow flag at turn 13 because the Senkia number 444 BMW is beached in the gravel on the outside of the circuit. So that's pretty much uh, going into, but sadly not properly out of, Curb Paul Frere. So the refueling is getting busy. But at the moment, of course, in code 60, they can only refuel half a tank load. So all of those down there have been slightly stifled. So at the start of this Code 60 period, in the lead by 25 seconds, Lauren Heinrich, the 91 uh, Herbert Motorsport Porsche, leading from Anton Duquin, the 26 Audi. 25 seconds is their margin. Roman De Angelis, the best of the rest. But we've got good news. Early June, 10th and 11th of June, we've got an entry list already coming in for the 12 hours of Monza. And uh, some cracking cars in the race down there, both in the 992 Cup class, where we seem to have at least 10, I think I can count 11 cars, and the car leading the race, the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche, most definitely on the entry list, as is the car chasing at home. That'll be down at Monda. That's the number 26, Santa Loc Audi. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we might get the heart of racing Mercedes, because that's shone so well. Not yet on the entry list, but a, a very, very healthy entry list to go down to that wonderful Italian speed circuit that has been going for more than a century now. They won't be using the fabled old banking, but it's such a famous place to go racing. And with the likes of Kessel Racing bringing a Ferrari to play in GT3, that's something new in the mix as well. The McLaren, we've just been talking about... Uh, yeah, to see that on the entry list, but we do have another one, 76, a team from the UK coming down to play. And of course, CP Racing will be there as ever with their Mercedes, hoping for a little bit of better luck than they've enjoyed this weekend at Spa-Francorchamps. They're not yet back into the top 10. They're up to 12th at the moment, but a very healthy entry in both the top GT3 class. But a few new faces uh, coming for the 992, the Porsche Cup class. Joe, you just picked out one as well, on the screen. Yeah, Rabdan Motorsport coming across from the, uh, the Middle East region they were a big uh, player and a uh, big part of the middle east championship that we saw um they were part of the q8 race and then we saw them in dubai and they're joining in with the our usual protagonists red ant racing uh red camel jordans hrt i've got two cars there Billy motorsport who came into this round as the championship leader we'll see how that pans out but uh it's it's uh it's a strong entry list for, uh, you know, another iconic bucket list place to go and race, isn't it? Monza, Monza the 12 hours of, uh, the Hancock 12 hours of Monza as it will be titled. And uh, I know we've raced there before, but uh, that's all about high speed. And I didn't notice if the McLaren was on there. The uh, yeah, we do have a different McLaren. It's oh, from we have this, 76, yeah. car number 76. Well, that's the car that put it, uh, the car on, uh, did that car go on to Paul at Mugello, Nick? That car did do something that was exceptional in uh, in one of our races. But, uh, yeah, we look forward to that. The other classes, of course, TCR and TCX in the Touring Car Endurance Series. The rail kit by Top Car Sport with the Belloc Ruaz and Belloc Diaz, father and son. Ah, but a car that's drawn my eye. GTX class 707, streamline racing from Sweden, bringing a Corvette C7 down oh, to rumble that's, that's got to and, be. and race. GT4, yeah, the, the fabulous mix. Three Mercedes and two BMWs with uh, Team ACP bringing theirs across from the States. Team, A T yeah. Team ACP with Tantrin Associates. Simpson Motorsport didn't get here this weekend. They'll be down at Monza in Italy with their uh, M4 GT4. Three cars in the TCR class. And in TCX, well, this is quite unusual. We have a Ligier as well, one of the JS2Rs, and an M2CS racing entry from Roma Racing, which we have. 37, 37 I counted. Good catch, good yeah. counting. Uh, no, that will be 37 and rising. That's how it works in yeah, the, yeah, the 24 8 Still, series. Yeah, we're in the middle of June. Very busy weekend of motorsport, of course, that uh, weekend of the Hankook 12 Hours in Monza. Well, plenty to think about as this Code 60 goes on. Another thing that needs to be considered, we need to start letting know, people know what's happening, is, of course, the spirit of the race. We're getting to that point in the race in which suggestions ought to be... Any considerations? Have you got any considerations? 
Um, oh, Nick has. Yeah. Do you... While Nick Damon takes the microphone, he has it. Right, dive in, uh, Nick. For me, it's PB Racing in the Lotus. It's the best-looking car. It's got the best access to drivers, and they are just trying to get to the end despite many myriad of problems. That's the spirit of the race for me. I did like the comment from Federico Leo. You, he yeah, run through I the list. Apologies to Valentino. Uh, yes, uh, it's Federico Leo, absolutely correct. Uh, well, they're having, they're having brake issues, they're having drives, they're having gearbox issues, they've had some electrical issues. Um, you know, lots of trouble usually serious. It is Lotus. Um, but they carried on going, and... They're all about you know, the spirit and everything else. What I particularly like is Stefano Das is, is, is apparently is driving virtually all the cars. He's led various overalls to the other drivers. And he's currently driving a Captain America style overall, which he had for his Sonoma World Touring Car visit many, many years ago. That's fantastic. I saw someone leaping around in the background. Of course, Stefano Daste does normally leap around. But the fact, as he said to you on the grid, he was here 2005 in the World Touring Car Championship. He just can't get enough of the great circuits. I think that's a very good call. I think Evo Broikers also deserves a, a look in for, you know, bodily parts uh, failing, being fixed and coming here. But I think the Lotus crew on, is the e very essence. Got to add, Evo Broikers going for the, uh, the bronze uh, surgical operation rather than the gold so that he could race here at Spa. Worth a consideration, as I said. And also, I, I'm just really excited about seeing more crews from around the world coming to play. And the crew uh, who are very well placed, in fact, they're leading the 992 Cup class. Two Chinese drivers have never been to Spa Francochon before, sharing with Adam Christodoulou to show them how, going really well. But I do like the sentiment. Every interview with the, the Lotus crew, to me, has been about the joy, the pleasure, and the desire to go racing. I've got to say, Nix is, is a very, very good choice, very tough one. My, I'm, go, I'm going to throw into the hat, my choice would be Land Motorsport, because when I spoke to Christian Land at breakfast this morning at our hotel, they're staying in the same hotel, and he was still smiling. It, and considering what that team has had thrown at them, the 34 car still in contention for a podium, a class podium, and to just keep on plugging away and keeping that, you know, the spirit in that garage is very much the very essence and spirit of endurance racing. Couldn't agree more, but let's find out. Dai down in the pits has her thought as well, her choice. Well, this, is, uh, this may be a little strange, but I'm going to go for you guys and the commentary team for um, enlightening CB Racing as to an issue they had with the car that they didn't seem to know they had till they actually had to look at it. Ah. Are you allowed to ha accept an award? Uh, I yes. thought you were going to say we can have it because we're doing quite well despite our afflictions, but anyhow. <laughs> I'm not sure we can award the award to ourselves. We'd get it every, every race if we did that. <laughs> it would, yeah. it would well, be rude, but thank you for the sentiment. I, I, I think, think I, it I win the award. To that I'm going to announce, sorry, Di, I'm going to announce I've won the award. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine all those trophies on my, on my, on my trophy cabinet? Oh, yeah. No, what? The first trophy? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> do. <laughs> My trophies date back to before the uh, before the century. Yes. Um, give us your ideas as well. Um, you know, feel free to tweet in like you have been doing, and uh, give us your ideas of consideration. And we'll be announcing the Spirit of the Race Award at about with about 35, 30 minutes to go. We usually uh, we usually make that presentation of the actual trophy. It is an actual physical trophy that we, we award here in the uh, 24 inch series. So it's, um, it, it's, it's well worth a think. You've heard our thoughts. Let us hear your thoughts, please. Back green flag has waved back full speed racing. Anton Ducroix now leading the race because, of course, we had that extra pit stop for the Lauren Heinrich Herbeth Motorsport Porsche. It got caught by a Code 60 when it was already in the pits, could only take on half a tank of fuel. And uh, the gap is uh, flipping around. So Anton Ducroix, Santaloc Junior team, what have we got left on the clock? Just over an hour, an hour and eight minutes remains until today's six hours will be added to yesterday's to complete the 12 hours of spa Francorchamps. Another great event, I must say, run by the 24H series by Creventic. But uh, Ducroix lapping in two minutes, 23s. He's finding the pace that he didn't have before the pit stops. Uh, he's only uh, half an hour into the stint. Lauren Heinrich in second place, but Lauren has set the fastest lap of the race, 2 minutes 20.6. He set the second fastest lap of the race, 2 minutes 20.9. But Roman De Angelis seems to run out at will, 2 minutes 21 seconds lap, but he's uh, down in third place, a lap down, but leading still the GT3 Am charge, and we've only got just over an hour, Joe, 
to see if he can hold on to fourth place overall for an outright podium, but he's only five seconds clear of Christian Kling. In fact, as he's on his outlap, we'd better just check uh, where they, how they come across the line, which one will be in third place overall. So, Bruce, uh, have you mentioned that this is possibly the last time we'll see that man in the on the big road? I'm not, I'm not sure if you, if you said that aspect of, of that last stop for the car. We're now inside of six and seven minutes, and I think the GT3 fuel window around Spa is about an hour and ten. Please tell That's me tight. That yeah, is it, very tight indeed. Uh, often have to keep a look. Well, I said keep an eye on the uh, penalty screen, but uh, one possible penalty is involving uh, the incident involving the 444, the Sankir uh, BMW that ended up down in the gravel at Kerr Paul Frere, and car 11, and that's the one that's been uh, working ever to further towards the front. Alexander Prince, who was chasing down uh, CP Racing's Charles Espen now fighting over 12th place overall. They're about a second apart. I didn't see what pitched the 444 into the spin, but the message, the official message on the screen, suggests that number 11 may have had a role to play in that. The Hofer Racing Mercedes. Yes, and also um, car set 979 to check penalties. 979 time penalty not served within two hours. It's been given a 20 seconds penalty for time penalty not served within two hours. It's got, it's got two of those and the different numbers, so that's 40 seconds um, for the 979, which is, of course, the, that's the uh, speed of a car. That's the uh, Belgian driver lineup: Rodri Guillaume, Nick Donk, Kurt Hensen, Olivier Dong. And the 979 is down in 34th uh, overall, 12th, and the last of the 992 runners. That's had a few problems. It's great to see uh, Nico and Rodrigue back in the series. It's been some time since we saw those two drivers in this series. So hopefully they'll be able to sort that out and, uh, and just get back on with it during the rest of this. We have a proper chase, the battle for third place overall. I wondered if the heart of racing team Mercedes could carry on in that position. It still is third overall, but first in GT3 AM, but uh, it's under four seconds clear of Christian Klein. And last time around, the Austrian racer took a second and more out of the Mercedes. At the moment, they're very similar stint lengths, 41, 42 minutes now for Roman De Angelis in the third place, hard of racing Mercedes, and 39 and a half minutes for Christian Klein in the JP Motorsport McLaren, which seems to be going better and better as the fuel load comes out. Out of the final corner, onto the start, finish straight goes the black and gold McLaren, hunting down a car that can't be that far up the track. In fact, a better lap for Roman De Angelis. A bit of traffic came to play there. And even as Christian Klein dives up the inside into La Source, past the GT4 BMW, he loses a little bit more time. So, again, Joe, we often talk about the ebb and flow of, of, of uh, track position or even lap times. Sometimes it works for you. The last couple of laps, it's worked against Christian Clean, but that McLaren is now starting to go faster and faster. And don't forget, we had that lap not long ago. We lost about five seconds with the Lamborghini having a tyre explode right in front of him as he was going up the Kemmel Strait. So that, that cost the momentum. And at the moment, as the car in third place with... Uh, Roman De Angelis, the heart of racing Mercedes, turns into Le Corbe. One, two, three. Yeah, it's about five second gap back, but three cars, three cars in, in between seconds, him yeah. and the 69 McLaren from JP Motorsport. So for Christian Clean, the next, next lap is going to be very, very frustrating. And you know that that is going to cost Christian Clean some time in that charge down towards the heart of racing Mercedes. He's cleared one car, he's got two more to clear before he's then got. And then uh, actually he's going to have one, two, he's going to have, so there's now again, there's three cars. And that's what we mean by the ebb and flow. Certainly mixed class racing, you've got, it's very rare that we see lap times from a fully clear lap. There's invariably been some sort of lapping of slower class cars within that lap time. So when we do see a green or a purple lap time, then it really is uh, a, a, a lap time that the, the drivers really hard, wor uh, worked hard for. So that gap, last time by, just under five seconds, 4.954 to be exact, might as well call that five. Let's see what it is this time by. They're already through Stavolo now. The heart of racing Mercedes on the run-up, a flat-out run-up to Blanchemont. And then the left-hand kick, which is flat-out, should be comfortable flat-out in the GT3 car. When your tyres are worn, it's not so comfortable. Just going through now, and on the run-up to the bus stop, where heavy braking for Roman De Angelis 
as he turns that car into first the right and then the very, very tight left, almost a hairpin, as I've described earlier. And De Angelis just coming underneath us now, across the line right in front of our commentary box. But he really caught the traffic at the right positions, two Porsche Cup class cars and the... And that's the Juta race, the remaining Juta racing Audi between the McLaren and the Mercedes. The gap goes out, OK, four tenths of a second, but uh, certainly Christian Klein has got to use that straight line speed advantage up the Kemmel straight out of uh, Radion to pick them off and then get clear line of sight for more than half a lap of the tail end of that heart of racing. Mercedes still holding down third place overall, still leading GT3 and by uh, one, two, three, two and a half laps. That's fairly safe. The second car in GT3 am is Tim Vogler, now up to seventh place, the recovery drive from the 34 Land Motorsport Audi. Into Le Combe, and one of the trio of cars in front of Christian Klein has been passed by the Austrian, and that was the Juta racing number 71, the Audi down in 14th place overall. Still two Porsche Cup class between the McLaren and the car he is chasing. His prey, Roman De Angelis, his heart of racing Mercedes. GTX, worth pointing out, still 16th appears to be the traditional position, but we have two tumblers. Car number 90, which is the E2P Porsche. Antonio Sinero has had contact, trying to work out who he was with. He had right behind him Alexander Prince, yeah, I'm afraid Alexander Prince in the Hoffer Racing Mercedes has been involved and has now got going again oh. up at Malmody. But it looks like one side of the car is sitting a little bit low. And uh, for Alexander Prince, he's turning the wheel left and right to get it to uh, any feel for what may be right or wrong. But it's very wrong for the E2P Porsche. It's off at Malmody, sitting deep in the gravel with an hour to go. Yellow flags and now Code 60 has been thrown. Is there any of the front runners in the pits? Not at all. The VDS Racing... Uh, Mark Carr leading GTX is in the pits at the moment, but uh, just coming underneath our commentary position. Red with the famous white and blue stripes up the middle as so many great racing cars have had since the late 1960s. Well, we'll try and make a note, mental note of which cars will come into the pits here, but this might be, Bruce, this might be the last time we see any of our cars in the pits because with now right on the one hour remaining, we are well inside any of the full fuel tank fuel window for any of our classes. So we are, if you are marginal on fuel, you're going to take the opportunity to come in under this code 60, depending, of course, where you are on track right now. Right. The difference between the stint length for our race leading Santa Lock Audi, 39 minutes left, effectively a lap and a half less left in its run than the car that's chasing Lauren Heinrich. Two minutes and 12 seconds. That last code 60 really, really hurt Herbeth Motorsport. And conversely, Santa Lock Junior team, they're running second. Suddenly it became first with that. Wow. And now sitting on a two minute advantage and a very similar stint length into the pits comes our race leader, Anton Ducroix, the 26 Santa Lock Audi. Will Lauren Heinrich follow in? But as I said, he's two and a bit minutes behind. Roman De Angelis comes in from third, the leading car in GT3 Am. Christian Klein still out on the track, but he's probably, knowing the way his last two laps is going to be, he'll have been blocked as well. De Angelis straight through for fuel as well, Bruce, which is what we suspected might happen. So cars, if they need tyres, if the tyres are to the wards the end of their life, this is where they'll take the opportunity. The, I noticed there the, the Santa Lock Junior team choosing to go for tyres. Not sure if they've changed the driver, Binks, he might be down there and can clarify whether or not we will see a driver change. Well, she may see Christian Clean come in because uh, from number 69, McLaren for JP Motorsport in from fourth place. Roman DeAngelo to 27 Mercedes, as we point, reported down to refueling. And Adam Christodoulou, the leading car in the 992 Cup car. So the OK, definite driver change. Thanks. That's confirmation. Christian Clean will be climbing out. Will Norbert Seidel be suited or will it be Patrick Kapinski who climbs back on board? What I can tell you is the number 90 uh, Porsche falling down the order. It has now been removed from the gravel at Malmody. We'll keep an eye out for future penalties. There was a consideration the number 11 Hofer Mercedes uh, might have helped it up there. Well, that, that's a 
that's a class battle that the number 90 was on the podium for the gt3 am class it's now just dropped off the podium with the cp mercedes moving ahead of it on the road and indeed that will now be on the third and final step of that gt3 am podium and the more time that we see the e2p racing car take to get back on the track and as i say that we see that the car has rejoined behind it on the road by when last time by there was only literally nothing in it so those two cars that have had that coming together that was for that was for a position in class that was a class battle and it was for the final step of the podium the car and the drivers that have made uh, uh, and have, have kind of benefited from from all of that kerfuffle is the cp racing boys charles espinlab currently showing in fueling i'm not sure whether he's been in and changed and, and took on tires or whether he's just gone straight for fuel because it, uh, it goes underneath us. But we'll see if the 85, the CP racing car, just coming onto the fueling stop now and taking on fuel, that will take it to the chequered flag. They have benefited from that coming together, Bruce, massively, because they, they will now be on that final step of that GT3 and podium and will spray champagne all over Nick Damon. Well, they do that as a matter of course, quite clearly as well. But uh, for, for Charles Espinal, it actually releases the pressure because he was under severe pressure from Alexander Prince. They just came up to catch Antonio Saniero. They've gone past him and poor uh, Antonio is limping. Well, he's not limping back. He just lost so much time being recovered from the gravel. He'll be back in the pit sometime relatively soon in that E2P racing Porsche. But that's had him tumbling down the orders. Alexander Prince comes into the pits right now. The Hofer Racing number 11 Mercedes. Will he stop or will he go straight through for refueling? Looks as though he's going into a halt in front of his pit garage. He's right up towards the exit of the Grand Prix pits. They're going to check that car over because uh, it seems there might have been uh, some contact up there with the E2P racing Porsche. The Dolly Jacks have been shoved underneath, and I'd expect the number 11 Hofer racing car, yep, as I speak, being turned around and tail end being pushed into the garage. So move up one position, everybody else. And again, under now... When will we restart? I can tell you, under a minute till the end of the Code 60 procedure, who is about to be released from the pit? Who will get going before it's green? The CP Racing Mercedes is released. The uh, Willy Motorsport by Ebby Motors Porsche gets going as well. And the McLaren just eases out right across the nose of the uh, CP Racing Mercedes. And just waiting to see, yes, Patrick Kropinski is the driver who'll take that car. Well, it's his car through to the finish of this race. And the clock keeps counting down. 55 minutes remain. Well, as the clock ticks down, not just to check the flag, but also to the recipient of our Spirit of the Race Award, Dave Alcock agrees with Nick, the Lotus must be recipients of the Spirit of the Race, the audacity of entering a Lotus in an endurance race, especially on a track this demanding and fighting to get it to the checkered flag. Yeah, good point. Uh, Alan Prosser wants to nominate Creventic themselves. Uh, free fan entry to each event, actively encouraging crashed, broken, towed cars to rejoin the race. Free on geoblock stream with the voices of our team. Yep, Alan, can't disagree with you. Tick, and tick, tick. Ian McCarthy, easily overlooked in context of a single round, but I reckon Vortex embody the spirit of the series with consistent local car entries. Have they ever had a straightforward race? Uh, well, Ian, I, I think could classify Vortex as the recipient of the Spirit of the Race Award every single time they bring that car out here. And uh, so, yeah, I would have to agree with that. We'll be announcing that in about 20 minutes. Uh, we'll see who's uh, who's going to lift that trophy when we go down to the pit lane with Dinah Binks and whoever it is that's going to win. It's a bit of a secret at the moment. We are still deliberate and counting the votes. Right. Never, ever think. I never use that phrase. It's just a run into the finish of the race. So we get out of code 60. The green flags are waved. The field comes out of the pits or passes the pits through a Rouge Radion up the Kemmel Strait. And then one of the cars immediately goes for a rotation over the curbs at Le Combe. It was Martin Schluter, the 719 9 or 11 racing Porsche, fourth in GTX. But fortunately for him and everyone else, he didn't properly go into the gravel. He's rejoined and we don't have a waved yellow flag or anything else to sort of stem the flow of this race that's just trying to go through to the finish. Now, leading the race, Santa Lot Racing. 
with their Audi haven't done anything wrong. In terms of outright pace, Lauren Heydrich has found more than they've managed. In fact, the fastest lap for the second place Porsche, the one from Herbeth Motorsport, is one and a half seconds faster than the best of the race leading Santaloc Junior Team Audi. That's car number 26. And that just proves, again, if you get one moment where you're caught out by a code 16, you're wrong place at the wrong time, you can't take a fuel a full tank of fuel or you come in you've got a penalty to serve and uh, if you do it under code 60 it gets doubled so the positioning can change but right now it's Anton Ducat leading the race and uh, just great to have sight on screen at the moment of the Lotus that uh, has impressed Nick so much pressing on pressing on 34th position overall at the moment but things changing quick and fast at the moment simply because cars are coming mainly out of the pits and finding their natural place out on the circuit waiting to see what sort of pace people can achieve in this run-in oh, I've said it already I told myself not to say it. <laughs> two minutes later I fell into my own trap I just dug the hole covered well, it with sticks was, and leaves yeah, and then yeah. in I went there was I went to put my foot in it and you go and do it for me I spoil all my own fun Right, Lauren Heinrich, what sort of lap pace can he get down to? Are we going to see a lap below 2 minutes 20? That would really make my day. He's got to find six tenths of a second. We haven't quite seen a 2.19 yet, have we? And like I said, Bruce, cars coming upon slower traffic, and there are some very, very fast sections of racetrack here at Spa, and the timing of where you find the traffic is crucial to keeping the pace going on with regards to lap times it's going to take a completely free and open lap with traffic free i should say an open lap before we see a 219 and at the moment as we head towards the checkered flag 50 just under 52 minutes to go before we start unfurling that there is still a chance as lauren heinrich needs to make up one minute and 16 seconds to the Sonderlock car. It was indeed Antoine Duquin who stayed up the wheel of the number 26 Audi. What we've seen with um, various Code 60 before is Land Motorsport seems to wait until everyone's visited the pits, and if they know they need a lot of fuel to get to the finish, they wait to the lap afterwards, and that's exactly what's happened now. Tim Vogler's coming from seventh place overall in this recovery drive. Uh, for Land Motorsport in the 34 Audi, and he's got the pits to himself, but more importantly, he's going to have the refueling to himself, so he'll get what he wants without having to stop. And it has been a recovery drive, but for one little uh, leak, oil leak, a most extraordinary one. Explain what happened, Joe, to the 34 Audi, because it was late yesterday, with about half an hour to go. The car was running, I think, in sixth place, and one little plug came loose. Well, they had, a, from the driver's perspective, they had a, a gearbox temperature warning and uh, it was basically because the, uh, the gearbox had lost all its lubrication, so it began to overheat. When they inspected it, they found that the plug, the, uh, the plug that screws into the gearbox, which is what you check the gearbox oil level via, had popped out. And that is just uh, uh, un unheard of. Uh, Christian Land, who's been an Audi customer for over a decade, said, I've never, ever seen that happen. So for it to happen, um, in that fashion is just unheard of and uh, to be honest they're, they're quite lucky that the alarm system worked on that gearbox temp because it would be very easy without any lubrication in the gearbox and with a racing gearbox it's not like your road car gearbox where the, the oil is pretty thick viscosity wise in your road car a racing gearbox the, 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 you just want the barest of lubrication to keep that viscosity down, to keep the friction level down. Um, I mean, in the past, I've known various people, who I'm not going to name because it was against the regulations, run steering fluid in gearboxes. Having to rebuild the gearbox, yeah, after even a 10-lap race, but that's what they did, it reduced the, the drag in the gearbox and, and, and not stifle the engine power. Well, great, great pointer there. Now, as things are sharpening up on the track, the race leader, Anton Ducroix, just puts in the fastest lap of his race, the team's race, in the race leading Santa Lock Audi. That's car number 26. It's bright green and it's very quick. At 2 minutes 21.815 second lap. That is super competitive. Looking at the timing screen, car 909, that's the Red Camel's Jordan 
Porsche running sixth now after that steering uh, problem has also got a message to report the team manager to race control. Hopefully nothing too untoward because that's a car that's been right at the sharp end of that class. But at the moment with Luke Boykers back on board, having taken over from father Evo, it's down his sixth in class. So not too many further problems. Have we got any new penalties at the top of the penalty chart that might affect any of the front runners, Joe? Yes, we've got a car overtaking another car during the code 60 there. A 60-second time penalty for the 403, which is the uh, Atlas BX Motorsports car. That's it's, the Korean uh, entered Mercedes, yeah. and they've lost a lot of time in the pit yeah, garage, so yeah. that's not going to change things too much for them. No, not at all. Uh, car 11 causing a collision. That one's come through. 20-second penalty now for that number 11, the Hofer Mercedes car. Well, it's in the pits at the moment. I wonder if it's serving that penalty. Uh, so that was Alexander Prince, and, of course, it was the E2P racing Porsche that was pitched around there. And that took quite a while to get out of the gravel, and Antonio Siniero got it back to the pits. He's running fourth in GT3 AM, eighth in GT3 class, and 12th overall, but certainly could have done without ending up uh, for probably about a lap and a half stuck in the gravel up at Malmedy. Right, what's happening in the Porsche Cup class? Adam Christodoulou is leading it by 29 seconds. Kobe, that's for the 9.30 entry from HRT performance. Fifth overall, sixth overall and second class. Kobe de Bruyke has been getting better and better in the 9.03 Red Ant Racing entry. So he gained a second and a bit last time around, but 29 seconds to claw back in 47 minutes. That's going to be pretty tricky. He's going to have to have at least half a second and more every lap. And Adam Christodoulou, you feel... Even if Kobe de Bruyke got onto his tail, Adam would just go, OK, I've got enough in hand. Well, you know what, Adam Christodoulou, there's a reason why he's a, a works AMG Mercedes driver at the Nürburgring, and that's because he can produce the goods when he needs to. Kobe de Bruyke has reduced the gap, or he's got the gap, stabilised at 29 seconds. Last time by, he did pull some time on Adam Christodoulou, but only about half a second. And with time ticking by, 46 minutes on the clock, time running out if you if you're gonna just gain half a second couple of tenths here a couple of tenths there you really need to take chunks of time literally you've got to take four or five seconds a lap and pff, good luck with doing that and trying to do that with having just to do it in of anything. yes you don't feel that would be a, an easy target to achieve again just looking for further messages nothing too much coming in but basically the biggest news recently has been car 11 with that uh, penalty and that's dropped it down to 16th position overall so it's fallen behind the gtx class leading vds mark as well and bear in mind he was right on the tails of charles espinard fighting position charles in the cp racing mercedes is now up in 11th so it's cost him five positions and possibly a bit more as well well maybe uh die could pop along to the Hofer racing uh, pit garage because alexander prince who's uh, received a, a, a penalty for causing a collision there, came together with the, uh, the Porsche that he was battling with, and that car now in the pits and receiving some sort of repair. So I'm not sure what the extent of that damage was. We saw the 11 Mercedes making its way back to the pits very, very slowly, so it did incur some damage. And I'm trying to just pick out the, uh, the portrait that it did have to come together with, and I've lost him on the screen. I think it was E2P, it was cut 90, yeah, Antonio Saniero. Yeah, there, the, the, that car's still uh, going round, so that car just tipped into a spin, but damage incurred on the 11. And that was a battle for the, for the for a podium. That was a battle for a class podium there, so it was uh, you know a worthy battle to talk of. What you never need to do in a long-distance race is try and find some drama, but what I've just had a look out the window is suddenly the wind no. is picking up enormously <laughs> down the pit lane here. I'm scanning the clouds we're looking from our commentary position across the start finish straight we can look to our right we can see that source the hairpin no the sky looks okay there it looks fine as we look up right to the distance towards uh, Bruxelles however what we can't see is coming what's maybe coming in from behind the main building in the pits from the opposite direction but suddenly it's got blowy but what we need to look for isn't wind it's whether that wind brings anything and the cameras will pick it up we see the raindrops on the lenses car that's going very well nice to see this one uh, is uh, the Bagheera Racing ZM car the Mercedes uh, for GT4 is leading the class we heard from Alaya Koluch and uh, talking to Nick and now Adam Lacko has taken it over leading the class next car is two and a bit laps back in the GT4 class it's uh, car 488 which is the BMW 10 second penalty for car 930 Adam Christodoulou he's got a gap of 27 seconds take into account that 10 second penalty 
The gap down to 17 seconds. It's track limit infringement for Adam Christodoulou. I want to bring you listeners around the world into the commentary box with us. Suddenly, Joe was scanning the screen for penalties as he leapt up to point to the big screen, because when... You made that sound as though I was lying down. No, no, you were, you were <laughs> sitting down, looking at your screen, and then you leapt up, because suddenly, in that enormously long list of penalties that have come recently, that was one for a front-running car, the car leading the 992 Porsche class, fifth overall, and as Joe pointed out, it was 27, nearly 28 seconds, which was the margin of advantage Adam Christodoulou had for HRT performance with car number 30. But the key to me has been the fact Kobe de Broeker in the 903 uh, entry from Red Ant Racing has been taking time out of him in each of those last few laps. And again, we were just discussing moments ago, weren't we, that Adam could pace it and then step up when he needs to. But the gap's come, come down, it's coming down. Then we've got uh, the penalty as well, so... <laughs> my word. Yeah, drama. The drama, as ever, in the 24-inch series, the 12 hours, the Hancock 12 hours of Spa. The drama going all the way to the flag. And we see more drama for the Leopard car. The Leopard car, another puncture. Another left-hand rear puncture, or was it the right-hand rear punctured last time by the number 10? It was the right I, last I thought, time. I thought that was a replay of the number 10 Leipzig Lamborghini limping round with a flat tyre. This time it's the left-hand side. And who's at the wheel of that? It's Leopard Brendan 10? Leach again. Oh, Brendan Leach, two punctures for Brendan. And that car currently showing in 16th spot. Yeah, and, and tenth in GT3, so still, you know, yeah. well up there. But he's going to have uh, Luke Broikers go past. That Luke will move up to 16th place. Luke's sixth in the Porsche Cup class for the Red Camels Jordans team, so he'll gain that position. So such frustration for the Leipzig Motorsport crew with their Lamborghini. And again, that puncture comes very early in the lap, and to have to limp your whole way up the uh, Camel straight to the top through Le Combe, through Malmody, negotiate the really tricky double right-hander as you go downhill at Bruxelles. But uh, travelling back in, the reduced bit pace at which the Kiwi driver has to travel is just so, so tricky. Down in the pits, Di, what news have you? Just been into Hoffa Racing number 11, and they've got a broken suspension, so that car is retired into the garage. I had a look around to see if I could find Michael but, or any of the other drivers, but they're not there. I think they're in their truck getting changed and bringing this question. So, pretty empty garage there, but the car is, is definitely in the retard. It was 12th position, the battle that was being fought for. It was CP Racing, it was Charles Espinal, but being pushed so hard by Alexander Prince. And then, of course, in the middle of that, they were catching E2P racing Porsche. The Porsche was spun around, and uh, there was penalty coming the way of the number 11 crew, but penalty enough is retiring from the race. Thank you, Di, for picking up that suspension damage there. And already, while it's in the pits, Alexander Prince's Hofer Racing Mercedes, car 11, as we mentioned, dropping down the order. And uh, soon, it's step up everybody else. The next car to pass it should be the 919 Black Falcon Porsche. As we speak, the American racer Matt, Ke Matt Kehoe moves up a position at the expense of the 11 Hofer Racing Mercedes. Another penalty being given out, this time to the 967 Roberto Pampanini in the HRT performance, fifth in the 992 class. And we've got the 58, the Gosner car. Pulling off the circuit at Malmody, it was very slow through the right-hander, so presumably something happened at Le Comp and the green car with a new black bonnet to replace the one that blew against the windscreen yesterday after a collision at La Source. Car not looking as it was when it left the garage yesterday, just before lunchtime to start the first six hours of this race. Got going again, the car was repaired overnight, but alas, going nowhere now, parked at the side. It of the circuit. Yellow flag at turn seven, but the car is off the track. Now, just taking a look at the times at the front of the field, matters not, they're very, very similar. The pace of Anton Duquin in the 26, Santa Lock Audi, and Lauren Heinrich in the 91 Herbert Motorsport car. That lost out with the last code 60. The gap between them, though, is not surely going to be surmounted in the last 40 minutes. It's one minute and 16 seconds between first and second. The cars, their stint length is identical bar one second, so wow. there's no particular advantage to be gained. And it was that extra pit stop that had to be served by the 91 Herbert Motorsport crew that's taken them out of the lead, dropped them to second, and with Anton Duquin really finding form in that race-leading Santa Lock Audi, it's getting harder and harder to see anything other than victor, victory for Santa Lock Racing. But we do have... 
just under 40 minutes. More penalties to talk about. 10 seconds track limit infringement for the 69 McLaren. Patrick Kopinski, that's the sixth infringement, sixth, inf sixth offence, I should say. So that car will take in a 10 second penalty. That's not going to affect it too much. Uh, certainly in the GT3 class, it's fourth overall. It was chasing down a overall, an overall podium position, um, but it's solid in the GT3 class podium position. The other car, the 929, 18th offence for another 20, uh, 10 second penalty for the number 929, which is, just scanning down the order, Nick, Nick uh, Panu in the HRT car, that currently is in the, that's third, third place in the 992 AM class. So again, another class podium position, and uh, that's got a big gap, one minute 45 to the next car, to it, which is uh, in the 19th overall, Matt Keogh in the Black Falcon team. Porsche currently fourth in the 992 AM class. Another message, official message from Race Control is uh, team manager of car 90 to report to Race Control. That was the E2P racing Porsche that ended up in the gravel and had to be towed out up at uh, the top of the hill at Malmody Curve. Of course, the car that uh, clashed with it and 11. Hoffa Racing Mercedes had to return to the pit garage, was awarded a penalty, and now has retired anyway. But even though the delayed Antonio Sonero going around in fourth in GT3 AM, eighth in the GT3 class in that number 90 Porter is still circulating, lapping at decent speed, there is a potential problem ahead of them. Or maybe it's a case of putting the full stop on the sentence. We do not know, but there is a message, the message from race control to the number 90 crew. Uh, you did mention it a few minutes ago, Bruce. I think we've been incredibly lucky considering where we are and considering what the weather forecast was saying. It was going to be another day of uh, on and off torrential rain. However, what we've had today is a perfect race condition. Consistently dry, ambient temperature pretty high. I think it's been a sort of low 20 degrees out there. And uh, perfect racing condition. The threat of rain ever present, as it always is at Spa. But you know what? I think we can get through the next 36 minutes or so without seeing uh, even more drama being created by a weather change. We've got enough drama to contend with without any kind of weather interfering with the script we've got in front of us. Uh, absolutely so. But uh, what's impressing me these last few laps, Anton Ducroix leading the race, wound himself up to do some very quick laps, two minutes 22. He settled in at sort of two minutes 24 flat. He's sitting on a tidy advantage in the Santinot Racing Audi. Lauren Heinrich just waiting for him to cross the line as a complete what would be lap 236 for him and his Herbeth Motorsport Porsche. But whatever Doqua is doing, Heinrich may gain a second a lap on him. Hasn't been that much. It was actually last time around, but uh, the clock keeps counting down. 35 minutes remaining. Oh, the Gossner Motorsport, well, the MP Motorsport Gossner family Mercedes has got going again, so that's... Uh, going back, well, maybe towards the pits, but it was going nowhere when it parked on the grass on the exit of Malmody, but that's uh, keeping out of the way. Better have a quick look at what's happening in the other classes. Porsche Cup class car, Adam Christodoulou leading that. We've still got the potential of the penalty, but the gap has come down and down. It's 22 seconds is margin. Each lap, Kobe de Broeker is closing that's in. 12 seconds. 12 seconds taken in, not too many penalty. laps at all. Adam's just playing, or is he? Fifth and sixth overall, but uh, first and second in the 992 Cup class. Third in that class is Willie Motorsport by AB Motors, and that's Sabino De Castro at the wheel at the moment. A further lap down on them. GT3 Am, third overall, Roman De Angelis leading that class. GT3 Pro-Am, seventh overall. Matthias Besch has had very little time in the Modena Motorsports Porsche, but uh, he's lapping very tidily in that, as one might expect. Working down the classes, Nick Geelan leaves the Belgian racer, leads... GTX in 15th position overall in the VDS Racing Adventures Mark car. Moving down to another class, TCR, Magnus Home Guard, the 102 Home Guard Motorsport Cupra still in front in that class. Adam Lacco leading for Bagheera ZM Racing in GT4. And actually, one class we haven't talked about for a short while is TCX and Heiko Eichenberg leading that in the SRS team. Saw Sport Porsche, that's car number 227. It's been lapping very tidily all day, and that's a Porsche cable. As that gap does begin to come down, considering Adam Christodoulou has to face a 10-second penalty, he's got 22 seconds, reduce that by 10 seconds, 12 seconds is going to be the gap next time by, as Adam Christodoulou in the 9.30. We've got GM Lippmann and Sport 21 to 
uh, to thank for seeing Adam Christodoulou in a Porsche rather than a Mercedes. He was part of putting that deal together. Sport 21, GM, who we miss dearly in this series. Hopefully he will uh, be back very, very shortly. But uh, great deal and a big thanks for seeing that Mercedes superstar racing with us. What is the gap then? He's just crossed the line as Christodoulou. 233 laps. Let's wait for the gap to Boyka. Just wait right 20 seconds for that to happen until right, he comes yeah. through. But if we could get JM Littman onto another project, perhaps he could get. I'd like to see a Bentley racing in the future round. The CP Racing Mercedes has oh. just been off. That's at La Source. Who was immediately behind? Charles Espinal. Uh, nobody in class was close to him, but there's been contact. The rear end of that uh, Mercedes looks uh, really rather worse for wear. Going up to La Source. Well, it looks as though, well, there was contact with the Porsche Cup class car, and then the, Por the Mercedes ran the whole way through the gravel. No, he's clipped the back of the Porsche Cup class car by the looks of things, but then bringing a whole load of gravel onto the track as the CP Racing Mercedes comes back on. The Porsche is nose in to the wall on the inside of the track at the La Source hairpin. So just over half an hour to go, and that may well lead to code 60. Debris on the track if at this, the top of the hill. Bruce, if this race hasn't been drama enough, guess who's just been given a 10-second penalty? Uh, Anton Ducan, car 26, race leader. No? Kobe de Broica. Kobe de Broica, as he's catching Adam yes. Christodoulou in the Porsche Cup class battle. The, the gap is 21 seconds. We've been calling that 11 because of Christodoulou's penalty. Now de Broica has been given a penalty, so it is 21 seconds. Now, Charles Esper now with the contact up at La Source, he dives down the hill, and the front splitter on the front right-hand corner is Mercedes falling off. There's still debris up at the entrance to La Source. There's debris at Eau Rouge. And it uh, looks as like there's bodywork rubbing, battered bodywork rubbing, and there is no surprise, a code 60 thrown with 32 re minutes remaining in this race. We'd like to see a further replay of what exactly <laughs> happened to the CP Racing Mercedes and which of the Porsche Cup class cars was given a clatter up the tail into La Source. So even at this late stage in the race, nearly 11 and a half out of the 12 hours completed, the drama continues to come. Great work by the marshals running in to pick up many bits of torn and battered bodywork on and just off the racing circuit up at La Source. Who is writing these scripts? I mean, drama all the way, pretty much almost to the flag, 30 minutes remaining. We go code 60, everything slows down, we catch our breath, and we've got battles down to the flag in pretty much all of our classes. The leader is into the pits. Now, whether he will come straight through, just going underneath us now, he goes past his garage and onto fueling. So Antoine de Quinn, with 30 minutes remaining, did not have fuel to get him to the flag. He needs that now. He he goes by, we'll keep an eye out of the window. This is old school circuit comms, Bruce. Keeping an eye out of the window to see when Lauren Heinrich in that Herbeth Motorsport Porsche, car 91, when will he come by? Well, bear in mind that when we looked at their stint length, it was only one second apart. One second difference in stint length. Lauren Heinrich has just gone past us at a stint that uh, was one hour and five minutes. It's about right then, isn't it? It is about right. The front end of the CP Racing Mercedes, front right corner of the bodywork has just fallen off, been pulled away after that contact at the source. Whether it's affected the steering, quite hard to tell. Bits of tape flapping on the front of that CP Racing Mercedes. Second in GT3 Am, sixth in GT3, tenth overall, but that surely must be coming back into the pits for repair. Still under code 60, of course. The, the stint length was about 65 seconds for Decoin, but he had been in the pits for fuel before and tyres at his last pit stop. So I wasn't sure just how much... It, it all depends on how much fuel he's got on board. And I, was that under code 60? I can't, there's so much happening. Oh, well, there's so, so much happening because right down at Kerb Paul Frere, as the cars are coming back under code 60, there's a car that's doing about code 20. It's a yellow and green BMW. It's TCL Motorsport, four, car number 48, 488 from the GT4 class. So even within a problem period of the race, there are further problems for some of the crews in this closing final half hour of 12 hours of racing. The marshal's working very hard indeed to clear the circuit from anything that is sitting on it in terms of sharp elements at all points where there's been contact, and most certainly at last source has been some as well. We've got a third offence warning for the number 91 Herbeth car. 
Lauren Heinrich, he's been warned for a track limit infringement, not being given a penalty, but if he does it again, he will invariably take 10 seconds. So that's going to that's gonna put all of that great work that he's done, it's going to put that straight into the garbage bin. So we'll keep an eye on that. The number 26 is out of the pits. And that now, that car, the 26 Sontalock Junior Team Audi R8 is out of the pit road and on towards the Kemmel Strait. That's now got fuel to go to the checkered flag. Never, ever relax as a team manager. Don't go, we've got uh, three quarters of this race behind us, take it to the finish. So just one incident that came out of almost nowhere can suddenly affect things. You might have thought you wanted to come in, as you say, just for a little splash and dash. But if it means you can only take half of that splash, that probably becomes two splashes. You'll have to come round, come in the next time around. The CP Racing Mercedes that was uh, one of the parties uh, to the tangle up at La Source has just gone around the inside of La Source, but in the pit lane. So uh, Charles Espenaub has brought that in. And that means Max Edelhoff moves up into 10th place in the number, the Land Motorsport Audi, car number 34. That had its problems yesterday, but only one problem, and it dropped that cost them a lot of time, a problem with a plug in the gearbox. But for that, that could have been challenging for a top five position to at least achieve something here And uh, for Land Motorsport. Three cars, two of them have had problems. Yellow flag still at turn one. Turn one, of course, is last source here at Spa-Francorchamps. And it uh, looks like the marshals, at least on turn in, are out of the way. Penalties, we'll get back to them. And the CP Racing Mercedes rejoins the race. It ran in and through the pit lane, and it's back out onto the track all over again. Charles Espenab continuing on his way, but uh, the run through the pits will have cost them position. Out on the track, it's still code 60, still waiting for any message to tell us we're about to be released. We get one that says we'll be released within a minute, so we've still got time, but that really is quite a tattered, battered yeah, Mercedes now, car number 85 CP Racing. You know, they were having a super clean run yesterday, then incidents occurred, but really it's today that set them back. They started a lap down in sixth today, and it's just not been their day for CP Racing. It's missing a right front wing. The team will have mm. had a look. They've had a visual inspection of that and gone, look, 26 minutes to go. Get back out there. We can deal with the lack of aero on that uh, on that Mercedes. Uh, just get out there and get it to the flag. One minute to the end of Code 60 procedure. So we will go green. And personally, Bruce, I hope that we stay green all the way to the flag. Let's have a straightforward run to the flag. Yeah, that certainly would be very, very good indeed if that could be the case. So let's see. But as we've seen, every time we rejoin, things can go a little untoward. We saw just last time around the uh, 9 on to 11 Porsche got to the top of the hill just as the flag was waved to get it green and had it spin on it. So now the flag is waved. The cars suddenly pick up the pace again, looking at a group of them going through a Com. In fact, the very point at which that 9 on to 11 uh, racing Porsche had that little moment. And Charles Espinel continues to press on now. His car not looking as beautiful as it did at the start. The bodywork in the front right hand corner clearly affected by the contact and rear end damage on that Mercedes as well. But let's go down to Diana. We're right up the other end of the pit lane, and it's time for us to announce the Spirit of the Race Award. And Peter Fry from Preventic joins me to, to make the presentation. You've probably got no idea what's going on. Uh, no, but... Uh... <laughs> OK, well, we always award the Spirit of the Race Award, and we're awarding it to PB Racing this weekend because of your, your look, your, you know, your commitment, the pit stops, the problems that you've had on track that you've recovered from and you're still running. For me, the first time that I drive this car, it is a project. A project is a, like a, it is a prototype. So the only only car in the world. They did a great, great work. It is our stop are longer than the others. It's really hard. We we are without brakes in the, in the, in the race now. We had a, a problem with the drive out. But we want to finish the race, so now we have to keep hard and uh, we want to fight. 
Well, you're a great bunch of people. It's been a joy working with you this weekend. And Peter, if you would like to present this. This is the spirit of the Race Award. It's not only for you, it's of course for the whole team, because that's the idea behind it. The spirit of the Race Award, you, will, you win it with the whole team. So this one for you. Congratulations. You share it with the Thank you. Well, it's, that's a good chance for Federico Leo to really understand the spirit of this whole series as well. I also think that that's kind of a, 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 a trophy that you've won, because that was your nomination, Nick, so you've won. It's good to win occasionally, something. <laughs> Normally I get ignored for my, my, my ideas, but I've won, I'm a winner! Well, the PB Racing team has won, Nick, you just nominated them. So while the award was being presented, there was a spin up at turns five and six. That, of course, uh, is uh, Le Comp. And the trophy, the Spirit of Race trophy, is now deep in the PB Racing Garage. And the uh, team looking on and going, hey, that's all right. That's an added bonus. But up at turn five and six, again, it catches people out in the wet. It catches people out on the dry. And unfortunately, right out against the barriers, the car with the best race livery of the lot, the 992 Porsche, celebrating the, the, the celebratory colours of 75 years of Porsche. The Porsche Baltic entry is hard up against the tyre wall at the back of the gravel trap. But the good news is just enough traction for the 992 to get going all over again. So good job in recovery from Neri Daiglis uh, for the Porsche Baltic team. But uh, even now, OK, one of the driver, driver's door mirrors, it's been rubbed back against the tyre wall. And that car continues on its way with its multi-coloured -covered, race livery. But let's hope no one attacks down the right-hand side of the car because the driver won't see them coming. Yes, he's probably thinking of it. In fact, there's not even a mirror in it now, so even if he did twist the, the mirror back in the position, he wouldn't be able to see out of it. Uh, 22 minutes then remaining before we unfurl the checkered flag. We've still got Antoine Duquet at the wheel in the Sonderlock Junior Team Audi. We're just waiting for Lauren Heinrich to continue his charge onto the rear wing of that Audi. The gap will have come down ever so slightly. We saw the number 26 Sonderlock car pit under code 60, and that gap will come down, not as much as it would have if he'd had to pit under green, so that code 60 really paid dividends for De Quinn. Heinrich due to come underneath us, and we will see exactly what gap we're dealing with. There he goes. Underneath us now, 40 seconds, Bruce, is the gap between first and second, and with 21 minutes to be exact to go, I think... He's not going to do that. 2.22.9 was Heinrich's chasing time. 2.24.1. So he's took, he's what? He's took a second and a bit out of him, but with 40 seconds margin, that's a big, big ask. Can we just have absolute clarification? No late penalties have come into effect, either the Santa Lock 26 Audi or the 91 Herbus Motorsport Porsche. And have all the others been served? Remember, the 91 has got a warning for a third offence. That's so what if, I was thinking. I if, wondered if that had manifested itself well, it's one a, further. It's a big ask. Lauren, uh, off you go, mate. Flat out, but don't go over the kerbs. That's why we're up here. And Everyone loves a challenge. And certainly Lauren Heinrich at the front end of his career where he will be pushing as hard as he can. But I think Anton Ducan has really grown into this Audi, the Santa Lock car, car number 26. And uh, he's been able, not quite as fast as the chasing Lauren Heinrich, but he's put some very tidy laps in. His best was a one minute, tw sorry, two minute, 21.8 second lap. And that is very, very competitive. Still the fastest lap of the race, two minutes, 20.624 seconds. Belongs to the chasing Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Doesn't look as though we'll see laps as fast as that in the closing handful of minutes here at spa Francorchamps, It's been a fabulous couple of days here. Yesterday we had every form of rain, wet rain, dry rain, in between rain, rain at the top, rain at the bottom. And we thought, well, haha, -ha, you all managed to do incredibly well and survive that, but wait till tomorrow, wait till Sunday, it's going to be heavy rain. We've had a few sprinkles, yeah. that's your lot. That's a good point, actually. Yesterday's rain wasn't forecast, today's rain was forecast, it doesn't appear. Maybe it came early, that's the only thing I can think that the rain moved quicker than what the uh, weathermen thought it would. But for all the crews thinking, gosh, we somehow survived without our cars ending up in a gravel trap yesterday when it wasn't really forecast, and yet it kept on blowing through to various degrees. But they must be thinking, oh, gosh, if we survived yesterday, are we going to manage today? But almost uniformly dry. And even at this very late stage in the race, we've got some cracking battles around the circuit. We surely don't want any more fallers. We just had that moment 20 minutes ago up at La Source that uh, really affected the CP racing crew. But Charles Espinal with the tattered bodywork on that CP racing Mercedes still heading for third place.
place in the AM class of GT3. He somehow got away with it a bit, I'd suggest. Well, we've got a bit of a, a, a race recap with Nick Damon and Diana Binks on the podium at the end of this race. Now they're going to quantify all of this Hankook 12 hours of spa in that uh, two or three minutes that they will have is going to be a big ask for them as well because there's been so much drama. We had championship leader and the Magello winner, Hass RT. Their Audi went out with uh, a big damage and two hours lost in the pits. We had the Land Audi, the 55, Christopher Meeks at the wheel of that car. Uh, things began to go awry for that. They were one of the main contenders. And then we've had all kinds of drama that has uh, ensued. Um, it still left us with quite a, a dramatic finish to this race. Um, Roman De Angelis, currently in third place overall, just off that lead lap with the Heinrich driven Herbert Porsche. He's chasing down the leader, the Sonnenlob Junior team of Adam de Croix. That's the Audi being chased by the Porsche. Gap down to 38.2 seconds. It's just not enough with that massive gap. And what have we got on the clock? 18 minutes of racing. And that is not very many laps around Spa. The 992 class, perhaps, as ever, arguably, not even much of an argument, really. It's the most competitive class in the 24 inch series. And that gap of 19 seconds is exactly what it is. 9.30 is the number of the HRT Performance Porsche. The 9.03 is the Red Ant Racing car of Kobe De Broica. And both of those cars will incur a 10-second penalty. That's not going to affect where they are first and second in the 992 class. Because third place, Sabino De Castro in the Vinnie Motorsports by EB Motors Porsche. Currently third, he's about just under a minute behind those guys. In fact, he's a lap down and a minute. So he's, uh, it's going to be a run to the flag for 992 on this between two cars. Barring mistakes, these two will continue going and continue to back the doubt. They're very, very little, if anything, in their lap times. Last time by De Boyka, he took nearly two seconds out of Christodoulou. And you've just got the feeling that Adam Christodoulou, who is uh, very experienced and very, very fast, racing driver is just basically pacing himself knowing how much time is left you just got the feeling that adam is pacing i think you said that a few minutes ago that you just can see adam just ticking off the ticking off the laps yeah i flipped over the page from my pre-race notes and he's performing according to the, the plan according, yeah. that i'd hatched for him but yeah. yes that's what you expect from a top pro yes the gap is coming down likewise the gap between first and second is coming down it's 37 and a half seconds now but anton de Crown, very impressed if they said do two minute 24s, that's what he seemed to do. That was enough. He just mistakenly went to do a two minute 23.4 <laughs> second lap. But I've been really impressed the way he settled in. And also, for Anton, a lot of his racing hasn't got a lot of racing. He's been in LMP3 cars. He's come here into GT3. Yeah. He's come to Spa Frankenshaw. He's gone through the dreadful, mixed, eternally changing weather of yesterday. Here he is having to close down the end of the race with Lauren Heinrich with his tail up giving chase. That's a pressure. He may not be in his tail, as we say, 37 seconds behind. They cannot see each other, but it's there. It's a pressure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean all right, I'm, I'm saying 37 seconds is a very, quite an insurmountable margin. However, we take for granted that these drivers in these cars are pressing pedals and turning steering wheels. And all it takes is for you to press the pedal, lift off the throttle to press the pedal two, three metres too late and you are off the track into the gravel and that 37 seconds can disappear in literally a blink of an eye. But what Antoine de Crown will know is at this point it's better to lose two seconds in a lap, three yeah. seconds in a lap. Don't put yourself on the outside of a battling duo say at Bruxelles, because uh, the outside will just welcome you into that deep, deep gravel trap. But one of the glories now, I think, and uh, certainly discussing this with John Hindhoff recently, is uh, more gravel traps around the side of the track actually encourage people to stay on the track and not take as many risks. Before, when they could run off and pretty much get away with uh, possible time penalty for exceeding track limits. But now there are more consequences, as it should be, particularly in a circuit like Spa. So drama continues with 25 plus 7, that's 32. 32 seconds between the number 85, CP Racing Mercedes, who is on the final step of the GT3 Amp podium, being chased by the E2P Racing Porsche, and add in a 20-second time penalty for the number 85, causing a collision that gap has come down to 12 seconds 12 seconds and small change and last time around the chasing 
Antonio Sinero in that number 90 E2P racing Porsche. It took a mere four seconds. If he can keep on doing that, he's got time with uh, just under a quarter of an hour. If he continues that, three laps. And there's 14 minutes to go, so he's got just enough time to get those three laps in. But how do you think Charles Espinal's CP Racing Mercedes field? I mean, it's missing its front bodywork in the front right-hand corner. There's been contact at the back as well, and don't... <laughs> it, it, it may even be tracking somewhere on the front end, the, the geometry. I mean, we take, we're take we very delicate with how we set cars up, with millimetres making the biggest difference in ride heights and uh, and tracking toe in, toe out on the front. And uh, there, the number 30, uh, sorry, the number 85 Espen Lab car going round without any sort of front end on that right hand side. That will be causing him, no doubt, performance on the Kemmel straight. It's such a long uphill straight. It's like putting an umbrella out of the window of your car and feeling how much force it's going to take. All of that air going into that wheel arch will be stifling the top end of that car. But also, in any distance of race, the closing laps, when you start, particularly a long race, start to wonder about little noises you're hearing. There must be a whole host of noises that the CP Racing Mercedes is making because of bits of bodywork being loose or missing. They'll be there just to haunt Charles Espinel a bit, but I think he's got enough in hand, surely, to finish on the podium in GC3 Amp. He is in 11th overall, he's still behind Max Overhoff, but I'm sure he's got enough in hand to keep Antonio Sinero behind him. But just remember, the gap was coming down, coming down, 20 seconds to serve it. Well, the gap between them was 11.8 seconds last time around. Coming down, if he takes another four seconds, then suddenly it's getting into quite scary company. It really is. It, it, perhaps, uh, just to uh, change the subject slightly, um, a big contender for the Spirit of the Race Award and very, very close second to the BB uh, Racing Lotus was Evil Breukers, who, uh, by his own admission, hit the inside of the wall at the source with a very out-of-character driver error. That's what caused that damage on the car. And just to remind everybody, Evil, just last week, was in hospital being treated for a burst appendix. And I jokingly said he chose the bronze level of medical treatment against the gold because he knew the gold level of a treatment would have been uh, him in hospital for a fortnight or in a, in a bed. So he went, yeah, just do the minimum, just make me better. And here he is. So I think we'll allow him to hit that wall on the inside of the source, considering he should really be taking it easy. I wonder which people in the world have the shortest recovery time before they return to normal. I think racing drivers are right up there. When they're told they've got six months off to recover, they'll make it make it back to the circuit in two. But I'm sure Ivo Broikers is going to feel tired like never before by the time he's got to the end of this one. Luke Broikers is uh, taking the car through to the finish in sixth place in the Porsche Cup class. Leading the Porsche Cup class, Adam Christodoulou. Kobe de Broika comes in from second place into oh. the pits goes under us so he's not going down to refueling he's going down to stop in front of his garage what is going to go on there well what that has done is taken the pressure right off Adam Christodoulou right so they're changing the right rear tyre on that number 903 that's the only tyre they've changed I suspect they've had a pressure warning and he's had a slow puncture on that car is that going to affect it's certainly going to affect the challenge yeah. on the overall 992 class. He was slow in, his lap was 2 minutes 47 rather yeah. than about 2 minutes 27 he'd been doing. Now, don't forget, we had debris up at the up at La Source not so long ago. Very likely, it might have just been a slow puncture out of that. He's in no risk to Bruce of losing that second place in the 992 class. The third place car is a lap down from where he is, Sabino de Castro in the Vili Motorsport by EB Motors Porsche, chasing that car down. But it's a big, big ask for the 955 number car to regain a lap and then challenge Kobe de Broca. How many fingers are they holding in front of you? Five. Five. That was the gap that will be, with the 20 seconds being added to Charles Espinel's uh, SP, CP racing car, that means Antonio Sanero with uh, 10 minutes remaining on the clock, is only five seconds in arrears. Keep an eye on that. Charles Espinel, he wants to push as hard as he can, but not too hard, because some of the front splitter is dragging on the track in front of the 85 CP Racing Mercedes. I'm sure he'll get to the finish in that, but it's not going to be comfortable. The big question is, drop your pace a little bit, but not too much, because certainly uh, Antonio, Antonio Saniero, the number 90 Porsche in 12th place, is catching him by three, sometimes four seconds a lap. It's going to be nip and tuck, and it's going to be so tight at the end to get that final place on the GT3 and podium. At the moment, Charles Espinal is clinging on to that. It's quite important, because they get to meet Nick Damon up there and spray champagne all over him. Do you think he'll back out on the final lap? <laughs> he may just... He may just... Uh, we'll not tell him that. We'll not tell Charles Espinal that. Right, of course, the team's all told that Park Ferme will be 
on the start finish straight, not in the refueling area. After the race, so many regulations the team managers have to keep on top of. This it's not hard enough to run a car through 12 hours of racing, two, gra two great big chunks of six hours here at Spa-Francorchamps through all sorts of mixed weather. But Anton Ducoin and Santalot racing, sitting 34 seconds to the good looking very tidy indeed. Very quick laps from Lauren Heinrich. He's down in the two minute 22s yet again, but just no chance of uh, hauling that gap down. Over half a minute to go uh, in terms of advantage with eight and three quarter minutes remaining. So job surely done for Anton Duquan. But then again, we just saw the car that was second in the Porsche Cup class car uh, come in with a puncture or at least a tire that was deflating. Could happen to any of the others out there, despite the marshals doing a great job in clearing up. I hope, I, I do hope, I do hope we don't see anything like that because oh, that's, so do not, I. that's not just drama, that's just heartbreak. And you know what? All of our teams, all of our drivers, all of our competitors, everybody here, the officials, the marshals, we've all had a fabulous Hankook 12 hours of spa. The drama has been never ending. I mean, yesterday we saw all sorts of weather, track incidents, uh, cars coming together, some fantastic racing all the way down the field in all of our classes. We've, we've not mentioned TCE for a little while, and to be honest, the TCE class has been pretty much dominated, and I'll say dominated, by the Cooper Leon of Home Guard Motorsport. The Home Guard team, Car 102, has held on to that TCE lead pretty much from very early stages of yesterday and they've been chased down the gap is two minutes 11 now down to the uh, back to the number 121 Ibis Valors now at the wheel of the Wolf Power Audi RS3 gosh even at this late late stage in the race seven and a bit minutes remaining we've got pit visitors Patrick Coles brought the 427 Lion Speed Porsche Cayman that's second in GT4 in for a pit stop but he was only 11 seconds clear of third place 488 BMW surely that's going to be a place change incredible incredible tactics from Wolf Power the 121 car was at 1.2 laps behind that home guard car they've pulled that back now to be two minutes and 11 seconds that's on the lead, that's on the leader's lap. Now I know the home guard car will have been just stroking at home, um, but that's still quite a tactical feat to get your car, not just one lap back, but two laps back. Uh, a phenomenal effort there from the, uh, from the Wolf Power Audi team. So the Lion Speed, Porsche Cayman slowly, slowly down past the heritage pits, as you call them, the old Grand Prix pits on the drop from last source to the foot of the hill at Eau Rouge. Is that for refueling? It reported to the pits, it went out again. There are possibly still some uh, penalties uh, flying in for people exceeding track limits. Will there be a fourth warning and any further problem for Lauren Heinrich? He had uh, he was three warnings, wasn't it, for the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche. Heinrich at the moment has no time for any of that. Flashing his lights, he picks off the sole Toyota in the race from Swift Racing events and continues on his way, but he's more than 30 seconds down on Anton Duquin. Anton backed it off on the previous lap, doing precise, precisely what we discussed, I'm sure. Joe just thinking, no point taking a risk, lose a few seconds around the outside of some of the tail-enders, and you can pace this to the finish. Five and a half minutes remain, so we've very nearly had 12 hours of racing, half of it on Saturday, the second half today here on Sunday. This great circuit just offering some brilliant place to go racing for all these drivers no wonder we have 50 cars desiring to take the start here and it's been cracking two days of racing well, the season started last month in Mugello where we saw the SRT Audi take the victory it's looking very much like round two of the 24 inch series European Championship is going to be another Audi victory with five minutes remaining on the clock the Sondelov junior team car at one point didn't look like they were in contention for an overall win. In fact, I would have gone so far as to say this morning when we did the, the restart for the second, the se uh, the second section of uh, six-hour racing, I thought the car with the biggest chance of an overall victory was the heart of racing Mercedes. It had a very, very strong driver lineup, and I'm not quite sure, again, another sterling effort from the Herbeth team to get that car into the lead of this race, and it was... It was a penalty that the car took that put it out of the lead of the race and behind the Sonderlock car. And 
I can't remember what the penalty was for now, Bruce, was it? You'll have to scroll back through yeah, 350 uh, penalty issues. Uh, yeah, come back to me on No that, time please. for that in the final four minutes yeah. or so of this race. But, you know, so many good races get scuppered by the timing of a Code 60. On this occasion, it's cost, surely, Herbeth Motorsport outright victory. They're only 26 seconds down, but the extra pit stop to get the following lap after one pit stop that was restricted fuel take on board because it was under code 60 meant the Herbeth Motorsport had to come in all over again and for Lauren Heinrich instead of pacing it through to victory in the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche he's chasing down Anton Duquan but the clock has nearly counted down to nothing the gap still 26 seconds between them so that is the single element that's cost Herbeth Motorsport yet another win in this championship there have been such stalwarts in the series always at the front end their Porsche's always super spectacular and getting used to this new car for 2023 but for Santelot junior team they don't just busy themselves with circuit racing this weekend they've got cars out in rallies as well and very very busy there's a great big race meeting for them in France the French GT championship uh, this weekend as well but they brought a car here and it's going to come home surely as the race victor this could be a podium position that is about to slip out of the hands of cp racing they are into the pits they are being chased down by the e2p racing porsche for the final step of the podium of the gt3 and class charles espinlove has had to bring that mercedes onto pit road he files past his garage and makes his way to the fueling area and next time by, we will see the E2P Racing Porsche will overtake the CP Racing Mercedes for that final step of the GT3 AM class positions. So, as we say, as we've been seeing, the drama quite literally all the way to the chequered flag. We've got less than three minutes. We're coming up very shortly. I'll be able to see in less than two minutes. So very soon we'll be on to the final lap of our 12, Hancock 12 hours of Spa. As the leader, the 26, Antoine Duquen. And he's got it in the bag now because onto the pit road has come the 91. And it's a rear left, oh, sorry, a right rear puncture on the 91 Herbert car. Let's go down and die for a report. We're just in the pit lane. 91, as you quite early said, came into the pit lane, gone all the way up to the garage to have that tyre change, and now making his way back out onto the track. And we're literally three minutes remaining. Thanks, Di. And only, what, two minutes ago, we had one car come in from second in the Porsche Cup class with a puncture. Yeah. And now I, I said there could yet be another. I didn't wish it on anyone, but no. particularly not the Herbert Motorsport car. It should or could it hold on to second place? Or will Roman De Angelis be able to go past? He was a lap down in the heart of racing. Mercedes have to see where they are on the track. Very quick pit stop from the Herbert Motorsport crew, but what a late setback. We've only got a minute and 10 seconds remaining till the chequered flag could be unfurled. And it looks like it's going to be Santelot Racing, who may have to just do another lap because uh, Anton Ducat, they'll be getting a message to him. He's going through Curb Paul Frere. He's got uh, 58 seconds to go. And I'm sure at the pace he's traveling at the moment, he will go pass to start lap number 249 200 sorry be starting lap 250 nice round number and as he is uh, pacing up through Blanchiment the car that would be not too far behind him is much further back it's the Herbert Motorsport car only now emerging up the inside of Eau Rouge around the outside of Radion and the 91 Herbert Motorsport Porsche coming onto the track as the last lap board is held up for the Santelot Racing Audi and Anton Ducoin 0-1 flashing on his windscreen. He's turning into last source while the car that had been chasing him, having served uh, that run through to the pits for a puncture repair, is only now approaching uh, Les Combes. So three quarters of a lap went out of the window there. Great drive from everyone in that team. Really deserved. Owen Bastard, a, a really strong start of this race from... Uh, Owen Bastard, Paul Everard, he did his bit, and that's with Duquin. I think we've discovered another superstar there. You mentioned that he served his time in the LMP3 class. That They are tricky cars to drive. To get the best out of those cars requires a lot of skill. And we are seeing this young driver, Antoine Duquin, continue on his final lap, the number 26, the Sonolog Junior team. A deserved win is what they're about to complete 
Half a lap to go, turning into Bruxelles. So the tricky Les Combes combination has been sorted. It's Bruxelles 1, Bruxelles 2 as you turn doubly right down the hill. Then Jackie X curb and the bright green Santelot racing curb. Uh, Audi just taking the curbs, a gentle run across them, but no pressure now. That uh, very, very late race problem for Lauren Heinrich removed any semblance of doubt that Santelot racing would have an unchallenged run to the finish. It was uh, certainly going to be tight, but not quite enough to disturb Anton Duquan with that late rates puncher for Herbert Motorsport. So cruel, but what it did, it just confirmed that Anton Duquan and Santelot racing, the crew will be getting up on the pit wall to wave them across the line. And with just a quarter of the lap remaining, Kerb Paul Freire is negotiated up the slope will come. Santelot racing to take victory in the 12 hours of Spa-Francorchamps. Such bad luck for Lauren Heinrich. And the big question is, uh, Lauren, yeah, he stayed in second place. He had enough an advantage over Roman De Angelis. But uh, right now, the day, and yesterday as well, I guess you had the pair together and you'll get the outright winner with two corners to go. It's the, the first part and then the second part, the right and then the even tighter left of the chicane to go for the Santelot racing Audi. Into the right-hander, slow it down, crank it to the left, over the curbs on the outside, doesn't matter this time, and up to the start finish line, but mainly the finish line right now, and victory uh, the 12 hours of Spa Francorchamps. Doquin is the name on the windscreen flashing up DOQ, but 001 is the position that is in the bag, that is confirmed. Victory for Santa Lock Racing. TCE will be won with Magnus Holmgard in the family team, Holmgard Motorsport Cupra finishing off his final lap of this Hankook 12 hours just down to the Brussels hairpin he's kept that car going around he's kept out of the way of everybody he had to which is quite a feat the TCR class being one of the slower classes in the race overall the touring car endurance series he's just behind the second place Herbert Motorsport car but that car will clear off and leave the path clear for the home guard car to make its way around to the chequered flag. Yeah, and just to confirm, if you went away, stop listening for a moment, uh, CP Racing didn't hold on to that third place or fourth place in GT3M. Unfortunately for them, fell to fifth at the end. GT3M won by the heart of racing Mercedes in third place overall. Still waiting, actually, for Lauren Heinrich and Roman De Angelis to come through. Roman comes through now, confirmed in third place. Lauren Heinrich will have to complete the final lap. He was uh, only just ahead of the flag being unfurled. De Angelis will be on two podiums. He's going to be on the overall GT3 podium, but he's also going to be on the top step of the podium for GT3 Ham. And he will be joined by his teammates, Ian James, and, of course, uh, in that 27 car, Gray Newell. They have put in a sterling effort. Gray Newell, in fact, and Ian James putting in the majority of the drive uh, in that car across the whole of the 12 hours as the TCE, the touring car endurance leader, comes through the bus stop for the final time and he will take the chequered flag, just keeping out of the way. He's done that all day. The faster GT cars coming through. There's a very fine one indeed. Michael's home guard at the wheel of the number 102. He shared the car with his uh, Jonas Magnus and Roy Edland and Martin Vidal Mortensen. They are the other four drivers from that 102. The Cooper Leon Competition of Home Guard Motorsport, the Sonax sponsored liveried car, will take top honours in our touring car endurance series for the Hankook 12 hours of Spa. So there were some late race changes in position, very late race changes in GT4 class, which went to Bugira ZM Racing. That was pretty much confirmed, but sudden late race pit stop, very late race pit stop for Patrick Kolb and Lion Speed GP with their Porsche. That dropped them from second to third, and up came TCL Motorsports. So they take second in GT4 with Gary Teklavas taking that car across the line. So it's never done until it's done. I think we know that anyhow in motor racing. <laughs> no, it really isn't, and uh, not more so in what we sometimes see quite regularly in the 24 inch series. These races do go to the very end, and right there, right at the very end, we saw uh, cars, two cars, both second in their overall classes. The Herbert car in with a puncture right at the very end. Team 
going to work on that. But also, second in the 992 class, Corby De Broica in the 903. Red Ant car, he was in also with a puncture. Full credit to Adam Christodoulou and everybody in the 930. Uh, his teammates, Eric Zhang and Martin, or to give him his official name, Zhang Zhiji. The two Chinese drivers, great to see them across and competing with us. And Adam Christodoulou there by dint of the Sport 21 agency, putting him in that position, racing a Porsche. We usually see Adam, who is an AMG Mercedes driver. We'll see him in two weeks at the Nürburgring 24 hours in back in to his rightful mark. And he's back to his day job, I suppose, is what you could say. He's uh, doing a bit of moonlighting here in that uh, Porsche. Well, the car's still working the way. Audi and job very well done. Gary Williams of uh, Creventic goes in to applaud them. So great to have different teams winning here. And for Santalot Racing, as I said, they're busy here. They're busy down in France. They're busy rallying. But this is a great win. And Dai is down there yes, waiting for Anton Ducroix to take his helmet off. He's taken victory here with uh, Paul Evrard and Erwin Bastard. But I think there'll be one very, very happy young Frenchman down there with Diana. How do you feel after that result today? Yeah, I'm mega happy for the team. Everyone make a perfect job to bring home the victory. So that's a very good preparation for the big one in uh, in July. It's been a long 12 hours, hasn't it? But you were very consistent, all of you, throughout that. Yeah, we all make the mega job to bring us the to bring the car without any contact and with a mega pace. So we're happy, very happy, and let's continue in that way. What's the biggest thing you've learned? Uh, it's only my second car, time in the GT car, so I learned a lot. Uh, we have like a lot of information for the next race, so that's mega. Fantastic, thank you. And Erwin, obviously delighted to see that uh, win for you today. How do you feel? Yeah, it feels pretty good after the Mugello, where we finished second. Um, yesterday we were a bit unlucky with the Code 60, but uh, today we were mostly lucky. So yeah, it feels good to be at the first place. Uh, yeah, we all did a mega job. Antoine was especially pretty fast for a second race in a GT3, so yeah, really happy about the job we did. Yeah. I bet you're all very proud. Yeah, yeah, proud and happy about the work. We learned a lot of things about the car, uh, about setup and how to manage a race. So yeah, that's a lot of good information and I hope we will continue like that. Congratulations and congratulations to the rest of the team as well. Well, that comes... That comes as a warning to the others. They're learning, they're learning fast already, that Santa Lot crew taking victory here at Spa Francorchamps after 12 hours of racing. And yes. cars gathering underneath the podium, and one of them is the 102 Seat or the Cupra. And that, of course, took victory in its class, the TCR class, 28th overall for Magnus Homeguard at the end of the race in his home team, the Homeguard Motorsport team. And there is Magnus, the Dane, climbing up. You can hear the applause in the background. Job very well done. It is indeed job very well done. If, um, there's no other word for it. They dominated. I know we've only got a small field of TCR and TCE runners, but you've still got to do the job, haven't you? You've still got to keep out of trouble. You've, the car's still got to hold together for you. And a great drive from all of those drivers there. Jonas Holmgaard, Martin v Vidal, Mortensen and Roy Edland joining Magnus Holmgaard at the wheel of that car. Just taking his helmet off now, I think... We'll go we down to here. Diana and uh, get a word from the winning team in our Touring Car Endurance Series. Magnus, obviously the reaction of the team and your co-drivers here says it all. How do you feel after that result? Uh, so happy because the car was, I think it was to the limit. So we're so happy to get to the end. It's a, been a challenging race, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's have some good competition and uh, good teammates and awesome team. I can see how happy they are. They've worked, all worked incredibly hard this weekend. Yeah, yeah it all have, and we have started with some issue, and now we just get the podium. It's uh, super nice. Well, I'll let you celebrate with uh, the others, but I'll just get a, a ch quick word with them. Guys, how do you feel about that result? Uh, really good. So we had some problem with the car now at the last hour with the drive shaft. So it was... Uh, we, we, we didn't know if we could make it, so, uh, but luckily we did. So. Anxious few moments. 
It's big. Uh, well, we a big moment for us. Uh, last uh, last day was uh, tricky for us. Uh, dry and rain, dry, dry and rain. So we are happy to finish first. Congratulations! Great result. Yeah, yeah. it couldn't be better. So great. Well, I'll let you get up to the podium. I know they're probably waiting on you. Congratulations. Uh, very very happy bunnies. The Home Guard Motorsport uh, drivers there. Well, let's take. A look at the results. Santa Lock Junior team we heard from Anton Ducroix, Paul Everard, and last of all, Erwin Bastard. They take victory here today. In the end, winning by just under two minutes from Lauren Heinrich in the 91 Herbeth Motorsport Porsche, which she shared with Daniel Allen and Ralph Bone and both the Renauers, Robert and Alfred. That late race uh, puncture dropped them back, but a real chase to the finish. Third place and winning the GT3 AM class. Heart of Racing, Mercedes, Ian James, Gray Newell and Roman DeAngelis. So they resisted the late race challenge in the JP Motorsport uh, McLaren that was shared with Christian Clean and Norbert Seedler. Top in the Porsche Cup class. It was getting closer and closer, but the 9.30 crew from HRT Performance Adam Christodoulou, Eric Zhang and Martin Jinji Shi taking that victory with a late race puncture spiking the challenge of 9.03 Red Ant Racing Crew. Still fifth and sixth over all those two cars with uh, Kobe de Broeker closing in until that late deflation. Seventh place and winning the GT3 Pro-Am class. Matthias Besch sharing the Modena Motorsports Porsche with Francis Shear, John Shen and Benny Siemenson. Eighth overall, third in the Porsche Cup class was uh, Willy Motorsport with Sabino de Castro, Fabrizio Broggi and Sergio Nicolai. They're the top eight finishers. The second of the Red Ant Racing Porsches, 904, finishing fourth in the Porsche Cup. Sixth in GT3. It was all about recovering today after one problem yesterday. Great run from the 34 Land Motorsport Audi. Johannes Kirchhofer, Timo Vogler and the excellent Max Edelhoff. 11th place, E2P Racing Porsche, Javier Morcillo, Paolo Bulguera and Antonio Sinero. They would have finished higher, but for being pushed into the gravel up at Malmody. Then the best of the Lithuanian team, 71 due to racing. It was battered yesterday, but it's fought the way through to 12th overall. CP Racing even more battered at the end of the race. Lost their position in the GT3 AM class overall. And that tumbled down the order towards the end. 13th overall, 14th the PK Car Sport. Uh, Porsche number 924, fifth in the Porsche Cup class. Then top of GTX, as it was almost the whole way through, VDS Racing Adventures with their excellent Mark II racer. Then Red Camel Jordans ended up sixth overall. A little bit of steering damage cost them time in the 909 crew, but still sixth place for them in Porsche Cup. 17th overall in the GT world was uh, Leipert Motorsport. Two late race punches, both for poor Brendan Leach. That cost the Lamborghini crew a fair bit of time. 17th overall. 18th for them, ahead of the second of the HRT performance cars in the Porsche Cup class. Then GT3 Poland, they had their moments as well, but they still finished second in GTX in their Lamborghini. That was car 763. Then working down through the Porsche Cup class in 20th and 21st position overall, 8th and 9th in the Porsche Cup, the 919 Black Falcon entry, and the 967 HRT performance car with Robert Pampanini bringing that to the finish. Then back to GTX in 22nd position overall, it was the RD Signs Lamborghini, and that was third in GTX. Tenth in the Porsche Cup and 23rd overall, the 992 Porsche Baltic entry. And then still fighting back after problems yesterday, up to 24th at the end, the number one Shira Sport PHX Audi. 24th for them. 25th in the GT class and 11th in the Porsche Cup was the second of the, 920, of the Black Falcon entries. That was number 920. A late race spin, cost a bit of ground in the GTX class. Uh, for the number 719 entry. That's 9 on 11 racing. But winning GT4, 416, it's Bugira, ZM Racing, first in GT4, second in GT4 with a late race change. The 427 Lion Speed Audi came in for a, a Porsche came in for a late rate pit stop and the TCL Motorsport BMW said thank you very much to finish second in class. 30th overall in the pit garage at the end of the race with damage, the Hofer Racing Mercedes. That was uh, running well before that in GT3. Speed Lover, the 979 entry, that was 12th in the, G in the Porsche Cup class. And then in GT4, the Toyota, the lone Toyota, number 408, 408, finishing 32nd overall, but fourth in class to pick up some welcome points. Also in GT4, the entry from Korea, the 403 Atlas BX Motorsport Mercedes, that too was delayed. And PB Racing, the 726 Lotus in GTX, fifth in class, but first 
in the Spirit of Race Award. That was the Lotus Crew headed by Stefano Dasti. Then the 701 Vortex, that was a 35th overall. Senkia Motorsport, we saw that BMW pushed into the gravel. That was sixth in GT4. Seventh in GT4 with the PCR Sport Mercedes car number 418. Then Haas RT still circulating, but so much delay yesterday. They ended up 38th overall. That was the Haas Audi that started from pole position. Then MP Racing, their car had its was in the wars as well, ended up 39th overall. That was the number 58 Mercedes. And due to racing right at the start today, that Audi went into the ball coming onto the start finish straight. And that really hampered its run. 41st, 42nd and 43rd, the bottom three positions for, for Land Motorsport uh, with their Audis. And the final position, the 702 Vortex that was in the wall yesterday. So let's go and have a look what happened in the TC class. First in TC, we didn't hear about that uh, drive shaft problem until the very end there. They've been nursing that. The number 102, the Home Guard Motorsport Cupra, took a very, very dominant win. In second place was the car that we saw chasing them down right of the flag, the Wolf Power Racing Audi RS3 was second. The Relic Key by Tuck Car Sport, uh, father and son team of Jorge Bellic Diaz and Jorge Bellic Ruiz, joined by Alvaro Rodriguez Sastre. They were third. We'll see them on the TCE podium. The first of the non-TCR runners was the uh, GT4 718 Cayman. That car in the TCX class, that came fourth overall. It's the SRS Team Ren Sport. It's the Porsche Cayman, as I said. The Roma Racing by BMW. That was the first, uh, the second car in TCX and first of the BMWs. They're in fifth. First in the TC class, sixth overall, Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport, car 331. And then retiring early was the 117 numbered Wolf Power Racing Audi RS3 of Marcus Menden and Rob Huff. Thank, thank you very much, but uh, so much has happened. Let's take a look at the highlights here at spa Francorchamps.
stunning 12 hours of Spa Francorchamps and it's time for us to celebrate the winners and starting with the overall result for the GT uh, category in third place, Heart of Racing by SPS, that's Ian James, Gray Newell and Roman De Angelis. In second place, the 91 car of Herworth Motorsport. That's Ralph Bond, Daniel Alleman, Robert Renauer, Lauren Heinrich, and Alfred Renauer. <laughs> and the winner of the fifth Hankook 12 Hours of Spa Franken Shop here in 2023 is the 26 Santelock Junior team of Erwin Bastard, Paul Everard, and Antoine de Quinn. <laughs> and now for the national anthem of the winning team. And to present the trophies, we have Geddy Williams from Creventic and Jean Dubois from the Spa Francochamp circuit. First to our third place finishers, Heart of Racing by SPS. And our second place finishers, Herbert Motorsport. And to our winners of the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa Francorchamps, it's Santelock Junior Team. Including. And we also have the special Spa Francorchamps winners trophy. Which also, of course, goes to Santelock Junior team. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. That's, it, that's it, yes. Thank you. Gentlemen, if you could all... Uh, we're good at this. Can you all come together and lift your trophies up high as a group, please? Thank you, and now the champagne! Okay, a brief pause now where we set up for the TCE overall podium.
Okay, and now it's time for the overall trophy presentation for the TCE class of the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa Francochamp. And in third place, rail equipped by Totcar Sport, that's Jorge Belloc Diaz, Jorge Belloc Riaz, Alvaro Rodriguez Sastre. I think. In second place, Wolf Power Racing. Yasmin Pleisig and Ivars Vales. <laughs> and your winners are Holmgard Motorsport, Jonas Holmgard, Magnus Holmgard, Roy Edler Martin, and Videl Mortensen. And now, the national anthem of the winning entrant. And to present both the overall trophies and the TCR class trophies, once again, it's Gary Williams and Jean Dubois, starting with our third place finishers, rail equipped by Tot Car Sport. Our second place finishers, Wolf Power Racing, the 121 car. And our winners, Home Guard Motorsport. And of course, they also have the special Spa Frankenchamp trophy. Oh, it's cool. oh, these are the overall ones. Oh, no, here comes the big one. Here comes the big one. And the good news is. There's even more trophies. It's the TCR class trophies as well. Once again, starting with rail equipped by Top Car Sport. Now you've got more, more trophies, everybody. It's just non-stop trophies. I hope you've all got, you know, either you come in a car or you've got a generous hand luggage allowance because you're not getting those in the plane easily. <laughs> Second place in TCR, of course, were Wolf Power Racing. And the winners were Home Guard Motorsport. So, gentlemen, lady, if you could hold your trophies up high to the assembled throng. And now the champagne! <laughs> if you want.
Frank West up here. Okay, the next uh, trophy presentation is for the GT3 Pro Am class, and in second place, Share a Sport PHX. It's uh, Michael Doppelmeyer, Pierre Kaffer, Ella Earhart, and Sven Herbinger. And the GT3 Pro-Am winners are Moderna Motorsports. That's Francis Tihar, John Shen, Benny Simerson, and Matthias Besch. Congratulations. And to present the trophies, Gary and Jean. First of all, to our second place finishers, Share a Sport PHX. And now to our class winners, Moderna Motorsport. And as is our Mona, they, they will also receive the special Spa Frankenchomps, very large trophy, the SFVLT. <laughs> very large trophy. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, if you could all uh, come together and raise your trophies together high, all of you, both teams. And then to our assembled throng of photographers here. And now, gentlemen, the champagne. And now it is the presentation for GT3 AM. And in third place, it is E2P Racing. That's Javier Morchillo, Pablo Borghera, and Antonio Sayero. In second place, the land motorsport car of Dr. Johannes Kirchhoff, Tim Vogler, and Max Edelhoff. <laughs> but your GT3 AM winners are Heart of Racing by SBS, Ian James, Gray Newell, and Roman DeAngelis. And once again, it is Jean and Gary to present the trophies. First of all, to E2P Racing. No, other way, Gary. Tell me it's enough, isn't it? <laughs> and now to Land Motorsport. And, and finally, to our winners, Hard of Racing by SPS.
And of course, there is also the special Spa Frankenstein VLT, very large trophy. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, if you could all hold your trophies up high for the cameras. And to our cameramen down below. And now the champagne. Our next presentation will be for the 992 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup class. And in third place, Willy Motorsport by Evie Motors, Fabrizio Broghi, Sergio Nicolo, and Sabino De Castro. In second place, the 903 Red Ant Racing Machine of Ayrton Red Ant, Yannick Red Ant, and Kobe De Bruca. <laughs> but your winners of Porsche GT 911 GT3 Cup, it's HRT Performance. It's Adam Christodoulou, Eric Yang, and Jinji Ji. And once again, Gary and Jean will be giving you all the plastic you can hold. First of all, to our third place finishers, William Motors bought by EV Motors. And now our second place finishers, Red Ant Racing, the 903. And our overall 992 winners, HRT Performance. And of course, there is also the special Spa Frankenshaw VLT for HRT Performance. It's the big one. Gentlemen, you can hold your, uh, tr you can squeeze up a bit and uh, hold them up together. And now the other photographers, and you've done your work, so champagne time!
I'd like to advise all the people coming for trophies from now on to be careful of their footholds because it's absolutely soaking wet on the podium. Next up is the 992 AM class. The Porsche 911 GT3 Cup cars of the 992 variety. And in third place is the 929 HRT performance car of Mika Panu, Greg Gorski, and Kali Pekka Lackerson. In second place, PK Car Sport. That's Bert Longin, Steens Longin, and Peter Gulinix. <laughs> but your winner, what? No, I got that wrong. Yes, your winner was the 904 Red Ant Racing of Sam De Jonger, Philip Wills, and John De Wills. And once again, Gary and Jean will be presenting you with all the trophies. First of our third place finishers, HRT Performance. In second, of course, it was PK Carsport. And our winners, Red Ant Racing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Many jobs to do yet before you get to do that. And of course, we also have the VLT for Red Ant as well. Ooh! This is what we need, a bit more panto. Come together, raise your trophies, please. And look, look into the distance. And now, champagne time! The next presentation will be for the GTX class, the special GT cars. And in third place, it's the RD signed Salui racing team of Andreas Butovicus, Nicola, Nicola Michelon, and Paulus Pasivicius. In second place, it is GT3 Poland of Andrzej Lewandowski, Adrian Lewandowski, and Malias Mikos. And your GTX winners were VDS Racing Adventures. It's Raphael van der Straten, Ponthos Nathan, uh, next week. That's sorry, sorry again. <laughs> Raphael van der Straten, Bonthos, Nathan van Spiegel, and Nick Geelan. <laughs> and it's going to be Gary and it's going to be Jean handing out those trophies again. First of our third place finishers are the signs, uh, the Saluli Racing Team. Our second place finishers, GT3 Poland. Uh, 
and to our winners, VDS Racing Adventures. And VDS are indeed back. Hey! But don't forget, Raphael, you've also got the VLT coming. The Spa Francheson Special Very Large Trophy. And if you could all gather, gather close together, shuffle up and raise your trophies up high. And out to the wilds there. And now the champagne! Healthy crazy. Our next presentation will be for the GT4 class. So for GT4, in third place, it's Lion Speed GP powered by SRS Team Sorg. That's Daniel Miller, Patrick Kolb, and Jose Garcia. In second place, TCL Motorsport by AR Performance. That's Darry, Gary Teclavers, Kenny Teclavers, and Lars Zainen. And your GT4 winners are Buggy Ra, ZM Racing. It's Ali Clark, David Bereski, and Adam Lacko. Jean Debeur and Gary Williams doing the honours again with the trophies. The third place trophy is going to Lion Speed GP, powered by SRS Team Sorg. Second place to TCL Motorsport by AR Performance. And the GT4 winners, it's Buggy Ra ZM Racing. And of course, for Buggy Ra, they also have the very large trophy. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen and lady. If you could all uh, gather together. Trophies held high, thank you. Cool. Thank you. And now the champagne! Congratulations to our GT4 winners. Now for our final trophy presentation of the Hankook 12 Hours of Spa 2023, and it's for the TCX class. That's special touring cars and silhouette cars.
And in second place in TCX, it's the 245 Roma Racing by BMW Team Vanderhorst. And that's Paul Rusen, Mauro Mercury, and Johan Lambregs. And our TCX winners are SRS Team Sorg Rensport. That's Seppi Stigler, Bernard Wagner, Heiko Eichenberg, and Patrick Gruta. <laughs> and time now for Gelly and Jean to do their last bit of trophy presentating. Starting with our second place finishers from Roma Racing by VW Team Vanderhorst. And our winning team, which of course is SRS Team Sorg Rensport. And of course, there is, of course, a very large trophy as well. I have been told, by the way, there will be a very large trophy at all the events from now on for every class. So a chance to fight for your own very large trophy. So gather together, guys. Look back over there. And now, it's champagne time! Thank you all for racing and competing at the 12 hours of Spa Frankenshaw, sponsored by Hankook. And we hope to see you in Monza in a few weeks' time for the Monza 12 hours. Goodbye!